In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to go from zero to 10K a month as a copywriter in 90 days, even if you don't even know what copywriting is. Because in this program, I'm going to give you the exact A to Z, full guide, everything, the whole blueprint of how to go from zero to 10K in as little as 90 days. And guys, trust me when I tell you that this free course that you're about to watch is 10 times better than any other paid course possibly you could get on the internet. And I know that because I I'm the one who's actually bought every single course you can think of. I spent thousands on researching the absolute best tactics, strategies, and techniques that you are about to get access to in this free course. So if you really, really want to get results, make sure that you stay locked in and watch until the very end. Anyways, guys, without any further ado, let's hop right into it. All right, everybody, welcome to the ultimate free copywriting super guide. This is going to be, wow. Let, let me just let me just shut up and actually get into it, man, because this is going to be absolutely insane. And possibly the best part is that it's absolutely free, zero dollars on the house, and it is the best possible copywriting course you could have ever come across. So I first and foremost just wanted to congratulate you on watching the one course that is literally going to change your life, and you are going to find out exactly why in like five minutes, okay? So check me out. A comprehensive, easy to follow, step by step guide to going from zero to 10k a month with copywriting in the shortest amount of time possible. My goal is to make you rich so that you can become next of my many success stories. With all that being said, there's still one huge question and that is, does this copywriting thing actually work? Well, I want to share with you some of my success stories that I've already told you that I have. So for example, we have my top student, Zenos. He went from zero to 18.6 thousand dollars a month in a matter of nine months. 21 years old and not only reached this gargantuan income of 18.6k a month, but he also reached 10k a month in just 61 days after starting. Okay, this dude's an absolute beast. If you want to know what he did better than anybody else, I'm gonna tell you right now. He actually took the full program, he watched it all, and he implemented every single step that I'm about to show you right now. Okay, so here's his proof. Here's his screenshots or whatever. And next we have my boy AM, bro. 16 year old AM is able to reach an impressive income of nearly $7,000 every single month, man. As a 16 year old, this dude is making so much more money than his teachers. It's nuts, okay? He'd he be flexing on his teachers like that. Next, of course, we have my boy Leopold, zero to $9,000 at 14 years old. Guys, if a 14 year old is out here killing it, tell me why you can't too. And that's him over there on the left. He's also a power lifter, dude. He's definitely a good ass lad, for, for real. He's, he's a cool kid. From Sweden, English is not even his first language. He has a very thick accent but still he was able to make it happen man because he's really out here being an implementer nine thousand dollars bro this dude making way more than his parents making way more than both of his parents combined bro that now that is a flex at 14 years old but has anyone actually made money with the free courses because i'm gonna be honest all these guys joined the program but has anyone actually made money off of the free course that i uploaded around four or five months ago well let's check it out first of all we got my boy man on a mission zero to 8.3k a month without any paid programs or mentorship and then we have my boy pray zero Zero to 4k a month using only the free resources and courses that I have provided and guys again remember this free program that I put out before was my very first two and a half hour course and it was out like what four or five months ago hasn't even been out that long we're still getting crazy results from it another guy quick win $500 a month and then another guy hero $300 in two days okay two days of outreaching and boom $300 brought in for only four emails as a copywriter as his first deal absolutely nuts okay so let me ask you a very quick question just be honest with me here if this video that you're about to watch is gonna earn you three hundred dollars in two days just like it did for my guy over here would you think it would be worth it i mean i don't know me personally bro bro sign me up 300 bucks in two days i'll be all over that bro <laughs> i'd be all over that so man without any further ado i want to introduce you to who i actually am so why should you listen to me who cares well i'm 24 years old and i've been able to completely change my life when i joined andrew tate's hustle university course last year and i was exposed to this thing called copywriting. I was probably in the same situation you are in right now. I was on the other side of the screen, not knowing what to do, how to make money, how to make any of it work. But here we are. I learned the hard way and I had literally no idea what I was doing. But after three months, I made my first small sale with copywriting nine months after starting and I was bringing in over six figures. I was bringing in 10K a month as a copywriter nine months 
later. And understand that you guys have a massive advantage because I didn't have no Tyson 40. I didn't have someone there to give me all of the best information for free. Yeah, I was stuck just searching for everything that I could find. And copywriting has allowed me to quit all three of my jobs. As you can see, boom, security guard. Securely guarding some stuff, I was doing my thing. Next, I was up in the army at the same time. And also I was a carpenter cutting up wood and building stuff for a living. So man, I was out here working, all right? All right, I was the nine to five king. I had all the nine to fives. Not only has it allowed me to do that, but I was able to afford things that I literally never thought that I could. So me personally, I'm a big car guy, okay? I love cars. Some people it's traveling, other people it's the designer clothes. I don't do none of that. I'm just big on cars, bro. I just like cars. He was me with my Camaro, love that car, bro. He was me with my Ram truck, also love this vehicle, man. It's gonna come in handy in the winter, man. In the Canadian winter, is gonna be fire. And next of all, of course, I got the Audi. Now, I got three of my dream cars and I'm not even stopping there. All due to copywriting, man. All due to copywriting. Before that, bro, I was driving a hoopty. And it's also giving me freedom to do literally whatever I want. I do a little bit of traveling, but I'm not really that big on traveling. It kind of just messes up my schedule. But hey, bro, you could travel. You could buy whatever you like. Live in some crazy penthouse if you want to. Live in a high rise. Travel the world. Buy whatever cars you want to do. I mean, literally, it allows you to do whatever you want. And now, I want to share with you how to do the exact same thing that I've been able to do and that all of the students of copywriting have been able to do as well. Are you ready to make some money and change your life forever? I hope that you are because that is exactly what we're gonna be doing today, my people. I wanna teach you how to get the most out of this course because if you just like passively watch it or you just have it on as background noise, I hate to break it to you, but you're not, you're not gonna get the results, needless to say. But how do you actually get the most out of it? Well, first of all, you gotta save this video for later by leaving a like. Look, this is gonna be a long, a long program, my longest yet. So by all means, if you can't finish it all in one sitting, it's not really a big deal. Maybe you're not as fresh as you want to be, or you're kind of just like, you're, you're, ha you're having a hard time locking in and actually focusing. That's all right. Scroll down and leave a like right now so that you can find it later. You don't have to be searching for it. Next of all, I want you to ask all the questions you could possibly have in the comments. Guys, there's no such thing as a stupid question. I'm going to be in the comments. All my students are going to be in the comments, and we're going to be answering your questions so that you know exactly what to do, how to do it, and everything that you need. Next of all, you're going to need to follow all the steps carefully. Guys, as I said, this is not just a watch and learn course, okay? This is a doing course because action is what's going to actually get you the result that you're trying to get. Action. That's the biggest thing. And next of all, you can feel free to go back and watch parts multiple times because we're going to be covering so much information. And as you can tell already, I'm not the dude here that's going to be, you know, belaboring the same points over and over and over and boring you to death. And we're going to be actually engaged and we having fun while we do it, but we're going to be covering a lot. We're going to be covering it quickly. So if by any means you want to go back and watch a certain part again, hey bro, I highly recommend recommend you do that. There will be chapters in this video that you can go back and watch again so you can actually easily find it. And last but not least, guys, I want you to think of this program like a $1,000 cup of coffee. So I'll put it to you like this. You have a cup of coffee and you bought it for like two bucks. You're probably going to leave like what? A little bit left in the bottom of the coffee and be like, oh, whatever. I'm full. I'm done. But let's say, for example, you were to buy a $1,000 cup of coffee. This cup of coffee has like liquid gold infused into it. Okay. This is the most valuable cup of coffee ever. I don't know about you but i ain't leaving nothing in that i'm literally licking that cup of coffee dry okay i'm consuming all of it and that's how i want you to think of this program yes this program is free but understand that i've literally put in like four to five months of work into it ever since my last free course and i've bought thousands and thousands of dollars worth of the top tier copywriting courses so i could understand and get the best strategies techniques and everything else possible what you are watching is the most valuable copy writing course on the planet, on the internet. So treat it as such. Treat it as if you paid a thousand bucks for it so that you actually consume every little bit of it. And of course, in case you were wondering, no, AI and artificial intelligence will not make copywriters obsolete. In fact, I'm going to show you in this very course for free how you can make better copy faster by utilizing AI to our advantage. Next of all, yes, you can start copywriting even if you only have a phone. Although a phone is all you need, a PC or a laptop will greatly help you in making everything as efficient as possible, but no. Of course, you can start with a phone. Next of all, yes, copywriting works in any country. India, Nigeria, wherever, okay? It doesn't matter. You can start copywriting from literally anywhere. We have copywriters who are winning in every single country imaginable, especially Nigeria and India. You know, those are some of the top demographics that watch my channel. So yes, Nigeria and India, you can make this work. We have copywriters already winning from those countries. All you need is access to Wi-Fi, which you already have if you're watching this video. Therefore, yes, you can start. Next of all, it does not matter what age you are. As we've already covered, there are 14-year-olds in the Discord server making 9K with copywriting and people in 
sitting there that are as young as 12 years old. And yes, I was literally flabbergasted when I heard 12 years old making money with copywriting. It's nuts. But I mean, then again, all you really need to do is type some words. And you don't have to be super technical about it either. You're going to understand as soon as I show you how to write it. But writing copy is not necessarily hard or complicated. In fact, the simpler you're able to create copy, the better it actually is. And no, English does not have to be your first language. You don't even really have to be that fluent in English, believe it or not. There's some people watching this video who they can speak English all right, but they have a thick accent or they can't really write it that well. Hey, bro, again, even if your English is not great, I'll show you how to use AI to easily fix and optimize your writing. With AI, you don't even have to be that great at English. And guys, let me tell you something else. Another advantage that you guys have over me is that I did not have AI when I made it with copywriting. I didn't have it. And now with AI, man, the barrier to entry is even lower. And I'm going to show you exactly how to utilize it. Because the thing is that although AI is out, there's still not many people utilizing it. So you will have a completely unfair advantage. You're going to be able to dominate everybody else out here who's trying to do it when I show you exactly how to use AI. And next of all, no, you don't need all day to make this work. Guys, I was literally juggling as I showed you pictures of proof of three jobs and all other commitments as well. Most of the other big winners from the Discord are also either in high school or in college or have their own nine to five job. So no, you don't need all day. Probably what, two to three hours a day is how much I had to actually make this work. You can do it too. So here's the scope of exactly what we're gonna be learning today. First of all, some mindset principles that I wanna cover. This is the shortest of all the, all the programs because I don't wanna lengthen this course longer than it needs to be, but there are some actual real mindset tips that you guys need to know, okay? Understand that if you're watching this right now, your success is my responsibility. So by going over and covering these mindset principles, the only three mindset principles that you need, understand that I'm giving you the best chances possible at success, and that is why I do it. Next, mindset principles. The naive optimism principle, if copywriting works, and the law of averages. All three things that you need to know. Next of all, the fundamentals of copywriting is what we're going to be covering. The copy compensation explanation, meaning why the hell do copywriters make so much money? Why do they get paid so much? We're going to learn that here. How copywriting actually works, okay, how it actually works, how you get paid, or how do client relationships work, everything like that. Next, what you do and don't need to know. Guys, understand that I'm not up here just talking just to talk, just because I like hearing the sound of my own voice, okay? I'm giving you the most condensed information possible. Yes, it's a long program, okay? But I've squeezed every little nugget of possible information that I can, every little second of value, okay? Next of all, how to write copy that sells like crazy. You're going to write your first piece of copy right here with me right now, okay? We're going to learn exactly how to do it. I'm going to walk you through step by step. Next of all, the fundamental five copy copywriting superchargers. Five simple things that you can do to make your copy literally worlds better. Next, sales page mastery. We're going to learn how to do sales pages and emails, of course. And next, how to get AI to actually do the dirty work for you. And then next up comes, comes the nice part, but this is going to be the really, really good part. Getting your first client in as little as 30 days from now. Okay. Like I said, some of the things that I've given to copywriters in the past, they've been able to get the first client in as little as two days, paid in two days. All right. So it might take you 30 days but I'm not gonna lie like some of the people do it in much quicker than that so it might be three weeks two weeks one week who knows I'm gonna be giving you access to the op optimal outreach cheat sheet and then of course the ghost proof follow-up formulas and the 30-day speed run checklist and next of all we're gonna be covering the 10k a month in the next 90 days okay 10k in 90 days the 10k month speed run checklist Next of all, client scaling simplified. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly how to scale your clients. Meaning, if you have a client that's only paying you a couple hundred bucks off rip, I'm going to show you exactly how you can scale them to where now they're going to be paying you two to four thousand dollars every single month. Next of all, the client money multipliers. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to actually offer upsells to your clients. So again, you can scale them. If they're at two k a month right now, get to three k a month, four k a month, and even in some cases more than that. Okay, I've seen copywriting clients literally pay dudes up to eight thousand dollars every single month. Believe it or not. Next of all, of course. I'm going to be showing you what to do and where to go after watching this video. I'm going to give you access to dozens of hours of free courses on this very YouTube channel because I cover it all in depth, everything that you need to know. While all these other gurus are out here flexing their rented Lambos and showing you, look, I'm in Dubai, I'm in the club with all of these baddies. No, we don't do that over here, okay? I'm literally going to be giving you everything for Free. Next of all, I'm going to show you exactly how you can get unstuck and I'm going to be giving you access to a secret surprise that only people who make it through the whole program 
are going to get access to. So welcome to part one, the mindset principles. First and foremost, I want you guys to learn how to develop naive optimism. A positive mindset absolutely won't let you do anything, but it will allow you to do anything better than a negative mindset will. One foot on the gas and the other foot on the brakes is exactly what you're gonna be doing if you have a go into this with a negative mindset or you start having a negative mindset. When you start thinking, oh, this is too hard, this is a lot of stuff to do, or oh, I don't have a client yet, or whatever. When you start introducing those thoughts into your head, they're gonna slow you down, and eventually, you're just not gonna be able to perform as well as you would with a positive mindset. Naive optimism means that the odds might not be in your favor, but you need to believe that you're gonna win anyways. When a football team goes to the playoffs, it doesn't matter how much the odds are stacked against them. They still go into it believing we got this and we are going to win. And that is how upsets take place. You are an underdog. That's how underdogs win. Underdogs do not have this poopy pants mentality of, oh, well, I mean, I'll give it a shot. But like if it doesn't work or if we start losing, then I'm just going to give up. No, that's the opposite of what you want to have. Next, it works. But do you? Whether this works or not is not a question. There's already overwhelming proof that it does. But if you don't put in the work necessary, then don't expect the results. I'm just going to keep it 100 thousand with you. If you watch this video and then you expect bank or money to magically fall into your bank account, pff, sorry, bro, but this ain't the video for you. Okay. This is the video for people who are actually willing to take action and do the steps. Cause if you do the steps, you will get the results. Next of all, you need to understand the law of averages in order to take luck out of the equation. We need enough sheer volume in order to succeed no matter what. So let me explain it to you like this. This is how I explain it to a lot of people. If you flip a coin and it lands on heads, Three times in a row, does that mean that you have a magical coin that will only ever land on heads and never land on tails? No, why not? Because you didn't flip it enough times. If you flip it a million times, the likelihood of it being very, very close to 50-50 is very high. Why is that? That's because the more times you do something, the more accurate results you will get. So how does that actually apply to us as copywriters? Well, it applies mostly to things like outreach, for example. If you outreach to three people and you don't get a client yet, okay, I know you might not understand exactly what the words I'm saying mean because we haven't gotten to the outreach section yet, but you'll understand. If you start outreaching or you don't get clients right yet, understand and it's not because anything you're doing is broken it's broken it's not because what you're doing is wrong it's because you haven't put the reps in put in all of the reps and you will get there and next of all i have a beautiful drawing i have lots of beautiful drawings in this program because i really wanted to make it beginner friendly so look your thoughts are like directions that give you that you give to an uber if you have if you're a glass half empty type of person you're basically telling the uber driver yo take me to sad city take me to sad city where i'll be sad and miserable and i'm gonna give up however if you go into it with a good mindset and you're like no, you know what? Nothing can stop me and I'm going to make this work no matter what. Well, the Uber driver is going to take you exactly there, exactly where you want to go. A negative mindset is going to leave you somewhere negative. A positive mindset is going to lead you somewhere positive. All that in your minds. It's time to get into the fundamentals of freelance copywriting. Okay, my people? Look, we need to understand exactly what is copywriting. Copywriting is written words that persuade people to take action. Copywriting is used in ads and marketing promotions like emails, sales pages, and sales letters. You go to websites, everything written there is copyrighted. You see Apple's ad for Apple, the, the phone company, or Windows, or any other big brand. All their ads, all their commercials written by copywriters. Everything that you see, all the marketing, that's all written by copywriters. is everywhere around you. So what does a copywriter actually do? Well, a copywriter writes things like emails, sales pages, and ads, etc. Once you get good at writing copy and start making money, opportunities for more work like sales funnels and email marketing can be added to your offer as an upsell. And don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But what does this actually look like? Well, you reach out to potential clients. You get them on a sales call. They agree to a deal like eight emails for 2000 bucks, and you send them an invoice with something like Stripe or PayPal, half up front and then half when the project is complete. That is to, of course, mitigate risk on their end and your end. You don't want to create all the work and then give it to people and then be like, haha, I'm not going to pay you. And then you don't want to be like, hey, bro, you're going to have to pay me all up front. And then they're going to be like, well, what if you run off? So if you do half, half up front, then you'd be stupid to run off the, with the money because you just got to do the work and you get the other half. And it poses a less risk to them because they're only risking half of their money instead of all of it. Right. So it's, it's by far the best way to do it. That's what it actually looks like. So how should you start today? I strongly recommend that you finish this video today if possible. Take notes and go through this course as if you paid a thousand dollars for it, like we said, because realistically, that's 
how much it's worth. It was worth a lot more than that. I'd say the most expensive copywriting program that I've purchased myself was around four or 5,000. And again, I've literally learned all the principles, strategies, and techniques in all of those programs. And I've brought it to this program here today that you are watching for free. So you need to treat it as valuable as it's worth. Realistically, there's literally months of preparation, dozens and dozens of hours as far as creating these slides and creating the principles and creating everything, recording it, okay, of work that went into it, and thousands and thousands of dollars of research. So this is the holy grail of copywriting information. Do yourself a favor and treat it as such. But we need to understand what copywriting is not, okay? Copywriting is not content writing. Copywriting is written words that persuade people to take action. Copywriting is used in ads and marketing promotions like email, sales pages, and sales letters. Not content writing, which is like, write me a blog for entertainment. That's not what copywriting is, okay? It's different. Next, copywriting is not over-exaggerating or being dishonest. Guys, I've seen these comments on my past videos where it's like, oh, well, copywriting is basically lying or being dishonest. No, it's none of that. Copywriting, you are literally telling the truth. You're just being persuasive. Copywriting is a lot like sales, and sales is a lot like fire, for example. Fire is neither good nor bad, okay? We need fire to survive, but fire can also do bad things. It's a lot like sales. Sure, when it comes to sales, you have a bunch of sleazy sales guys out there that are going to be weird and just trying to get your money, but then you also have good sales guys that are out there who are actually trying to hook you up, get you out of your own way, get you into something that you genuinely want. It's the same with marketing. And next of all, it is not limited to those with a degree or certification. You literally do not need any degree. You do not need any certification. It is not super corporate. Freelancers are the ones out here making the most amount of money. A lot of the times, the people who go to college for marketing and they get a copywriting job are literally getting like $50,000 a year in one business. And that is lame. Okay. As freelancers, we can make the most amount of money. And of course, I'll prove to you exactly how as we keep going. And of course, I want to, of course, debunk this whole saturation, whatever. I, I searched it up. How many freelance copywriters really are there? And it says there are over 4,882 freelance copywriters currently employed in the United States. How many businesses in the United States are actually online? Okay, online businesses in the United States. 2.5 million. 2.5 million of them are in the United States. 9.1 million online retailers in the world, right? Nobody said you had to work with people from the United States, but I just wanted to make the actual contrast without fudging any of the numbers. So for visual rep representation, because I, I do believe that that's <laughs> important, this right here is the amount of freelance copywriters in the U.S. And this right here represents the amount of online businesses in the U.S. And again, just so you guys know, every single online business needs a copywriter because they're going to need ads. They're going to need marketing. And all that ads and marketing, all of the writing in it, or even the video scripts are created by copywriters. And next, of course, I want to cover the size of the pie fallacy. And again, this diagram is actually from a, a book that I have from Alex Hormozzi. Okay, so some of the drawings are from me, some of them are from Alex Hormozzi. But this perfectly paints out the example that I wanted to give to you guys. Understanding market size, how people think it is. A lot of people think that, oh, this is me. And then me plus one competitor basically means that you know, we actually have to share the success. And if other people are succeeding, then that means that it limits my ability to succeed. This is not true. Guys, I'm serious when I say all you need is like three or four copywriting clients ever to make over six figures with copywriting. Somebody else's success, somebody else winning does not mean it degrades your potential of winning or your potential of success. Every single person watching this video can get three to five clients and there still be more than enough businesses for even more people to come through and get clients. That is a fact. So there is no oversaturation at all. It's just, this is not even true. And I've proven it to you there. But what does a copywriter actually do? Here's some copywriting offers, emails, sales pages, and ads. I'm gonna show you how to actually write all of these, but I wanna show you an example of what this actually looks like so you have a better fundamental understanding, okay? You can actually conceptualize what I'm saying. So here's a sales funnel example. Here's Justin Waller. A lot of people watching this will know who Justin Waller is. He's a buddy of Andrew Tate. So here's a post that he made on YouTube, a YouTube community post. I'm not gonna, actually, you know what I might as well do. I might as well actually read this so that you know what copy looks like. So the beginning sentence says, lie often. Understand that this is what pulls you in. You're like, hold up, this guy's saying lie often? Now, this is gonna, of course, draw in your attention because it's, it's, it's disrupting. You're like, hold up, why is he telling me to lie often? That doesn't seem right. Let me understand his reasoning behind this before I pass judgment on it. The mind is a tricky place, confusing and dark. Multiple times a week, I find myself in throes of an internal battle. I'm undefeated. Execution is as simple as lying. Lying to your B-word voice. We're just going to do a couple of sets and leave. We will start the email and leave it as a draft. Lies. Learn to lie to that voice inside you. If you don't, then you will become that voice inside you. You've got this man, Jay Waller. Join the Daily Lose newsletter. And see here he has a link to his daily newsletter. 
So what does this piece of copy actually do? Well, essentially, it's kind of just something that hooks you into reading it. It's a little kind of motivational pep talk type of email. And that's not even email, pep talk type of piece of copy. And then, of course, he leaves a link to his newsletter. Now, you need to understand that his newsletter is basically a list of email addresses that he has. This is what we call an email list. He sends out emails to his email list that you will then read, like this one. All right. Now, this one is from Andrew Tate, but Justin Weller sends out emails like this as well. And this, understand that this is basically another um, type of little pep talk. We'll go through it again, just so you know how copywriting is made. So it says, despite growing up poor, I find myself harboring disdain for the financially underachieved. You are not trying. I would know. I started below you. Now I'm in the top 0.1% of this planet. <laughs> so you might like Andrew Tate, you might not, but regardless, okay, being neutral, of whatever his message is here, we understand that this is essentially a pep talk where he's trying to motivate you, okay? There is no such thing as trying, to, as trying and failing for 10 years. That is not real. That does not happen. The hardworking, sober, critically thinking, charismatic, broke person doesn't exist. Not for long. They all get rich eventually, somehow. After spending years of spending 24 hours with the singular goal of becoming financially wealthy, after years of hard work, singular focus, and critical thinking, they all find the solution eventually. You are broke. You have no one to blame but yourself. Are you going to humble yourself and change who you are or remain like most people being lazy and dumb? It's your choice. So as you can see here, he's actually doing something that's called the crossroads close. So he's essentially presenting two choices to you. You can stay lazy and broke or you can actually take control of your life and become wealthy. Um, me personally, I'm a big Andrew Tate fan because you know a lot of young guys need to be spoken to like this to actually go ahead and take action. And everything he's saying here is facts. It's your choice. You are poor because of who you are. Fact. It's not because of whatever excuses you tell yourself at night. You are poor because of who you are as a man. Luckily for you, you can change that. Become the hardworking, sober, critically thinking, charismatic, broke person. I guarantee you, you won't stay broke for long. If you need help, join the real world, all right? And if you don't know, the real world is his online program. I took, you know, the real world before it was even called the real world. It's called Hustle University, but that's neither here nor there. You don't need to take that, of course, because what you're watching right now is, trust me, a million times better than the real world slash Hustle University. Anybody will tell you. And then here is the actual uh, sales page. Here's some copy that's on the sales page of the real world. So as you can see, right, we start with copywriting. It brings you to the email list. Email list starts with more copywriting. It brings you to the sales page. Sales page has more copywriting, right, to get you to actually buy whatever it is they're selling. Now, I want to also explain another concept to you guys. And that concept is, Tyson, why does he do this thing where he gives you a YouTube post and then sends you to the email list and then from the email list over to the sales page and then the sales page over to the checkout page? Why doesn't he just go back here and say, join the real world and go to the checkout page? Well, the reason as to why is because most people are not going to just buy something when they see the link. Skepticism is far too high. So what it takes is for somebody to, is for, is for you to always see somebody because the more you see somebody, the more you read their posts, right? It's called getting warmed up, all right? Warmed up basically means you get to know somebody. And when you get to know somebody, you're more likely to actually buy from them, okay? So you're reading their messages and then it goes you to the newsletter. You, re you read the newsletters and you're like, wow, this guy might have a point. You click on the, the link and then you look at the actual copy and you're like, wow, maybe I'll actually buy. So let's go ahead and actually read a little bit of this copy as well. Final thoughts. Money making is a skill. Like every other skill, it can be learned. And the speed at which it is learned depends on your coaches and the learning environment you are taught in. Our coaches know the business models they teach. They know what it takes to be profitable. They are the first to identify and utilize new disruptive technologies and strategies whenever they appear. The real world is the ultimate all-in-one learning program guiding you from making your first dollar online and scaling into multi-million dollar business. Uh, there's no better place on the planet to learn how to make money online today. Boom. So then that is, again, your motivating speech to actually get inside of the program that they're selling. And of course, another question, one of the first questions that a lot of people ask is, but why do people buy copywriting for so much money? I mean, it's just words on a page. How are you going to spend $200? For like 200, 200 words. That's how much an email usually is, 200 words. And that's how much an email usually sells for, 200 to $250 an email, sometimes even more. Well, it's because copywriters are paid based on the amount of value they provide rather than the time that they work. 
This is the difference between work-based pricing and value-based pricing, right? Everybody is usually used to work-based pricing, right? So, for example, when I was a security guard, I'll get paid per hour, right? Whereas when I'm a copywriter, I get paid based on how much money I actually make them. If your copy makes a business tens of thousands of dollars, which it easily can, then it's not ridiculous at all to be compensated for a few thousand dollars a month, which is almost nothing to big companies. You also have to understand that these businesses, they have tons of employees and most of their employees are making for at least $40,000 a year. And that's almost four grand a month just from one client, right? So them paying you two grand a month, they're paying you half as much as the lowest paid person. Like they're paying their graphic designer probably $40,000 a year. So as you as a freelance copywriter, you have a unique opportunity to work with multiple clients. And that is the big hack here. The big hack, the big difference is that you can provide a ton of value in a short amount of time, meaning you have a bunch more free time, meaning you can work for three or four clients for three to four to five hours a day and still make over six figures as a copywriter. It is a literal glitch in the matrix. Okay, if you want to if you want to talk about some Andrew Tate, it is some literal glitch in the matrix type of stuff. And here's a visual representation. Okay, so let's say that they pay you fifteen hundred dollars for a sales page, right? Which is rather low for a sales page. Well, think of it. They get thousands of people coming to that sales page every single day, all right? And let's say they have a, a product on it that's a couple hundred bucks. They get to make money from that sales page every single day. It brings them in new revenue. They're making money, 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 money. They might make $100,000 a month off of that sales page that they only paid you 1500 bucks for, bro. That is a steal. That is a literal steal, okay? You might work what? Let's say a couple days on this sales page. Let's say a week at most, right? A week to write a sales page, which realistically is a long time. Okay, you write a sales page a week, fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred. That's six thousand dollars a month. You write four sales pages, boom, and it does not take that long to write a sales page, my man. Like that. That's why copywriters out here are making so much money, is because it doesn't take that long to do. But you can still make uh, businesses a lot of money. Okay, everybody wins. But of course, when should I expect results from copywriting? When should I expect to get paid? Well, look, my goal for you in this video is to get paid within the next 30 days. And I want to show you how to make a life-changing amount of money in the next 90 days. With that being said, if for some reason you were to miss each of these milestones at the end of today's lesson, I'm going to share with you exactly how I can help you get unstuck and also understand i mean put things into perspective right it took me nine months to reach six figures whether it took me 90 days or nine months or four years it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day the result is way more than worth it and it's just like andrew tate said you know i mean we just read his email and i didn't actually (laughs) intentionally put it there but he ain't wrong there is no such thing as somebody who does all the steps and is broke for 10 years it just doesn't happen so even if you miss these milestones man what if it's 180 days instead of 90 days in one year, are you really going to care? The answer is no. Okay. So yeah, you should expect results in as little as these time amounts because that's how much people have done it in. But even if it doesn't happen in that time amount, hey, bro, we still we still grind, we still make it, and we're still going to make money either way. Now, I want to show you how exactly to write copy that sells like crazy. Because believe it or not, a large portion of copywriting that we see on a daily basis from businesses that are from $1 million to $10 million a year are terrible and ineffective. Man, a lot of the copy that you're going to come across is awful, bro. Objectively awful. But the thing is that they just are complacent. Those businesses, they already have copywriters. So they don't want to go through the trouble of replacing them or teaching their copywriter how to write better copy. I mean, they're already making money. So they're like, ah, whatever. The copy is copy. If you can come in these businesses and show them how to actually write good copy, like I'm about to show you here that I've learned from the best marketers and copywriters I've learned on my copywriting journey myself. Oh man, I'm literally serious. You can make hundreds of thousands of a difference in a business over the span of a year with just your copywriting. Okay. And that means a lot of money for you. I'm going to show you how to write your very first email with me. You and I are going to go in here and we're going to write our first email. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a niche that you somewhat know about. Okay, we're going to go very, very deep on niches as we go ahead. But I want you to start with a niche that you know about. Okay, first and foremost. Next, you're going to need a specific product or service in that niche. Okay, so you're going to need to pick a real product or service. You're not going to want to write for some imaginary, airy-fairy product that's not actually real. You want to pick a real one. And next, of course, you're going to need a notepad and pen to remember the key points. And you can watch me walk, walk through the email creating process for now. 
but it's crucial that you come back and do this yourself and follow along afterwards. Okay, so guys, here we are in the actual document, all right? And this is called the listicle email template. So here's a quick explanation. The listicle email works by giving actionable value that the reader can use while manufacturing desire in whatever is inside the call to action. A call to action is literally just saying, go here, follow this, click this link, buy this. Any of that is called a call to action. The email should be used to gain trust and build a relationship with the reader. I wanna add a little bit more explanation. So a lot of people say, when it comes to email copywriting, for example, oh, well, bro, whenever I see those emails or whatever in my inbox, I don't actually buy them. They're all scammy and spammy and whatever. Exactly. That's why email copywriting works so well. It's because you have all these people who are spammy and scammy, no, nobody's gonna buy from them. The reason why people are going to buy from good copywriters is because we're actually giving value. For example, like look at the Andrew Tate example that I just showed you for, for uh, j just, to demonstrate. He was giving his people a pep talk. The people want a pep talk. People download or subscribe to Andrew Tate's email list because they want to hear Andrew Tate speak like that because he's giving them value. If you're really, really into piano and you want to learn more about it and people are giving you piano lessons in your email inbox, you're always going to open them. You're going to be interested. And the way that we do this is we just add a link at the end of the email in case people want to go and check out whatever we have to sell. Okay, it's not hard selling, it's not scammy or spammy. We're not telling people to buy, buy, buy. We're not force feeding them links. It's nothing like that. We're actually giving them value. And in this example, you're gonna see exactly how. So this is what this email template is really about. This is how you create your very first piece of copy. Now, understand that you're not gonna be using templates forever. The reason why I wanna give you a template right now is because I want to literally guide you through it in the easiest way possible. I could sit here and talk to you about fundamentals and, and a list of things that you need to do and blah, 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 and psychological triggers, but I'd rather just come in and, and create an email with you so that you know exactly what, a, what it's like. And then afterwards, we can go through all of the, you know, all of the points and how to actually do it. So again, we're not wasting any time here. I want to get right into things. So what value is being given? How to gain a lot of muscle. So this is for the fitness niche. It could be how to lose weight, how to make a lot of money, how to get disciplined. It could be anything. So that's what the value given is. And of course, these are my examples. You can create whatever value given it is. Now, the ingredients are things you're going to need to know. You're going to need to fill this out. You're going to get access. I'm going to show you how to get access to this very template that you can download and actually fill it out yourself. Why this value is important. Get descriptive on what the goal of the email will teach them. Because most beginner gym goers waste time trying to figure things out, if you do everything in this email, not only will you barely, will, will people barely recognize you and people will genuinely wonder if you're on gear. That, that's the result of this email, okay? So describe the result and where it will actually lead people to get to. The three value tips with explanations. So a listicle email essentially is just a list of things that somebody can do in order to achieve a goal. Again, the piano example, three easy ways you can increase the skills with your left hand, your left hand playing piano. If you're making money, three easy ways that you can make more money, three easy ways that you can invest more money. Here is my example. Number one, train like your life depends on it. Ever wonder why dudes in prison look like the Hulk, yet they're under the worst conditions for building muscle yet? The answer is because they have to get ripped to survive. This essentially is the, the point, and then here's my reasoning behind the points. So every point has to actually have a reason. So here's another thing, is that people don't want you to just speak at them. They don't want you to just tell them things. Because the thing is that advice, but everybody in this world wants to give their advice, wants to give their opinion. But you can't expect people to want to trust you or to want to follow what you say unless you back it up with some real reasons. That's why training like your life depends on it and training with intensity is how you can build muscle. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to get consistent. If you want white teeth, if you brush them five hours for one day a week or for two minutes for two to three times a day, you can't make up for consistency with short bursts of action. So that's my reasoning behind why you need to get consistent because consistency is what leads you to actually getting results, just like brushing your teeth or anything else in life. Small actions daily over a long period of time is better than what a lot of people try to do, which is they try to take out consistency by saying, all right, well, I'm just going to brush my teeth for five hours a day and then they'll be pearly white. It's like, sorry, that does not exactly how it works. And the same is with the gym. Okay. And that's my reasoning number two. And next of all is that form is king. You need to focus on form instead of ego lifting. So nothing will kill your gains faster than an injury because an injury is a quick way to ensure that you can't get consistent. See point number two.
Okay, that's my reasoning behind that. And now, of course, my next ingredient. But all of this email is useless without this. This is how we manufacture desire. So a lot of people are, get confused because they're like, okay, well, if I offer the value in the email, how am I supposed to transition to telling them to go through the link? How am I supposed to get them to want to click on the link? How am I supposed to transition smoothly? And this is exactly how. But all of this is useless without. All of this is useless without a nutrition plan tailored to you. It doesn't matter if you train your face off every single day. If your nutrition isn't dialed in, you're going to be missing out on gains. And it's not enough just to leave it up to chains. You can't just eat a random amount of chicken and rice every day and expect to make progress, lol. But I get it. Coming up with a meal plan tailored to your goals, weight, and training regimen can feel like rocket science. So that's why I want to give you. Here's access to a free nutrition plan call where we'll teach you chat with you and create a nutrition plan for you for free. Why? Because we figure when we help you pack up muscle and shortcut your way to your dream body, that you'll be interested in working with us in the future. And if not, that's cool too. So what is this really? This essentially is a sales call in disguise. You might see this call to action a lot. So there are these people who are online personal trainers who are going to charge you a couple of grand in order to personal train you online, as the name suggests. Essentially, this is a sales call where they're going to get on with you, tell you exactly how to do your meal meal plan or whatever. And then at the end of the call, since you already gave them value, you're going to be like, by the way, would you want to maybe, you know, start this online trading program so that we can get you ripped or get you towards your goals? And the person might be like, you know what? Sure. Why not? And then that's how you make sales. That's called, that's basically a sales funnel. Okay. We're going to learn a little bit more about sales funnels and all these other sales tactics as we move on, but that's what it should look like essentially. And then next subject line, how to pack on nine pounds of muscle in four months. So what kind of subject line is this? This is essentially a strong, unique, specific benefit when it comes to packing on nine pounds of muscle. Notice I don't say how to pack on muscle. That's too, that's too vague. Nine pounds of muscle is something that's tangible and four months. All right. Also something that's specific. You don't want to say how to make muscle quickly, way too boring, way too generic. How to pack on nine pounds of muscle in four months is way more specific and believable. And people are going to want to know how to do it. So, Hey, first name picture below is the difference that just 10 pounds can make or nine pounds, whatever and it's before and after this dude looks skinny, like he's never worked out a day in his life. And over here, he's looking straight jack. He's looking absolutely proper. And if you want to go from whatever body type you are right now to a rock solid Hollister model physique in the next four months, then there are three pieces of advice that will help you. Number one, train like your life depends on it. Have you ever wondered why some dudes in prison literally look like they're a couple weeks out from a bodybuilding show? Even though their nutrition consists of stale bread and a couple of eggs, they have terrible workout equipment and zero guidance as far as personal training. They still pack on lean muscle mass seemingly overnight. The answer is because they train 10 times harder than any gym rat. Why? Because their life literally depends on it. And this eat or be eaten mentality is what pushes them far beyond where others would stop. This is something you can use to your advantage too. We all know that one dude who's gone to the gym for years, yet doesn't even look like he lifts. The reason is because he just goes through the motions. Trust me when I tell you, intensity makes all the difference. So get in the gym and don't start counting the reps until it hurts. No pain, no gain. And number two, get consistent. Let me ask you a question. If you want white teeth, should you either A, brush your teeth for five hours one day a week or brush your teeth two to three times every day for just two minutes? The answer is obvious. Some people make the mistake of trying to pack on muscle, but they aren't consistent in the gym. Oftentimes they resort to short bursts of long workouts in an effort to make up for their inconsistency. But this never works. Do yourself a huge favor. Lift at least four to five times a week. Otherwise, you're cutting your gains in half. Next of all, form is king. And speaking of consistency, want to know the number one way to ensure you can't keep up with your workouts? Getting injured. Try working out anything upper body when you have a torn elbow ligament. Trust me, not fun. (laughs) Not to mention, if you go to the gym, just to swing around some weights that are too heavy just to stroke your own ego, your muscles aren't going to be benefiting at all anyways. The best thing you can do is leave your ego at the door, lighten up the weight, and perform slow and controlled reps. Doing these three simple things will ensure you blow up in the next four months. But there's still one problem. None of these three steps matter if you don't have your nutrition dialed in. And I don't mean just eating chicken and rice every day and hoping you're getting enough macronutrients. Nutrition cannot be left up to chance, but I get it. 
Nutrition can turn into rocket science real quick. That's why I wanted to give you a free nutrition plan tailored to you. One of my personal coaches will help on a one-to-one call with you and figure out all the complicated calculations for you. Just click the link to schedule a call. But I have to warn you, we're running out of spots quickly. So if there's any slots available, I wouldn't wait. Talk to you soon, sign off, right? Sign off could be like, talk to you soon, and then just leave your name at the bottom. So now I want to break this down and tell you exactly why it works. So first of all, in the beginning of this email, I give them something actually disrupting. This is something that they're like, wow. Essentially, it gives them a reason as to read the rest, okay? It paints a picture as to why reading the rest of the email is so important, okay? And that's what you guys need to do as well. So it's proof in telling you why I'm about to show you is so important. Next, when I say something like rock solid Hollister model physique, people know what a Hollister model looks like, and that's kind of what this guy looks like. It's like, you're going to be looking like a fitness model, bro. And notice that it's very specific. Again, you want to get very specific with things. You don't want to leave it up to chance and being like, I'm going to show you how to get ripped. Because ripped is subjective. What does ripped mean? Does ripped mean like I'm going to look like goddamn Gary Coleman, lightweight baby? Or am I going to look like a Hollister model? Or what am I going to look like? Am I going to look like I just lost weight? Am I fat right now? I'm going to lose weight. You need to be specific with people. Because the more specific you are, the better. And then next. Have you ever wondered why some dudes like this? So this is essentially me asking a relatable question that seems paradoxical. This makes you think and makes you wonder. Basically saying, I have the answer and I'm going to tell it to you. Have you ever wondered this? You could be like, yeah. So let me read through and, and see what the answer actually is. And then here's another relatability uh, point that actually has where I'm talking about the fear state. So we're going to get into, you know, wants, dreams, desires, and fears again as we go on. But basically, we all know that one dude who's gone to the gym for years yet doesn't even look like he lifts. Okay, so that's something else relatable, something we all know. So I'm relating to the reader. And I'm also saying, look, you don't want to be that guy. And that's their fear. Okay, that's their fear is is of being that guy. So I'm essentially saying, if you don't want to be that guy, you know, follow this information. Next is get consistent. And then so and then, of course, I'm adding more reasoning and justification, which is what I add to all of these points. And then here I want to go through the call to action with you, right? The transition and what it actually looks like. Right here, I'm doing what's called manufacturing desire. When I say there's still one problem, essentially I'm saying, look, all that's cool. All, everything that I te- taught you is right and you can use it. But if you want to know how to reach the next step and the most important part, well, that this is what it is. This is the most important part and that's nutrition. Now I've manufactured desire. Now they're like, oh, okay, now I really want to get into this nutrition thing. But the thing is, I also offer them a solution to it. This is basically showing them what, but not how. Okay, so I'm showing that they need to do nutrition, but I'm not telling them how to do it. I'm showing them if you want to do it, you can go to this free one-on-one call. Now, understand another thing is that it doesn't always have to be a free one, one-on-one call. It can also be many other things. I could be selling him a straight nutrition plan. This could be a call to action to like, here's my nutrition plan course, or here's my nutrition planning guide. Or here's my free nutrition planning video. It could be a number of things. It could be anything. And what it is, is essentially, you know, it could be, it depends on what your goal is. So if your goal is to get them to go to a sales page, then obviously it's to make money. But if your goal is to give them some free value, like go here and watch my free video, it's to earn that know, like, and trust factor, right? It's to make people more familiar with you so that you can sell them better down the line, like I kind of talked about briefly before. So now you have everything that you need to actually go ahead and make your own email, your own version of this, okay? And of course, you don't have to add the picture, but you have everything you need, okay? Just fill out all the ingredients, and of course, just fill in the blanks, okay? It's all just plug and play. And of course, this is not the only email template that you're going to get access to. This email template is inside of the Copy Starter Kit. The Copy Starter Kit is a free guide, a free collection of courses, resources, and tools that I've put together for you copywriters that you can download down in the description right now or after this video. So boom, now you guys are officially copywriters because you know what it's like to write a piece of copy. Again, you can come back after this video and actually go through and write your first piece of copy while watching that part. But now, okay, I wanna go through a lot of the copywriting fundamentals and the principles behind what we just saw. So now, I wanna talk to you guys about hacking human psychology because that first and foremost is what copywriting and marketing and sales actually is. It's human psychology, figuring out how to make people want something. The five fundamental triggers in the human mind that inspire people to take action right this second. I want to talk to you guys about the three main stages of any piece of copywriting. The three main stages of any copy is disrupt, intrigue, and click. In this section, you'll learn capture, keep, and send your reader's attention to the next desired action. 
the main question when something comes across someone's attention is, what is this? Why should I keep reading slash watching? And what am I supposed to do next? So those are the exact questions that we need to answer in any piece of copy. It is also known as you know, hook, retain, and reward. That's the, uh, the, the diagram for Al from Alex from Mosey's book. So how to grab attention. Here are five methods. Attention is the currency of the new economy. Everybody is looking for attention because attention equals money. That's why attention has never been so sought after, yet so hard to attain. How to grab your readers by the throat and make them do a double take. So how do we actually grab their attention? Here are five easy ways. Number one, we challenge their commonly held beliefs. So for example, squats are terrible for quad development. The reason why this works is because squats are widely known to be great for quad development. So if you're saying they're terrible, it's going to inspire people to read more because they're thinking to themselves, well, what's the reasoning behind this? Maybe squats are ter terrible. Maybe that's why my legs ain't growing. Well, let me actually read into this and see why. Okay. Next is to ask a two option question. What's a better goal? 100K or 10K? This is going to make people think and they're going to want to know what your take on it is. Next is to be relatable. So like I said, have you ever tried making money online but didn't know where to start and kept running into scams or things that you just were sketchy about or you're skeptical about? It seemed weird. That's relatable. People are like, yeah, I have. Tell me more. Next thing you can do is ask a paradoxical question. Why is it that the average millionaire is less educated than the average person? You'd be like, huh, why is the average millionaire less educated? Why have they gone to college less and gone to university less and have less master's degree and bachelor's degrees? Strange. I wonder why. And you're going to want to find out, of course. And then next is, of course, to make a strong promise. Here's how to get hired by Netflix and make $24 an hour from home with no experience. There are tons and tons of reels and TikToks about you know, this very topic. And they get tons of views because people want to know how. It's a big promise. So now have their attention? How do we hold their attention with intrigue? Now, if you earn someone's attention initially, this is where you keep their attention while setting them up to be persuaded to take action in the next section. We do this by making open loops in order to use our reader's curiosity as fuel to get them to keep reading. Think of intrigue as an itch. You tell the reader you have something that they want and they have physical discomfort until they know exactly what the information is. Essentially, that's what an itch is. Like when, you're, when your arm is itchy, your back is itchy, you're like uncomfortable. You can't stand it until that itch is finally scratched. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. Think of it almost like a cliffhanger at the end of your favorite show. For example, squats are terrible for quad development. Here's why. That's the open of the loop. People are itching to know why, 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 why? See, I've always been told that squats were the secret to tree trunk looking legs. So this is giving the info while the loop is still open. So here's another thing. You don't want to open and close the loop right away because then you're going to lose their attention again. You only have their attention as long as there is an open loop. So you wouldn't say squats are terrible for quad development. That's because lunges are better. The end. <laughs> you know, you didn't even say anything. So before you actually get to the point, you have to fill it up with information that's going to convince them of the point. Hubbard studies show that squat movements actually decrease muscle size in the legs. Right now, this is just an example, but you can use any sort of justification that you want. That's when I realized that in reality, squats suck, hack squats, split squats, goblet squats, none of them are truly optimal. Then there's more intrigue. Now you're thinking, okay, well, what is optimal? How do I actually do it? And that might be this in the CTA. Now, how to turn attention into action. And this is where we kind of close the loop. Now that we've grabbed our reader's attention, then opened a loop to keep them reading, it's time to close the loop and direct their attention towards the next action to take. For example, the way I actually built legs that literally can't fit into jeans anymore is from doing what I call the anti-squat training intensive. Now it's another open loop. Okay. Well, now you told me what to do, but what's the anti-squat training intensive? What's that? Another open loop that people are going to want to know. It works by utilizing more targeted leg exercises to build more muscle in less time with half the effort. So that's how it works. And also has a big promise. If you want access, click here to get huge legs without ever doing another squat again. And I want to talk to you guys about the problem solution loop because that's essentially what we did here. So how does it work? Every solution comes with a problem, okay? And that's how your emails or copy needs to be formed. So for example, here's how to make more money. And in the email, it shows you how to make more money. And then at the end, it says, now that you know how to make more money, you need to know how to invest that money, not even make it. So how do you invest that money? Well, I wanna show you, but it's through this link. So you give them the solution at the end of the email, but you also highlight a new problem that they have that the solution can be gotten 
through the link. This is how it's done. And of course, we're going to look through tons and tons and tons of examples on how to do this. Okay, but this is this is what you need to know. Because this is the stuff that most people either don't do or they have troubles doing. Next, of course, is the duality of decisions. So logic versus emotions. People buy with their emotions and they rationalize their purchase with logic. Think of it this way. This is what I like to call the ice cream parlor effect. Buying a double scoop of your favorite ice cream flavor is an emotional decision triggered by the tantalizing aroma and appealing display. You rationalize it later by telling yourself that the calcium in the ice cream is good for your bones. So it's not that bad, right? Or you say a bunch of other excuses like, oh, I didn't have much to eat today, even though I'm trying to lose weight. A little bit of ice cream never kill me, right? I've been on my diet so well. We'll rationalize these things with logic to actually, you know, indulge in them. And that's what we can use in our copywriting. The smartphone seduction. Sure, I just bought the new iPhone because it will signal my status, but it will also make me more productive at work. Five more minutes can't hurt. And here's another one. I'm super tired and not ready to get up yet. Besides, the extra sleep will allow me to wake up more rested and be more productive. These are all examples of how we sell ourselves using the emotional and logical combo. Okay, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in your copy. So it kind of looks something like this. Action is when emotion and logic combine. So if you can give people a real logical decision with the emotion, then they will take action. For another example, you guys saw the Camaro that I had up there, right? Man, when I tell you that Camaro was a banging price, I'm not even lying. It was really, really easy for me to justify that purchase because the Camaro was from 2018, only had 25,000 kilometers on it. It was looking crazy, bro. It looked amazing. It sounds crazy. And I loved it. And it was only like 40 grand Canadian. That's like under, way under, almost 30 grand US. That's a steal. And the sales guy did not have a hard time convincing me because it just, logically, it made a lot of sense too. And emotionally, I really wanted it. And so that's exactly how it worked on me. And that's how it works on most people. You can probably think of many examples of how that's worked on you as well. But how do we satisfy the emotional side of the brain? Well, look, the best way to evoke emotion is to appeal to people's most primal desires. Here are some ways how. Okay, so first of all, storytelling. All humans are easily hooked in by a good story. Like stories have been the number one form of entertainment since mankind has even been around. You have all these drawings on the walls of cavemen and stuff, and it's all stories, right? People are so interested in stories. Next is painting a picture. When you describe things in your copy, you should always paint a vivid picture by using ultra specificity. So we talked about this a couple times before, but when I say pack on nine pounds of muscle instead of just muscle or have rippling abs instead of just saying, you know, whatever, six pack. So you want to describe things and paint a vivid picture. Next, highlight benefits over features. A feature is something like a, an A16 bionic phone chip. That doesn't invoke any emotion into you. You're like, what? I, okay, and? But the benefit is that you can now surf the web or play games on your phone smoother than ever before. No more crashing or anything like that. Now you're like, oh yes, that sounds awesome. When I was playing on the A15 chip, my games would always crash. I couldn't play my Call of Duty on my iPhone in peace. Now with the A16 chip, you know, we're gonna be dope. We're gonna be good. Next is to describe fear and dream states, okay? These are highly emotional triggers that paint a drastic change, either good or bad in people's minds, okay? So fear and dream. So their fear state is what's gonna happen if they don't fix their problem in the next like year or more. So for example, you might find it hard to make money, but your fear state is you, have, you, you can't make money and maybe you're basically stuck in lower middle class. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You can't send your kids through college and all these other terrible things that you can't indulge in. All these terrible things that will happen to you if you never learn how to make money. The dream state is, well, now you make money from anywhere in the world and you make a ton of money, right? That's, that's the dream state. Fear state, dream state. And next we have urgency and scarcity. The fear of missing out is easily one of the most useful emotional triggers. Humans won't take action unless there's a reason to do it right now. Okay, so in the last email, for example, the scarcity that I used was uh, we, we're not going to be able to give away all these free calls forever. So if there's still a slot that you can book, I would go ahead and book it now instead of later. The reason why is because people hate to miss out on stuff. So by being able to use this properly, then we're able to way more easily get people to take action. But of course, how do we satisfy the logical part of the brain? Okay, so now we know a little bit more about emotional, but how do we satisfy the logical part of the brain? Well, 
for the most part, the average consumer is able to talk themselves out of buying a decision by rationalizing an action. Oh, well, I should probably think about it or I want to wait till this is on sale or blah, blah, blah. But when you tempt people with emotional triggers that align with rationality, they'll basically sell themselves. So for example, borrowed authority, getting people to trust in what you're saying isn't always easy, which is why you can get them to believe you if you're saying aligns with someone that they do trust, okay? So let's say that you are a basketball player and I say, hey, you should dribble like this. You dribble with this technique. You'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You don't know anything. But if I'm like, hey, bro, here's the thing. Michael Jordan always says that you should dribble like this. Then you'd be like, oh, damn. Well, I mean, if Michael Jordan says it, that makes a lot of sense. Or if I show you a video, hey, yo, this is Michael Jordan using this technique. And they're like, damn, I just convinced you because now you don't have to trust me. I'm actually using someone else's authority for you to do what I'm trying to say. Next, of course, relatability. When you describe someone's situation or problem better than they can, they will naturally believe you have this, the solution, okay? So you'll hear this a lot in copywriting and in marketing. And it's kind of like this. Let's say you're talking to a doctor. You're speaking with a doctor and you say, hey doctor, um, there's this thing on the back of my ear that's like really, really painful. And then your doctor is like, oh, is there like a small lump there? And whenever you press it, it moves. And you're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. What's the problem? You see what he did there. He described your exact issue that you're having. You didn't even have to tell him. So now you're, of course, going to think, OK, he's the expert. He knows exactly what I'm feeling. So I'm looking to him for the next piece of advice. And if your product or sales page or service or whatever is the next piece of advice, then that's exactly how you make more money with copywriting. OK, next is statistics. It's difficult to argue with facts and figures. Statistics can also be combined with borrowed authority for massive persuasion. For example, Harvard study shows that squats aren't that good for your legs. Next is testimonials. If there's someone else who can relate to the reader that has gotten the result the reader wants, it does wonders for building trust. People will trust you if others trust you. So for example, the other testimonials, hey, I've taught in these people how to live happier, healthier lives. And they're like, yeah, Dr. Tyson, you know what? I went, I checked him out and I wasn't sure, but I, I did his chiropractor, <laughs> whatever, a chiropractor class. And now I live and feel happier than ever. If you have other people trusting you, then that person is more likely to trust you as well. Next is proven scarcity. Okay. So like I already said about scarcity, but making scarcity proven, adding actual facts and figures to it, making it real is something that again is going to work wonders. If people can't come up with a genuine reason as to why your scarcity exists, then you will have no reason to prove it. Pro tip, scarcity can always be created. So for example, if you have an online program or course, like all these gurus do, and they say, make sure you buy it now, otherwise the price is gonna go up, or make sure you buy it now, otherwise it's not gonna be around forever, or we're gonna run out of courses. Bro, how do you, how do you run out of an online course? It's literally a video. <laughs> how do you run out of it? It doesn't, it's stupid. So you see anything like that, and then automatically you're gonna think, you know, this dude's just trying to sell me his garbage whatever he's just one of those scam guru guys and you shouldn't trust them because that is literally <laughs> that's garbage but how do you actually create real scarcity well it's kind of like i did in the other email example i justified it by saying we have a limited amount of coaches that can actually take these calls and the thing is that it's actually true the scarcity is real it's not just some airy fairy made up stuff like oh we're gonna run out of online courses or oh my ebook is gonna sell out like how do you sell out an ebook bro <laughs> come on now next of course is analogies so building off of proven concepts that and things that people already know is a great way to convince them of your point so it's a lot like the uh coffee example that i gave you guys at the beginning of this course it's like a one thousand dollar cup of coffee you're gonna you're gonna consume it all and you're gonna get the most out of it because you committed the most to it right and that's how i want to see i want you to see this program that's how i use an analogy to actually get my point across and explain it to you in a better way next we need to understand the only two human motivators that there even are the only two human motivators are moving away from pain and moving towards pleasure with a slight bias towards moving away from pain. If someone has a certain standard of living, let's say, 
they'll usually fight tooth and nail in order to avoid regression. So let's say they're making $100 a month. They're going to do whatever it takes in order for them not to fall to $50 a month. But if you tempt them saying, hey, you got to do this to reach $200 a month, they'll want to, but they won't be as motivated. This is something that we can use in our copywriting to evoke emotion. For example, 93% of the top economic publications are convinced that the worst recession this generation has ever seen will come in about the next one to three years. If you're currently unable to, to live a couple thousand dollars below your means, expect to be forced to downgrade houses, sell items that genuinely give you joy, and cancel the plans of your next vacation. The only reason I say this because millions of Americans are already being forced to give up these things. And evidence has shown that things are going to get five to 10 times worse. Boom. So that's adding all this justification, all these reading, uh, reasons, and also using a little bit of emotion by saying, look, you're going to have to, you're going to be forced to actually give up all these things because people are already being forced to give them up. And it's only going to get five to 10 times worse. That is going to persuade people into taking action, whatever action that I suggest them to take. And then this is moving towards pleasure. So the majority of people live in quiet desperation, longing for more out of life, but settling for less. By using this human bias and positioning ourselves as a solution, we can persuade our readers to actually take action. And next, we need to understand the what's in it for me, also known as WIIFM. You'll hear this a lot in copywriting circles or whatever with copywriting groups. That's because what's in it for me is crucial to every single piece of your copy. We currently live in an era of information overload. That's why people's brains are getting better and better at ignoring things. Can you imagine if you actually like watched every single video that you came across or, you know, actually were intaking every single piece of information that was shown to you? You'd really never stop intaking information and you'd never actually retain any of it either. So our brains have become ignoring machines. We ignore a thousand times more things than we actually consume in a day-to-day -day basis. So in order for someone to actually care about your copy, we need to make the benefit clear to them very early on. In an email, for example, your what's in it for me, okay, or your reason as to why they should want to keep reading should be within the very first three lines. For example, becoming a YouTuber can be confusing when first starting out. It's almost like the more you learn, the more questions you have. That's why in this email, I'm going to show you every common question new YouTubers have. That's the what's in it for me. That's the reason why you should keep reading. W-I-I-F-M, whatever you want to call it. That's it right there. And as you can see, it's in the first three lines. And that's how you put it in there. By the end of this email, you'll have everything you need to monetize your channel within the next couple of months. Boom. Even more what's in it for me, right? You don't have to add two lines, but I added two lines just to make people really, really want to keep reading. Even if you're currently at zero subscribers. So I even qualify it too. So that is a fat what's in it for me. <laughs> that's a big one. You don't need to make yours that long or three lines or whatever, but it should be at least one line. You need at least one line in there. Next, we need to understand more about the fear of missing out. Okay, so we talked about urgency and scarcity, but I want to go deeper into actual FOMO. Okay, that's the acronym. Nobody likes to miss the boat when it comes to opportunity. This is especially true in realms such as investments, for example. For example, imagine if you would have bought a couple of Bitcoin for 250 bucks a pop and held onto it until now. Or if you would have purchased some real estate right after the financial crisis in 2008 when real estate was dirt cheap. People know what it feels like to think, damn, I should have jumped on that when I could. So by showing them that this is an opportunity that they could regret missing later, they're far more likely to take action now instead of later. Every purchase is an impulse purchase. So I want you to look here. This is Bitcoin 2016 to 2021. So that's five years of a difference. And that is literally an extra $61,000 per Bitcoin. So 27,000% increase, which is just nuts in only five years. And people, most people miss that. I know I missed that. And uh, it would have been cool to actually invest. But I mean, I was like, what? I was 16 years old. Bitcoin was not on my radar back then. <laughs> so whatever. It is what it is. Now I want to go through some actual fundamental sec triggers with you on this sales page that I found. And so here we are on a sales page. Now this is a sales page kind of like I was explaining to you guys earlier. Now there's a few things to note here, okay? Quite a few things. So first and foremost, you see at the very, very top, what does it say? Fit pros, overwhelmed with what to post? So what is this? It's calling out their audience, calling out their audience and asking if they have the problem that this sales page will fix. And now this, I don't know if it's a sales page. Yeah, no, it must be a sales page because it doesn't say free anywhere on it. So this is a sales page. 
page. I don't know how much it costs or whatever, but we're going to look at the actual page and then we're going to find out. Get the exact post templates and content planner that grew my following to 200,000 and signed more than 3,500 online fitness clients. So let's break it down. The what's in it for me, okay? Remember I told you about the what's in it for me, the benefit people only really care about themselves? The exact post templates and content planner. You can get that. And and then this part, 200,000K following and 3,500 online fitness clients. That's the big promise. Also emotional, right? It's an emotional argument. And then here, without DMs, becoming an influencer, spamming social media, posting risque photos, or promoting scammy fad diets. You can get huge benefit with a big result without any of these pain points. So that's that's all most sales page headlines actually are, all right? Now we're gonna be going over more of like a sales page guide as we move on throughout the, uh, the free course here. But I also wanted to spend a little bit of time on this headline because this is essentially all the headlines that you're going to see. Okay, they're they are very, very formulaic. You really don't have to reinvent the wheel, all right? So you're calling out your audience, you're telling them exactly what kind of awesome benefit that they can get, and you're also you know, saying that they can get it without any of these things that they either think that the program is about and without any of the pain points. So if you are a fit pro, for example, you probably have a lot of people saying, oh, well, you need to become an influencer or you need to do cold DMs or you need to spam social media. So you're probably figuring as soon as you get here, oh, well, it's probably one of these things. But now that you find out it's not one of these things, you're even more intrigued. You're like, huh, I wonder, I wonder what it is. Kind of like imagine if someone was like, hey, bro, I'm going to teach you how to build your biceps. And you're like, oh, OK, well, you know, it's probably just going to be this stupid bicep curl exercise. But you're, then you're like, yeah, I'm going to show you how to grow your biceps without even doing one bicep curl. And you're like, wait, hold on, what? Well, then what is it then, right? It kind of piques your curiosity. This is called a not statement, okay? A not statement is essentially building intrigue because people usually think that they know what the answer is. They know what the punchline is. So if you prove to them that they don't know what the hell the punchline is, now they're gonna be even more intrigued. So I guess I actually didn't show you guys how sales pages are usually structured quite yet. So headline, this is the video sales letter, okay? This, copywriter. This right here, written by a copywriter. And then as seen in Forbes, Entrepreneur, and these other ones. So this, of course, is building social proof. This is building authority. This is satisfying the logical part of the brain when it talks about all these publications that they were actually shown in. And here is a mock-up. A mock-up essentially kind of shows you physical examples of what you're getting. And then these here are called bullets. A bullet is essentially what you get and then how it helps you. And then what you get and then how it helps you and then what you get and then how it helps you. That is how bullets are done. You'll see some people do bullets incorrectly, but they actually did the bullets quite well. So for example, a full month of recyclable posting templates to eliminate the guesswork and overwhelming feeling that comes with regular posting. So this is the feature and this is the benefit. Okay, remember I was talking about benefits to features. An easy way to translate a feature like this to a benefit is by saying, so you can. You get the A16 bionic chip in your iPhone so you can play games and not have your iPhone crash, for example. 60 proven headlines that are pre-engineered to call in your dream clients and make them know, like, and trust you before they even speak to you. Systematized posting prompts and tools practically guaranteed to sky rocket your engagement so notice how they're speaking about these okay and notice also the formatting the formatting is italicized bolded and underlined you shouldn't necessarily need to do you can just do bolded and underlined and then the benefit so it's very very easy to read it's very very consumable plus 10 done for you post templates download now and we'll see and we'll send you this bonus Boom. And then a little bit more about them and who they are, I suppose. And some more copy down here and then some more copy down here. So as you can see, there's all types of copywriting all over this page and all inside of this video. And there's probably copywriting inside the actual program as well, because most of the times these small deal programs are essentially just positioned for you to consume the contents, like what they do, and then decide that you want to work with them through a like a mentorship or something, which is going to cost sometimes two, three, sometimes 10 grand, sometimes 20 grand if it's like a business coaching type of thing. So that is exactly how all of this stuff works. Now you really, really know and you have a tangible example. We've gone through all of the psychological factors when it comes to reaching a page or writing copy just like this. And that was our one example because now we have 
part four, which is the copy commandments. Here are some hard and fast rules about copywriting that you guys need to know. You need to understand. And man, when I learned some of this stuff, oh, it absolutely just blew the doors open. Not only did it really help me in the way of, okay, well now I have a much better understanding, but it also gave me a lot of confidence because I realized, you know what? Copywriting is literally not just something super difficult. It's literally just taking certain bits of information and almost like filling in the blanks. Once you get it much better, copy will just flow out of you. I do this thing sometimes called freestyling where I just like could literally just write down a piece of copy and have it be honestly really, really good. Then maybe go through some edits and boom, it'll be done. I can write a, I could write a really good piece of copy in like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. A lot of people, especially you, if you're just starting out, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but you'll get there. You'll get there. So rule number one about copywriting, okay? Great writing and great copywriting are very, very separate things, my boy. The following is regarded as one of the best poems and pieces of writing to ever be created by all mankind. This is the best writing ever. It's called Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Ozymandias. There was actually a whole Breaking Bad episode named after Ozymandias. It was actually the one where Hank died. Anyways, I digress. One of the greatest and most famous pieces of writing in the English language, and I quote, I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well, those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. That's kind of like half of the poem. But what the hell does that mean, bro? I don't know. If you know, I think you deserve a scholarship, bro, because I have no idea. What does that even mean? But that's the great part. This is some poetic stuff that probably took homeboy years to write just for me to not even understand it. That is terrible copywriting. And I'll tell you why it's terrible copywriting, because copywriting is supposed to be clear and concise. Your message is supposed to be transcribed from your head into somebody else's head and as little words possible. Okay, it's supposed to be as simple as possible. The reading level of your copywriting should literally be 10 years old. A 10 year old should literally know how to read your copy and understand it. That means you will be making six figures as a copywriter writing like a 10 year old. Remember this lesson, confusion kills conversions. That's that's number one is in all of marketing, all of copywriting. Confusion kills conversions. So always focus on clarity over cleverness. Your main goal as a copywriter is to communicate ideas in the most efficient way possible while using as little words as you can. It's not about being fancy. It's not about making all of these interesting analogies and metaphors and similes or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, we don't know oxymorons or whatever. All we need is simple, easy to understand language, right? That's, that's all of the examples that I've shown you up until now. You've never been sitting there and going, hmm, I wonder what that means. Because it literally takes you a, a football team of scholars to understand what this even means, which is terrible copywriting, okay? So two very different things. Do not think that you have to come in here and be a great writer. Next is what we need to understand with is the value equation. What is value, right? You'll hear this term a lot, value, value, value. What does value really mean? One of the main goals of copywriting is to communicate value, but what does that really mean? Nine-figure entrepreneur and business influencer, Alex Ramosi, came up with this useful equation, right? And this is a very useful equation. I'm gonna zoom in on it just so we really can, can see it better. So, as we can see, dream outcome times perceived likelihood of achievement divided by time delay and effort plus sacrifice equals value. Translation. So we need to maximize the dream outcome. So solve a problem worth solving. So we need to solve a big problem. So if you tell people, hey, you know, I'm going to solve this little teeny weeny problem, like maybe you're a fitness influencer and I want to solve the problem, you not knowing what to post, right? That's a pretty small problem in the big, you know, scheme of things. So that product that I just showed you, for example, was probably what? most likely 27 or 97 bucks, right? Which is not a lot of money. If I were to charge people like 2000 bucks for that, they'd be like, hell no, nah, that's like a little teeny weeny problem. I ain't charging, I ain't paying a lot of money for that. So they were giving you value, but they were purposely just solving a small problem for you. Okay, that's, that's what the whole thing about it was. But it was still good copywriting. And the reason why is because you need to keep price in mind. Value to price ratio. You want your value to be way higher than your price at all time. Okay, so the price on that was pretty low. So it wasn't that hard to ham up a lot of value. Dream outcome plus perceived likelihood of achievement. This could be things like testimonials. So right here, things like testimonials, improving case studies. Okay, how likely are you to actually do it? And social proof. And 
authority. So when they had all those publications, as mentioned in Entrepreneur and Forbes, now you're like, oh, well, damn, you know, these people are, are really about it. Right? These people were actually mentioned in these large publications that I know I've heard, I've heard of before. That's how they build trust with you and multiply the perceived likelihood of achievement. Next of all, minimize time to success. How can we make it faster? how we can show more progress. Always adding things like 30 days, 60 days, 90 days always helps. Six months, one year, these things always help. How to get monetized on YouTube in 90 days, people will be like, damn, I really wanna know how to do that. Next is minimize effort and sacrifice. How can we make this easier, more seamless and convenient? In the last example we looked at, we talked about templates, done for you templates, done for you systems and all these sorts of things, easy peasy. Next, I wanna show you how a simple ladder makes millions all right this is your intro into marketing and how it all works i kind of already touched on this just a little bit but it's of course much worth mentioning again this is my beautiful little diagram here and before you guys say yes i know i could have pursued my artistic career but i decided to do this copy or anything instead so for the most part people will only do business with people who they know like and trust right people who they have a relationship with i don't want to do no business with somebody i have no idea who they are like I'm kind of sketchy about them. I don't know. To get people to the state of trusting you enough to make sizable purchases, it's best to build a relationship with low risk offers first. Okay. Now here's yet another example from my boy, Alex Ramosi. You can see right there on the left, it says warm. So this is a marketing term where if people are warmed up to you, then they like you. If people are cold to you, then they're still strangers. People who know you are like, hi, take my money. People who don't know you, cold audience will be like, hi. And they'll be like, stranger danger. Man, get me out of here. I don't want to do no business with you. I don't know you. Next, we need to understand brand voice. And this one is so important. This is one that copywriters always miss out on. And if you can't nail a brand voice, then it doesn't really matter how good your copywriting is. Okay, and I'll explain why. A huge mistake that many copywriters commit is speaking in their voice instead of the client's voice. Okay, I don't want to send out no copywriting. That sounds like you and not like me. It's my brand, it's my business. I want it to sound like me. For example, if you want to send a motivating or inspiring email, you should use stories and learning lessons from your clients rather than from your own experience. If the copywriter tells a story about, hey bro, so anyways, I was at the airport the other day and this thing happened, like, no. <laughs> I want it to be about the, the, the business. Furthermore, the style of communication should reflect that of your clients as well. If the client is less formal and more personal, the copy should reflect that, for example. Where can you get brand voice from? How can you actually understand brand voice? Well, you got things like TikTok sales pages, emails that they've already written, YouTube videos that they've already created, reels, stories, shorts, ads, tweets, captions, interviews, live streams. There's literally so many, so much information that you can pull from as a copywriter. And I want to give you a quick example. This is my boy, Wes Watson. And he has a very distinct brand voice that I've never really seen anywhere else. Getting started with Wes Watson, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we just need to choose to effing win. We just need to choose to effing win. It's all perspective on what the F is winning to you. Winning to me is happiness. It's inner peace. I chose to win. Conquer your inner voice, right? Your inner weak voice. Join my exclusive group that's filled with information and support of hundreds of people just like you to overcome life's greatest challenges. Understand that he has a very distinct brand voice. If you come in here too soft, like, hey, it's not your fault, okay? I want to coach you to overcome the mental barriers in your mind that are blocking you from your, your, your life that you desire. That's way too soft for this dude. This dude is hard. He's fast. He tells it to you like it is. He's like Andrew Tate times 10. All right. He's out here cussing at you on his sales page, which is something I've almost never seen before. But as you can see, that's kind of his brand. That's, how, that's his style. That's what he goes for. His brand voice is very distinct. You would, want, you would also not want to use this dude's brand voice for some crazy, some, for some little yoga teacher or something. So you need to take this into account and always use the actual client that you're working for, so brand voice, boom. Brand voice explained. Now you are, ah, man, you're ahead of so many copywriters. Cause so many copywriters, they, they focus on creating the best copy possible and they're really good copywriters. They've been doing this for three, four, five months, but they're like, hey man, I don't got no clients. I'm like, yeah, no, no wonder you ain't got no clients, bro. You're writing copy that don't even sound like the, the people you're trying to write it for. So, you know, now you know. Thank God. Now you know. <laughs> Saves you a lot of struggle right there. Trust. Understanding your avatar slash target niche. Your target audience is a general subset of people who may identify with your offer or content. An avatar, not like the blue people running around. I'm talking about the avatar in marketing is bringing your ideal consumer 
to fruition so you can get a crystal clear idea on how to single them out, okay? Now that might not have made sense to you, but I'll give you a more tangible example. Target audience, males aged 18 to 24, lives in the United States, plays sports. That's the target audience. An avatar, Costin, the Romanian boss, is an 18 year old guy who listens to Andrew Tate and other inspirational online figures. He's highly motivated to make a better life for himself and start a journey with self-improvement, but he struggles with the basics like waking up on time and eating right. So that's the avatar, right? It's very, very mega specific. I gave him a name, I gave him an age. I, I, I have a actual person, a one singular person in my mind. That's an avatar. Whereas the target audience is like a group of people who you might identify with. So why is this important? How can we use it? Well. On the shooting range, right? I told you guys I was in the military, but on the shooting range, a common saying is aim small, miss small. What does that mean? If I'm making an email with Costin in mind, it's a little bit different than if I'm making an email with just random 18 to 24 year olds in mind. I might say something like, hey, if you're 18 to 24 and you play a lot of sports, maybe you play basketball, maybe you play football, maybe you play this. I'm going to literally, for, for whatever reason, like if I'm not being that specific, I'm going to speak like that. That might be how you want to speak with like ads or something. But if you're talking to a very, very specific type of person, this is how you enter the conversation inside of people's heads like we talked about. If you're 18 years old, right? Maybe you've been out there listening to a lot of Andrew Tate and you're highly motivated. You want to make a better life for yourself. You know you're destined for more. You don't want to follow the conventional path. You don't want to go to no college. You don't want to go to no university. You know that path ain't for you, but there's still one burning question in your mind. What do I actually do? How do I start? I'm not really sure. I mean, there are all, there's also there's too many options, yet not enough options at the same time. Well, I'm going to help you with that. Now I know exactly what to pull from. I know exactly exactly what things to say to speak to my target audience. And hey, maybe there are some people who don't identify with this as strongly as Costin does. Those are the people in the target audience. But if I aim for the target target audience, I'm more likely to miss. It's just like this. It's like a bullseye. If I aim for the avatar, I'll hit the avatar 50% of the time and hit the target audience 50% of the time. If I only aim for the target audience, I'll hit the target audience 50% of the time, but I'll miss the whole mark 50% of the time. That's a great way to actually make it tangible in your mind so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Part five, it's time for us to understand some different types of copywriting. So I already went on to email copywriting quite a bit, but I want to explain this one a little bit more and then we'll actually take some examples of ad copy and sales page copy, okay? So email copywriting. Email copywriting consists of creating digital, creating marketing emails that can be sent out to a company's list of email addresses or can be automatically sent to each new subscriber as soon as they subscribe to somebody's email list. That is email copy. If that doesn't make too, too much sense to you, don't worry because I'm gonna speak a little bit more about, about email marketing as we go on. I also have a very, very in-depth free one hour course on email marketing that you guys can check out after this one. Next up, we need to understand ad copy. Okay, ad copy is anything that is created with the purpose of using cold traffic. If you don't understand, cold traffic is people who do not know you. They don't know who your brand is at all. This can be things like YouTube ads, Instagram ads, and Facebook ads, okay? So let's take a quick peek at what that might look like. Boom, so this is an Instagram ad that I came across. Damn, my notification's going wild, going wild. If you don't follow me on Instagram, bro, Tyson.Scales, you're gonna get a lot of great content there as well. $132,500 in 30 days from a $5 book. Now, isn't that interesting? So that's a big, it's a big hook. Now, you see this big result and you're wondering, well, how? How did that happen? You got the arrows, you know, pointing towards where your eyes should look next. So also some other things to know. In 30 days, remember where we talked about value? You want to sh shorten the amount of time it takes for people to get to their uh, desired outcome. This is the law of ultra specificity. You see where it says 132,500? If it just said 100,000, then it's not as specific as 132,500. Adding specificity to it makes it sound real. If someone says, where, you, where were you last night? And then you're like, you're coming up with a lie and you're like, I was at the grocery store. Then you're gonna be like, oh, dude, this dude's lying, bro. He's telling me that he was at the grocery store at eight o'clock at night. What were you getting, dog? <laughs> what are you talking about? But if you were like, oh, I was at the grocery store. I needed some grapes. See, I've been eating a lot of grapes lately because I don't wanna eat full meals and eating grapes really does help me vanquish my hunger. So the reason why I was there so late is because I was so hungry, but I didn't wanna commit to eating a full meal and cheating on my diet. So that's why I went to go get grapes at 8 p.m. Added all that specificity and now you're like, huh, well, I mean, damn. You don't, you can't make that stuff up, so I guess so. 
And that's actually real too. That's why I've been eating a lot of grapes. But I digress. Month one of launching my wife's Facebook group, she signed 132,500 USD of client contracts and has a full calendar of hot leads. This concept of hot and hot and cold traffic is really coming up a lot. But good though, because now you guys are going to understand it. Hot leads. We only implemented the information from CNC's 495 ebook plus $200 Australian per day ad spend. 6,000 Australian ad spend into 132,500 USD. So that equals 195K AUD. Work out the ROAS on that. If you don't know ROAS, return on ad spend. It's a little bit, it's a little bit above your pay rate at the current amount of time, but don't worry about it. The right offer plus the right strategy equals gold. Order your digital copy today. So this essentially is just a quick testimonial. But then we have more copy over here in the description, in the caption. This Facebook client getting method is so powerful. Please only use it ethically. Now you're thinking, damn, it's so good that I could use it unethically. What might happen? What if I do use it unethically? Ooh. Because it helps us sell out all the spots in our high ticket coaching programs, forcing us to reject 30% of qualified applications ready to pay. So the only problem you're going to have is that you have too many clients. You don't have too much money. You won't know what to do with it. Big payoff, big result without pain points, complex funnels, fancy websites, cold DMing prospects. We just use a simple Facebook group and the strategies we share with you here. And then the link inside you'll learn. And then here's the bullets, just like I was saying, how to rapidly grow your Facebook group and fill up your blah, 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 blah. The new way they're selling high ticket programs to sophisticated buyers that overcome their skepticism even before you speak with, the, speak with them on the phone. How to position yourself as the instant authority and win the trust of your ideal clients so that they choose to work with you instead of your competition and all these other stuff. Plus, you'll get the fill in the blank templates you'll need to launch a new group to re or revive an old one to get a surge of new members fast. So feature, fill in the blank templates. Benefit, revive your group. Bro, all of the stuff that I'm showing you is very formulaic. You're starting to notice a pattern. All the patterns that you're noticing right now is literally all copywriting is. It's just patterns. Um, I don't wanna say templates and fill in the blanks because even though that, that realistically is what it is, it's pretty much all templatized, all fill in the blank, right? And I don't want to sound like, oh, super easy. All you got to do is fill in the blank, make a million dollars. But essentially, it's kind of what it is. Fill in the blanks, throw it through ChatGPT, use some AI, just like I'm about to show you how to do. And bro, even if your English ain't good, bro, you're a good ass copywriter. <laughs> you're killing the game. Right? And then of course there's sales page copy. I've already kind of shown you guys one sales page, but I'll show you guys another one. And it's actually the sales page to this um, ad that we just looked at. So whenever someone actually clicks on an ad or the link in your email, they lead to a page that will communicate the value of a product. It consists of this page, a huge, yeah, the, the contents of this page plays a huge role in its success. So we just looked at the ad copy, bro. There was the actual copywriting on the picture. There was the copywriting in the testimonial. There was the copywriting in the caption. And then, man, we go over the sales page. What do we find? Copywriting, copywriting, copywriting everywhere. This video is copywriting. This headline is copywriting. This is copywriting. This is copywriting. This is copywriting. This, is copywriting. this whole funnel, you can believe a copywriter was literally paid so many thousands of dollars. And then guess what? After they buy this product, they have to submit their email. Their email goes onto an email list. The email list does what? Emails, copywriting. Are the gears starting to flow with you now, man? I tell you that, a cop that copywriting is literally the glue that holds a whole company's business together. I'm not lying. It is literally, I'm, I'm showing you right here, right this. This is easily a seven or eight figure business, I, I can guarantee you. So, like I said, coaches, consultants, and agency owners calling out their ideal customers, just like the last sales page, just like all the copy we've looked at already. Steal our $10 million Facebook group system. Big benefit. Download the million dollar group system book today. Get one to two high paying clients each day with ease. And then here's the video sales letter. We're not going to actually watch it at the moment, but this was written by copywriters. The script for this is written by copywriters. Download now just five bucks. Claim your special bonus. The next nine people to claim their digital book of million dollar group method will get our AI content formula for free. Okay, now what is this? This is scarcity. Only the next nine people. What is nine people? Why nine people instead of 10 people? Ultra specificity, guys. 
The principles here are everywhere. <laughs> like every single, it's, it's all the same stuff, okay? Anybody can do this. This ain't hard. You could probably go and write a good sales page right now. <laughs> what is the million dollar group method? Then boom, it shows you exactly here what it is. It explains you how to do it. I'm not gonna read it because that's a lot of text, but if you wanted to know, there it is right there. Here's how he built a $10 million coaching company with a single client getting Facebook group. Here's what you'll get. And here's a little bit about homeboy, Landon Stewart. He's from Arizona, I guess. That's him, that's his, that's his check, that's his shorty, that's his boothang. Clients and community, here's him. London moving into his dream home. He has one of those cool TVs that looks like wallpaper or whatever. He has a pretty cool setup. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I think my setup wins. Okay, never mind. I think his, his setup is pretty cool. He got the, he got the lights, he got the books. My, my homeboy made 32 grand in a day, man. He made 10 million overall. Sheesh. Man, he ain't playing, bro. He ain't playing around. He comes with a guarantee and everything. So look at this huge page, bro. This is not a tiny page. Man, this, this page right here, you can guarantee it made bank, bro. It made bank. The page itself was structured by a copywriter, all written by a copywriter. The video was written by a copywriter. The contents inside, easily written by a copywriter. The emails that you'll get, written by copywriters. The copywriting is everything, bro. The copywriting is everything. Everything. <laughs> so now you know exactly what it all looks like. And that's still the tip of the iceberg, man. So what should you actually focus on to learn copywriting? How do you learn it? How do you practice it? So what you should start with. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now what you should start your focus on. You should start your focus on writing short emails. So look, these short emails are gonna be 200 to 300 words ideally. So they're really short emails. The reason why short emails win as soon as you're starting is because they're the easiest to create. You're gonna, your mistakes are gonna show up. So all you need to do is get them reviewed, right? And they're easy to review. I'm gonna be honest, nobody wants to review your 10,000 words page. It's way too much. It's just, that feels like work. I only wanna look at your 200, 300 word email. It's gonna be short, easy to consume. Boom, boom, done. Next is story emails, okay? After you understand just writing short emails with some of the structures I'm gonna show you that are not story, story emails, then you wanna write story emails. Now story emails are highly effective, yet a little bit more difficult to pull off than other copywriting structures. And next up, you want to actually write some sales pages. Okay, sales pages consist of many moving parts from headlines to video sales letters to body copy. That's why they're more advanced than just the emails. But you can charge way more upfront. All right, and we'll be learning about this more in the next section, how much you should charge, how to make a lot of money with copywriting. But right now we need to understand what copywriting even is and how to actually write it, okay? Then we need to speak about writing other types of copy. So there are hundreds of different types of copy out there. At the end of the day, when you master the foundational skills, you'll be able to write any sort of copy you get assigned, right? So there's lots of different types, but if you understand these three things and you can, you can actually write good with these three things, then boom, you know, all, all types of copy are done. So how do we actually start with copywriting today? Okay, today, what do you do? After you watch this whole, however many hours it is, program free course, what do you do? We need to analyze copy. Now, as you guys can tell, it's very, very helpful when I go through and show you guys examples of what I'm talking about. Different sales pages and stuff that have made millions and millions of dollars before. So first thing you wanna do is analyze copy. To figure out what copy looks like, how it flows, common techniques, you should continually and analyze and break down every single ad, email, and sales page you come across. Okay, so instead of scrolling past ads like we all do, you're gonna wanna take a look at it, click on it, look through the sales page and understand how it all works. Just like I kinda showed you guys how to do. Next, go to synthesize, damn. By analyzing copywriting relevant to your niche, you're gonna find different angles, strategies, and fascinations that you can use in your own copy in the future. This is called a swipe file. We're gonna talk about this uh, in a second. And next, of course, you're gonna wanna opti optimize. Okay, optimize basically by going through the refinement process. This is where you write a piece of copy, you put it all together, and then you get it reviewed, and then you also make a good copy by reviewing it yourself the next day. All right, that's how you wanna optimize. So what is a swipe file? I mean, how do we synthesize? So your copy is literally only going to consist, not exclusively, but mostly just from other people's copy. If they have certain lines that they did well, certain things that they did well, you wanna just use all of their copy Right, and Frankenstein your own piece of really good copy. For example, ma'am, it's the same with YouTube. Nobody on YouTube comes up with their own ideas. It's all just recycled ideas with their own little spin on it. So for example, seven dirty habits that turn men weak. Eight habits keeping you a weak man, remove them from your life. Five habits keeping men weak. Six disgusting habits keeping men weak. 
Six habits keeping men weak. Why do all these YouTubers just make the exact same video? Because all these videos are always gonna pop off. They understand, hey man, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. All you need to do is take somebody else's idea and make it your own. That's it. Take somebody else's copy and make it your own. That's why it's, that's why it's called copy. You just copy other people. Come on now, man. Come on now, man. If any flames, I don't know what it is. Great copywriters are masters at ethically stealing the best copy that they already know works. For example, all the topics above are the exact same, but the pacing, style, script, and content are all totally different. Exactly. Some of them just feature some guy talking. Some of them feature, I don't know, cartoon animations. And some of them feature B-roll, like some stock footage. Some of them are in different voice. Some of them have different pacings. All the habits that they're talking about are different, right? So that's where it actually comes from. Remember, copy isn't written. It's assembled. You literally just take certain parts. You fill in the blanks. You take parts of other people's copy and you put it into your own. Okay, that is exactly how you do it. And now not only will your copywriting be much better if you just like do what I'm saying here and synthesize, but man, it's gonna be so much easier. You're not gonna be sitting there just like looking at a blank document like, oh man, I don't know what to write, dog. I don't know what to write. You don't need to know what to write, right? And also you don't need to do all this complicated research and all this other stuff on what your avatar or what your, what your target audience is. It's already done for you. Just look at the big, the big players in your niche See what they're doing with their copy. And do the same with your copy. But we need to talk about building your swipe file. Okay, so how do you actually go about building your swipe file? So you're gonna need to go through and find ads, which is not going to be hard in 2023 to find an ad. And if you see anything that's effective, anything that you like, or anything that you see is getting a lot of traction, or anything that you keep seeing all the time, you're gonna to wanna to copy that or screenshot it and put it into a document that you have called swipe file. Right now, now I know this is a huge free course, already huge free course, already worth thousands of dollars easily, but I want to give you even more value by giving you access to my personal swipe file. Now I was forgetting if I, I was, I was figuring out if I should do this or not. I wasn't really sure, but you know what, ma'am? It's one of the best ways to learn copy and that's what I'm mostly concerned about. I'm mostly concerned about you guys learning and understanding copy. Tyson, why are you giving out so much free value? Look, I'm not gonna just be one of those guys that's like, well, look, you know, I just really, really, I really, really want to give back to the community and I'm super humble and blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna play humble like that, no. I have my own selfish reasons. I wanna be known as one of the greats, man. I came out here to, to be the best at what I do. Only way that I can do that is making you watching this right now a lot of money. I want to make you rich. Cause when I make you rich, you'll say, yo, Tyson Ford, you made me rich. But Tyson Ford, you makes you rich. All you need to do is post about it in the, in the Discord that you gotta win and everybody's gonna be happy, dog. Everybody's gonna be happy. So I actually have a swipe file that you can access inside of the copy starter kit, the free copy starter kit that you can download down in the description after this video. And now I wanna take you guys through the full guide of writing a great piece of email copy, All right? A full guide, A to Z, everything. So what should your email actually look like? What should it consist of? What are the parts of it? You know, how does it actually go? Well, here's what it should look like. At the beginning, you have your subject line, of course. Every email has a subject line. Your subject line should always be, ideally, under 40 characters. The reason being is because 40 characters is the maximum it can be before it's cut off on the preview on somebody's phone screen on Gmail. That is why 40 characters is as much as you wanna go. Next up, we want to get somebody's attention by saying something bold, saying something disrupting. Then we wanna get their interest. Tell them something that they're going to want to know and tell them why it works or tell them so just tell them more. And the next step, we set up some desire. So we take their interests and now we manufacture some desire and tell them if they want that desire, they're gonna have to take action. Action is a call to action. Click here to book a call, click here to buy this product or go to this page or learn how to do this, that, or the other thing. Now this is a uh, structure that you'll see a lot. A-I-D-A, -A. ADA, right? It's the most basic copywriting or marketing structure that there really is. But there are some more structures. P-A-S, H-S-O, and C-J-N. Now, P-A-S and H-S-O have been around for decades. I don't even know. They're, they're one of the oldest types of uh, copywriting structures, email structures. C-J-N is one that I actually created myself. Um, you know, people always write in C-J-N a lot, but I'm the one that kind of gave it a name, right? So we need to go through problem, agitate, and solution. So here's a diagram of what it looks like and how it might work. So problem. I do have that problem. Now that you mention it, agitate. Man, this problem is bad. It needs to be fixed now. But solution, don't worry, man. There's a solution. There's a way to make it better. So problem, relate to them 
with a problem that they are currently facing that or they may that they may or may not know that they have. Right. So a lot of people have problems that they don't even know. And, and all you need to do is call attention to it. So here's an example. Have you ever lost money on a trade and spent the rest of the week revenge trading? Right. So this is like this is something to day traders. And this is a common problem that they have a lot that the average person might not know. But day traders, they know that they have. So essentially what they do is they're day trading, you know, they're doing the thing and they lose. So they're like, ah, oh, damn, I just lost money. And they're like, damn, I have to make my money back right now. So they trade very aggressively and they just throw their trading, trading plan away. Right? That's how day trading works. And then they turn a bad day into a bad week and they lose a ton of money and just blow up their accounts. This is when you emotionally trade aggressively and usually ends up turning a red day into a red week real quick. And now only traders are going to be like, ah, oh, damn, he's describing that problem very, very well. I do that all the time. And also, I, I'm not a day trader myself. The only reason I know this is because I've seen day traders talk about it online. And you agitate it. This is where you twist the knife and paint the picture of how bad the situation will get if not remedied. So example, this is the number one reason that new traders blow up their account and quit day trading for good. I've seen dozens of naive traders make their 100k trading fund disappear in as little as a couple months. Now that's scary. Imagine having a, starting with 100k and then poof, it disappears into like 20 or 10k. And the very thing that was supposed to give you freedom, day trading, is now caught you in shackles and now you're forced to go back and work as an Uber driver to, uh, to make ends meet. And I know that because that is actually literally a story that I've heard before. I met a guy on, on Hamza's Discord server who said that that's exactly what he did. So that's, that's painting a picture of, you know, then what's going to happen, then what's, what's going to happen. And you can always go deep with this, right? And you can always go deeper. So for example, now you're forced out to work at Uber. Now your girlfriend is like, you know, she doesn't want to work with a dude at Uber because it's embarrassing. So she breaks up with you. So then you have to date this wildebeest. This wildebeest hates you and you don't like her at all, but it's the only chick that you can get. Then you have a baby with this wildebeest. Now you're stuck with this wildebeest. But your baby, you know, you, you're, only, you're, only going to, you're only working at Uber, so you can't make a lot of money. So now your kid can't go to college. So now he is forced to drive Uber too. And now you're going to have a whole lineage of Uber drivers just because you don't know how to solve this one small problem. Of course, that's exaggerated. But, but I wanted to paint out the picture for you so that you know exactly how deep you can actually go. And you can always go deeper. Essentially, you want to paint a picture about how this one problem can eventually ruin their life. So the solution... This is the advice or lesson that will remedy the problem that's been, that's been agitated. Remember to use the problem solution loop, like I'm going to show you here. That's why creating a trading plan and learning how to stick to it is by far the most difficult yet rewarding key to making as much money as you want. If you want to know how to come up with a trading plan tailored to you that you can actually stick to, click here to watch the free training that I uploaded. And then you click there, free training, that's the action. There's also so many other types of call to actions that you could have. So you could be like, oh, well, click here to actually copy my trading. I've been profitable trading for the last 20 years, and you can click here to actually copy my trades. So many different ways you could do it. So the attention, right, how you get their attention is relate to a problem. Have you ever lost money on a trade and spent the rest of the week revenge trading? That's how you get their attention because you're like, oh my God, yes. I'm so interested in what he's going to say next. A common expression that you might hear is the job of your first line is to get people to read your second line. The job of your second line is to get people to read your third line and so on and so forth until the job of your last line is to get them to click on whatever you want them to click on. The interest is, hey, this is a really bad problem. If you don't fix it, then something bad's going to happen. The desire is, but I know a way to fix it. The way to fix it is to come up with a training plan. Now you've just manufactured desire. And the last part, of course, action. Click here if you want a free training plan know how to create a free training plan that's tailored to you. Value, amazing, crazy. Next, challenge, justify, in need. Otherwise known as C, J, and my personal structure. Challenge, it starts with a challenge in belief. Whoa, 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 this dude's crazy. What is he talking about? This dude's off his rocker. And then you justify it with proof and facts. Hold up, you know, this crazy dude actually got a point. Maybe he's right. And then I wanna learn more, or I need what he actually just told me that I needed. So here's how it actually goes broken down. So challenge. A great way to get someone's attention is for you to say something that's contrary to popular belief. Example, Kim Kardashian is the best entrepreneur of our generation. People are going to be like, Kim Kardashian? But what about Alex Harmozy, dog? And, and then you could start the email with, Kim Kardashian is better than Alex Harmozy. She's better than Ty Lopez. She's better than all these other online entrepreneurs that there, that there are. All the business influencers that you know, Kim Kardashian is better. That's something crazy. 
That's, that's a challenging belief, contrary to popular belief. How on earth could he say that? This dude's, this dude's nuts. But hold up. Justify. She's not the smartest, hardworking, or even the best looking, but she knows how to get attention and turn them into followers. This is why she's one of the richest people on the planet. And now you're like, huh? Well, I mean, I guess she does have the most followers, the most loyal fan base. She knows how to turn her followers into dollars. Maybe she is the best entrepreneur out there. Then there's a need. This is where you transition into the learning lesson and you use the solution problem loop into the CTA. Okay, so for example, and by studying the strategies used by Kim, I've been able to distill her ability to monetize attention into a simple three-part formula. I call it the Kim K Funnel. If you want access, just reply to this email and I'll send it over. Now, isn't that interesting? So I've manufactured desire. The desire is, look, you need to understand how to market like Kim K because she's the one making the most money out here. She's the biggest billionaire out here, dog. I call it the Kim K funnel. Now you're like, ooh, Kim K funnel, what's that? Now you have, and it's a simple three-part formula. So now you're really interested. Okay, what is it? If you want access, just reply to this email and I send it over. See, not every email has to be click here to go here or click here to go there. It can also be replied to this email. The benefit to that is, you know, it's more personal. Now, it's like you and me are actually in a conversation rather than me sending you some marketing email and you going and clicking and buying something and whatever. Instead, we're having a discussion and I'm giving it to you. It builds that relationship factor. Next, of course, hook, story, and offer. So what's the hook? Ooh, that's interesting, right? Hook. Mm. Next, Wow, that's a cool lesson for that story. The story is intriguing. Now you have a lesson. And next up is an offer. Hmm, maybe this will work. So here's how it goes. A hook that grabs people's attention by giving them a piece of your story that sounds interesting or difficult to believe. Example, why getting fired four times was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wait a second, you got fired four times? How is that the best thing that ever happened to you? I need to know how. That's what people will be thinking. Story. This is where you, uh, re you reveal the story and give people insight into the feelings and the moral dilemmas of the main character. All right, example, in 2008, I lost everything four times. No matter how many times I picked myself up and dusted myself off, misfortune was waiting to knock me back down again. It was like trying to escape quicksand. The more I struggled, the worse it got. Now, and you're like, ooh. So, so understand that I'm not retelling the story here. A big problem that people have is they say, in 2008, I got fired four times. It's like, okay, but tell me how it felt. What was the moral angst, the dilemma? What actually happened? How did it feel? Paint a picture. No matter how many times I picked myself up, back up and dusted myself off, misfortune was always waiting to knock me back down again. It was like trying to escape quicksand. The more I struggled, the worse it got. That's how it really felt. And this is also a little bit why they're a little bit, these story emails are a little bit more difficult than the other emails that I previously mentioned which is why you should learn them in that order, okay? So the offer. Now you offer them the learning lesson of your advice and transfer it to another problem solution loop, of course. Problem solution loop, very, very integral when it comes to copywriting. Example, but after getting laid off for the fourth time in three months, I knew I'd had enough. So I fired up Google, searched for ways to make money online, and three years later, I just made my first million online. Don't forget that it's always the darkest before dawn. Join the newsletter here. You got this, man. That might be something that, like, you know, Justin Waller might post on his, on his YouTube community post to get more people into his newsletter. And then that's marketing, man. <laughs> that's marketing right there. He gives you a pep talk and he lets you know, join the newsletter here if you want to learn more. That's the HSO. All right? And this one is, is very, very, like, I can't even tell you how effective stories are, right? So let me show you how effective stories really, really are. So look, this is a YouTube video that I recorded and uploaded recently. It's the story of how I went from a $12 an hour carpenter to a millionaire copywriter. And I really need to stress to you that like 99% of my videos follow this exact same retention path right here. The retention path literally tells you how many people are still watching and how many leave, okay? And as you can see, in this video, it's just one big story. And it has really, really good retention, especially at this spot. At this spot, I show a video, as you can see in this little uh, box here, a video of me when I was just starting out my copywriting journey and everything was going wrong, right? Everything was going wrong. And after I showed that video, people did not leave. Like this is extremely good retention. I had 40% of people watching at the 10 minute mark. What I tell you that never happens, like that never happens. People never stick around for a video to the end like that. But you know why it happened? Because how I painted up my story and how powerful I made it. 
This is how strong a story can be. People are so, so interested. They're so encapsulated by stories. It is just insane. So I really wanted to give you that one piece of proof of how powerful stories really are. So writing your first email step by step, how do you actually do it? And now again, I, want, I, need, I need to tell you guys and show you guys because I know there's going to be people out there going, yeah, but how? Yeah, but how? Yeah, but how? Yeah, but how? So I'm going to literally atomize it into the smallest molecule possible. So I really tell you everything about how. So part one, pick a product slash niche. Remember something that you're knowledgeable on will be best. You want to pick an actual product and niche. And you want to pull in inspiration from your swipe file. So take some of the most effective lines and tactfully put them in your own copy. Next, we need to fill in the blanks with the templates provided. Using this white file and also some of your own research, fill out the template that's provided inside the free copy starter kit, which is down below. And next is to refine your copy. Pass in your copy for review in a Discord, free Discord. Edit it the next day, okay? Because when you come back to it the next day, you're gonna come at it with a fresh mind and run it through ChatGPT, okay? Put it through ChatGPT, say make this email better or something. I'm gonna give you some prompts and things, of course, as we go on. And then after you've done all that, you will have a very, very good piece of copy. And if you're wondering, of course, well, how do I create a portfolio? How do I actually show my work to these clients? That's how you do it. That's literally how you do it. You put all those Google Docs into one little file or one little folder called my portfolio. And then boom, there's your portfolio. If a client ever asks to see your writing, you just send it to them. That's all they really want to know when they ask for your portfolio or they ask to see your writing. They just want to know how your copy is. You hand in some of the best, bro, you do this? Right here, these four steps, bro. And, and you take everything that I've told you in this copywriting, your copy will literally blow your clients away, okay? Blow your clients away. This is the visual representation. Pick a niche. You synthesize your copy. <laughs> you run it through AI with the googly eyes. And then, of course, you submit it for a review. And that's how you create a banger piece of copy. But how do you actually practice and get better? Like, okay, I did it first, but how do I get better? First of all, you need to write more emails. Get your reps in, dog. More emails, more emails, more and more and more and more and more and more, more. Like I said, volume, 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 action, 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 more and more and more. Then you need to submit your emails for review. Other and more experienced copywriters will be able to see your blind spots and give you pointers. You're going to have some pretty big mistakes in your first pieces of copy, but they're going to be able to re remedy them for you. Next is to re review your day old copy. When you leave uh, your copy alone for a day, you can review it with a more objective mind. This will allow you to easily catch mistakes that you didn't notice before. Okay, so if you have even like typos or grammar mistakes or flow mistakes, you can fix them easily. Next is consume copy intentionally. Watch every ad, analyze every product and recognize marketing strategies. Okay, pick out common things that you always see. Next is to review other, ones, other people's copy. This one is huge and a lot of people miss out on it and that's why they're not great copywriters. Review other people's copy. You don't understand a concept unless you're able to explain it to someone who doesn't know it. Reviewing other people's copy will allow you to solidify your knowledge. I don't care if you're on day one. I don't care if you're on day five. Go in there and review other people's copy because looking at their copy will also give you things to add to your swipe file. You need to live, breathe, crap, all of it. You, copy needs to be 90% of what you consume. Copy needs to be what you always focus on. Okay, because if you're always focusing on copy, you're going to become an incredible copywriter quickly. And sure, you don't need to give your life to this copy or anything. But if you want results like Zenos, if you want results like some of the other dudes from the Discord, if you want to win like that, you want to win like crazy, you're tired of whatever you have, you have to put up with in your life, then I'm telling you, this is what it takes. And you can speed run to getting paid within 30 days and speed run to 10K a month in 90 days. Just like other students have done. This is what they've done. Okay, I'm literally painting it out for you step by step. So to solidify our knowledge a little bit, let us go through and break down some million dollar copywriting. Okay, so here I have some emails. This is example number one from my boy, Brandon Carter. How people make more money in hard times. What kind of structure is this? I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second. It is the challenge justify needs structure. Okay, you can tell just by the subject line. He's going against contrary to popular belief. He's going against popular belief. You can actually make more money in hard times, whereas the opposite is what most people would think would be true. He starts it off like this. I get it, Tyson. You're probably hurting from the effed up economy we're in right now. Rent is through the roof, inflation is insane, and jobs are paying less and less. So notice here, he starts it off with relating to a problem. Now look, I need to also put this as a disclaimer. So what he does here is he starts off with 
catching your attention with a challenge, right? A challenging belief. And then he goes into a problem. So he's kind of combining structures here, but that's okay. He's kind of combining structures. He's going into PAS in the actual email, but he catches your attention with the challenging belief. But crying and complaining about it ain't going to do a damn thing. Okay, now here, understand, Brand Voice, who are we talking from? Brandon Carter. You know who Brandon Carter is? It might make, make a little bit less sense, but he's kind of like a Andrew Tate, Wes Watson, tell it how it is type of guy. Now, this type of language, I need to also stress this, only works on young males aged 18 to 24. If you are speaking, please take this into account, man, because I've seen this happen before and it's, it's so terrible. If you are speaking to females or men over the age of 24, this is the last thing that you want to do. You don't want to be like, look, it's your fault. You need to just pull up your socks and get to work. That's not the message that people that are not in this high testosterone stage of life need to hear. Okay, so keep things like this in mind. Not to be pessimistic, but neither is protesting or advocating for change. None of this thing is going to do a damn thing. Trust me, this is going to stay the same and only the strong will survive. But you can either lay down and give up or say, forget it. I'm going to adapt and beat the odds. Because having a job these days is not gonna cut it. Having three jobs won't either. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about that, bro. Even if you do make enough money, you're probably wasting all of your time working. That's why you need to figure out how out what the top 2% is doing to not just survive in this environment, but thrive in it. How are companies and rich entrepreneurs actually making more profits during the worst times ever? How are people making more money from home and people driving to work every than people driving to work every day? Maybe it's drop shipping or YouTube monetization or online freelance work, like copywriting, or starting an e-commerce brand. Sure, those all make money, but they require a lot of time, something working people don't have. That's why day trading is probably the easiest and most feasible way to survive right now, arguably. Hey, you, bro, you, you literally need tens of thousands of day to start day trading, bro. Stop playing with me. Anyways, <laughs> I could argue with my boy right here, but I'm not going to. You can make an extra $100 to $500 a day just using some simple strategies. So instead of complaining, do something about it by joining my free masterclass on making consistent profits from day trading, even when the market is down. Or look into something like drop shipping or other lucrative side hustles if you want. Either way, you got to do something, Tyson. You know, breaking that down, what do we see here? Okay, so he paints the picture out. He paints out your problem. And then he agitates it by saying, uh, trust me, stuff's going to stay the same and only the strong will survive. He's basically saying, look, if you're having a hard time right now, you're not going to be able to make it within the next few months or the next few years. You need to do something now or else your life is going to go to hell in a hand, handbasket. But then he offers you a solution. So it's not these other solutions that are right, but not as good as day trading. You can make an extra $100, $500 a day using simple strategies with day trading. So here he manufactures your desires and then he gives you that desire that he just manufactured in the free masterclass with the call to action. Right here, people join the free masterclass, they get pitched something, and homeboy here is making, bro, this email. This email, I'm telling you guys, this email made thousands of dollars. I don't even have to guess, I don't have to ask homeboy, I know this email made thousands of dollars. Because something else that I know is that Brandon Carter has a huge email list, because he's a huge influencer. Example number two, the introvert's guide to going viral. So what is that? That's kind of like relatable, big promise. Okay, that's how he catches your attention. I have a confession. I'm actually a big time introvert. Yes, I don't expect you to believe it since you see me traveling all the time, but it's true. Looking at the lead here, you can see it's very, very short, punchy sentences. I have a confession. I'm an introvert. Yes. So we need to talk about consumability. Consumability, you, you don't want to have one big nasty looking paragraph at the beginning. Why? Because sometimes people look at something and they're like, oh, hell no. I ain't reading all that. Oh, hell no. That's how I felt about the Harry Potter books. Well, I saw the Harry Potter book and I was like, hell to the no. Now I opened it up. I saw the text was like literally that small. I was like, bro, you got me messed up. You think I'm ever reading this in my life. <laughs> and that's how most people feel, bro. We live in a time where you know people are scrolling through TikTok and they have literally the attention span of a goldfish. So you need to keep that in mind when you're writing stuff like this. People are literally only like 
one click scroll and tap away from you know watch looking at sexy supermodels or TikTok models or whatever weird stuff that just releases so much dopamine into their brain funny cat videos or whatever so you need to have that in mind you need to make it very very easy understandable and concise so he doesn't have much of a benefit in the lead here but he puts the benefit in the subject line of course so that's the what's in it for me i like to have the what's in it for me subject line in the actual copywriting itself but again you don't have to August was one of my best months this year because I had two weeks of straight hustling in our home in Australia. Wake up, work, eat, gym, work, sleep. On the weekends, I'd go see relatives, but after an hour, the introvert in me would start screaming, so I'd just leave. But Max, you post content nonstop. How the F are you an introvert? Well, here's the hack. I had two of my videographers stay with me for four days. We shot something like 70 videos so I won't have to get on camera for a while. Also, if you've been seeing my reels, I know I go crazy in some. You don't have to. I'm this way just for a dramatic effect and because I find it funny. So record yourself normally. You have my permission to be introverted, to be your introverted calm self. If you're starting out, just pick one day a month to create all of your content so the rest of the month you can focus on the right things and actually increase your income. Tomorrow, I'll share more tips about this approach, including the smart drug behind my insane productivity when I go on these content creation rampages. In the meantime, if you'd like me to personally show you how to do this, hold you by hand, and every step of the way as you grow your online freedom business, you know what to do. Let's make six figures while traveling, uh, six figures while making you go viral. Max, what exactly does he do here? So, essentially, he gives you an HSO, a hook story offer. I'm actually a big time introvert, yet I make all this content. Here's how. Then he takes you through his story, but his story is actually giving you value because it's giving you a learning lesson. Then he manufactures desire. Well, I do this by just doing 70 videos and then I don't have to get on camera for a long time. He also gives you some inspirational pep talk by, being, by saying, you have my permission to be your introverted calm self. Okay, he's inspiring you by saying, you don't have to be on here, be this influencer, scream at people, or say a bunch of controversial stuff. You can be your normal, calm self and still make a lot of money online. Manufacturing desire by saying, I'll show you how. And of course, I don't know what the CTA is. It doesn't say what it's going to give you, but I'm guessing it's going to be some sort of free value call that's going to turn into a sales call. That's my best guess. But who knows? Who knows? It could be anything. Next, the last email that we're going to take a quick look at. The Truth About Procrastination, Momentum, Monday Momentum by Dean Graziosi. Happy Monday, Tyson. I've got a powerful message from the heart. For you today. Boom. Benefit was in for me right there. And if you think you know where I'm going with this, I'll bet you'll be surprised. Intrigued. We've all had the negative thought that tell us you should be doing more or you should be more accomplished by now or why haven't you done that yet? Relatable problem. I know what it feels like to have that voice inside your head make you think you're not where you want to be because you're lazy or you keep procrastinating. But a closer look at our lives usually proves that's not the case. Okay, so here's the relatable issue and he's getting into a lesson. If you're a parent or a partner or a member of a team, you can easily look back and see a long list of proof that shows you're not lazy. Why? Because the truth is, there's plenty of amazing things and hard work you had to do to get to where you are right now. Then, what really leads us to procrastinate and how do we overcome it? Here's the truth most people never learn. Okay, so here's his learning lesson that's giving you value, kind of like the listicle email template that I showed you guys earlier. Procrastination or laziness is usually caused by fear. It's perfectly natural that you try something new or different, you'll feel uncertain. When it's your first time doing things like stepping into a new career, taking that first step into doing your own thing and starting a new habit or success in your life, it's inevitable that fear will creep in. Sure, sometimes it's scary to just try new things and fear happens when our mind kicks into survival mode and tries to stop us from doing anything scary. But here's what we all must ask ourselves. Isn't it more scary to stay where we are right now? Truth is, Tyson, it's always going to be scary to challenge yourself to change. But that's a dragon that's always worth slaying because it's the only way to become the better version of yourself in life, work, and relationships. So here's what we can do today to slay procrastination dragon for good. This is the listicle email template that we guys, sorry, that we checked out in the beginning. Get clear on what we're afraid of. Get clear on what we're afraid of avoiding. Um, look at your goals every single day and challenge yourself to do whatever you'd do if you weren't scared. 
Write these three things down and revisit them throughout the week. Plus, here's a few things to help. And then he gives you his Instagram posts and his podcast. So all this is doing is giving the reader free value to build that relationship. Sometimes emails are not about selling, not about making money at all, but they're for building the relationship so that you can make more money down the line. Boom, that's how, that's how it works. Now, everybody, I would like to give you a basic intro into email sequences, email marketing, and how it all works because understanding this is going to give you a broader understanding of the whole copywriting thing altogether. This is going to make it tangible for you. This is going to make it feel real, okay? So look, intro to email sequences and email marketing. Here's what a basic email sequence might look like. So we start off, boom, eight email welcome sequence. Don't worry, you're going to learn every single one of these sequences in this video. I'm going to show you exactly how they work and why they work, of course. Then you get the eight email product aware sequence, a four email deadline sequence, and then a four email retargeting sequence. So what is an email sequence? What are you talking about, Tyson? An email sequence is a collection of emails that work together to complete a specific goal, okay? They are sent in order to each other. These sequences can be set up to send to leads automatically when they submit their email to a list. This essentially produces passive income for businesses, okay? So let's say some, somebody buys a $17 product. Now, boom, you have their email, okay? Because they have to submit their email to get the product. So now, on day one, they get the first email. Maybe on day three or day two, they get the second email. On day five, they get a different email, and then on day whatever. On like three weeks later, they could be getting maybe a four email deadline sequence and you're going to be making revenue off of those emails that you got. And you didn't actually have to go and manually send the emails. They just send automatically in something called an email service provider. It is a software. We'll talk about it more later, but we need to talk about what a welcome sequence is. So the goal of a welcome sequence is to give value in order to build trust and a relationship between the business and the reader. A welcome sequence may consist of emails that do the following. So number one, they address the problem that the reader has signed up to the list for. For example, the millionaire's anti-focus method. Okay, so let's say they signed up to a list where they bought some productivity kit or hack or something. Now they get a bunch of emails about productivity and focus and work output and this type of thing, right? Top, top five best tools for better productivity. Some examples. And in these emails is basically all value, okay? You're not asking for anything. And we'll go on and talk about why that works at the end of this little section here. And you give the reader insight into how to fix the problem while setting them up for the product placement, okay? So let's say, for example, your product is a, uh, let's say it's a mentorship. I'm gonna come in and teach you and coach you on how to become more productive. Well, in one of the welcome emails, you might say, hey, here's how having somebody else to keep you accountable and make sure that you're productive is so amazing to earn you money or something like that. It's so, so great and how it's going to revolutionize your life. But you don't end it with a call to action. Now they have that information and it's sitting in their head and they hold it as true. Okay, wow. If I really had, I wish I had somebody to actually look over my schedule and help me with this type of stuff. Three emails later, you're like, oh yeah, by the way, I do run a mentorship program. Boom, they're smashing the buy button, bro. They're smashing it. The, they're like, take my credit card, bro. Take my credit card. That's how you do it. Next up, giving the reader free video content to watch so that they can further build the relationship. This is really important. If your client or whatever has some sort of YouTube channel or videos or long form videos or even Instagram videos or Instagram live videos that people can watch. Very, very, very important. Okay. Because when people watch something, they're, they're much more locked into it than if they were to read something long. Okay. So that's going to also very much help. So that's essentially what a welcome sequence might look like, right? What it consists of. Next up is a product aware sequence. The goal of a product aware sequence is to start out by subtly revealing the product, but still give value so that the reader becomes aware of the product, but still opens emails because they get so much value from each email. A product aware sequence will usually consist of things like soft CTA. Okay. So there's hard CTAs and soft CTAs, just like soft selling and hard selling. If it's a hard sell, you're like, Hey, get over here, buy my product. Give me your money. If it's a soft sell, then you're like, you know, having a conversation and you're like, by the way, you know, just not a big deal, but I own this business. You can get a product if you want. If not, that's cool too. That's like a soft sell. It's like a soft CTA. A soft CTA in an email looks like this. P.S. If you wanted a full, the full focus fortress intensive, click below to enter deep work flow state at will. That might be what your CTA looks like. So it's a whole regular, regular value email. And then by the way, if you want to get the program or get the uh, mentorship or whatever, then that's where you click. Next up is the objection handles. Okay. So 
what is an objection? An objection is, some, is a reason, most of the time an excuse, as to why people don't want to buy or aren't interested. So for example, oh, well, it's not the right time right now, or I don't know if this is for me, I don't know if it'll work for me, th these sorts of things. So objection handlers are something like this. Most people think, I don't need help with my productivity, I'll watch some YouTube videos and figure it out myself. But in reality, having a second set of eyes to judge from the outside makes all the difference, and then you would give justifications and reasons as to why your claims are true. You might also give direct CTAs. That's why I came up with a full focus fortress intensive. It works by, and then you actually tell them more about your product. Usually you don't sell too much in emails, but if you've given a bunch of value and you're at your end of your product aware sequence, you can do a little bit more hard selling. Next, you might give testimonial and story emails, okay? So who are the people who have used your product and it has worked for? So how I made an extra 10K a month in my business when I got a focus coach. You want to, if you want me to be your focus coach, then you know what to do. That's how that email might look. Next up, we got our deadline sequence. This one, this one's fire. This is where the money be made over here. The purpose of a deadline sequence is to give people a strong reason as to buy right now. We do this by adding a hard deadline to induce urgency and scarcity. A deadline sequence will usually consist of things like bullet point emails, short punched emails that let the reader know that what the product is, how they will benefit from it, and how much time they have until they miss out on this. Next up, you might get some 24 hours left emails. Okay, this is an email where it's like, warning, you only have 24 hours left if you wanna get in here. An email that is short, maybe even just a line or two, okay? These can be very, very short, punchy reminder emails people what they're about to miss out on and next up is some value emails to go along with the deadline sequence and maybe ha even have a deadline ps soft sell okay it's important to not stop giving a value actionable value while you promote in order to keep a good relationship and next up is the abandoned cart sequence again a very very easy one that you can add in that will always add you more revenue to the bottom line the goal of an abandoned cart sequence is to simply give people a quick reminder about what they were about to purchase but didn't follow through on so when people abandon the cart it basically means like you know you, you know how you're on amazon you click on something you press add to cart and like you're about to buy it but then you don't check out and you're like oh well i don't know something else just happened and you get distracted well, this is simply just sending them an email an hour or maybe even a couple hours or even a day afterwards being like, hey, by the way, you didn't check out. Sequence may look something like this. Quick reminder email, okay? Oftentimes people get distracted or they figure they'll get around to it later. By giving them a quick reminder, you'll instantly capitalize and close more sales and like a closing your cart email. So if you tell people, hey, your progress in your cart, we're gonna take it away or whatever, then, then this will give people um, a better reason to buy because you know it gives them convenience if they do it now and inconvenience if they do it later. So telling people that you're about to close their cart and they'll lose their progress will give them a reason to carry out their purchases right now, boom. And then we also might have something like a retargeting sequence. The goal of a retargeting sequence is to give people personalized emails that are based on their actions. For example, in these email service providers, which we've talked about before very briefly, but we will talk about more as we go on. If somebody clicks on an email, they click the link and they go to your website page, you can see that and you can also send them an email based on their actions. So you can be like, hey, I saw that you clicked on that email and you saw the sales page and you were checking it out. I wanted to know, you know, will I see you getting the product or what? Uh, this will make them feel more spoken to directly and encourage them to purchase. An, e an email retargeting sequence may look like this. An email sent when clicked but not purchased. Let people know that you saw that they clicked on the link to your product and simply ask why they didn't purchase. This is a good place to handle objections. So people might be like, oh, well, you know, I wanted to take your focus mentorship, but um, I don't have much money right now. And, like, and then you can be like, well, you don't even know the price. Would you like to talk about it? And they'd be like, yeah, okay. And then, you know, you talk about the price and maybe you get them in. Boom, right? You handle their objections. So why are these sequences so effective? Well, the concept of giving value over and over and over again, and then only then finally making an ask much farther into the relationship has been proven effective many times, right? This is Gary Vaynerchuk's book on it. It's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. This is essentially give value, give value, give value, and then ask. How to sell your story in a noisy social world. Emo sequences are a great way to achieve this effect with little effort to ensure you keep a strong relationship with your leads while still being able to profit. Everybody hates the people online that are like, yo, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy, them, buy my thing. That's the easiest way to get people to ignore you and never wanna to speak to you again. So what you do is you're like, yo, here's some value, here's some value, here's some value. By the way, I have a thing. That's basically how these email sequences work and why they're so effective. Because 
I've seen it many, many times before where people, where people have a bad email list, right? And what that means is they've already tried to sell to their email list over and over and over and over again without giving any value. And now their open rate is really, really low. Nobody opens their emails or interacts with them or clicks on them because they just feel like, you know, these emails are just trying to sell me something. So I ain't going to even check them out. But email service providers and how they work. So here's, how, here's the software behind it. Email service providers are the softwares that are created to build Build your automations on and send to your whole list. They offer a wide variety of features that we won't go into here, but they are revenue generating machines. Depending on what your personal agreement is with your clients, you may or may not be tasked with using these email service providers. So sometimes you could just write the copy in a Google Doc and send it to them and then get paid. Sometimes you can go in there and do the whole email service provider, set up the automations and things as an upsell. If you'd like to a more in-depth training on this whole email service provider and email marketing thing, there is one available on my channel that you can watch after this masterclass. Okay, so this is a whole one hour masterclass where I go deep, 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 deep on email automations and email marketing. That is mad deep, but that's how deep I go. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Professor 4D. I am back, I am black, and I am ready to attack on a new day, same course, up the free super god. Okay, so look, sales page anatomy. Unlike email copy, sales page copy is specifically designed with selling in mind. Here is what the basic structure may look like for a sales page, all right? So understand that in emails, a lot of the times emails don't sell, but they do make money. That makes sense. With sales pages, they're to make money. They're there to sell, okay? So here's what it usually looks like, a headline, okay? The headline is constructed like the ones that we've already previously seen. Of course, we will go over some more as we go on. Then a video sales letter and then a get access button. This is what 90% of your sales pages are gonna look like. These are basically just blocks. So essentially, you'll just have sections of your sales page page and they're gonna look like that like this what's inside how exactly it works some testimonials some guarantees if any are applicable and then at the bottom sometimes you have like a frequently asked questions slide for people who just scroll all the way down to the bottom the most viewed sections of your sales page are going to be the top so it's important that you have the headline pristine and of course the vsl pristine because most of the people are going to watch the video a lot of people are not going to want to read through the the rest it's good to have it there in case some people do but you know the biggest thing is going to be your headline and the second biggest thing actually won't be any of this stuff in the middle but you know what's first read is the headline and then a lot of the times people just scroll down to the bottom that's why frequently asked questions is so important because the people who just scroll past everything and go to the bottom are the ones who just want the answers they want to know what's the price they want to know what's it, what it is and all that type of stuff so you might have a frequently asked questions where it's like what is this then you click on it and it's like this is what it is and then some other questions people might have like how is this product different from your other product why is this product better than the other products out on the market things like that so that's usually how a sales page is designed and of course we're going to take a look at some and we've already taken a look at some so you kind of already see this and have recognized this before so examples so this is a sales page of a software company all right and it's important to understand the software companies are a little bit different okay software companies don't follow this rule all the time especially with the video sales letter because it's like you know if you're going to download discord or something you don't usually need a video to tell you what it is or how it works a lot of the times it's just a little bit of copy and then free trial 90 percent of the time but the copy on the sales page is quite interesting okay because it's usually with these software companies it's like short lines it's very nice and punchy so for example right here there are now 13 months in a year this is for the app motion right not notion but motion it's like a productivity app so that headline is interesting because now you're thinking wow what would i do with an extra month in the year motion increases productivity by 137 percent with automation and AI that intelligently plan your day, schedule meetings, and build the perfect to-do list. So boom, that tells you exactly what it is. And notice how I said again, software is very, very short and very, very punchy. That's why it's really cool to look through it, right? And you can add something like this to your swipe file. And then here are some templates. So this, right, the old way compared to the new way. For example, the old way was endless to-do lists, manual prioritization, and constant replanning. But now we got complete everything. Stop prioritizing and no replanning. Here's a different example. This is an example that follows, closely follows what we just looked at. So see how we have headline, access my zero to 1.8 million dropshipping case study for just $1. That's the headline. And then here's the video sales letter. Get my full Shopify blueprint for less than a cup of coffee. And it's him and he's, he's saying how great his zero to $1.8 million case study is. And then you have the little button. This is like literally what it looks like. It's just a screenshot, but this is what it looks like. This is the next part. And then there's the button, just like I 
showed you guys. They all basically look the same when it comes to programs and courses and mentorships and usually just like online info products all look the same. You'll see everything. My exact. So this is where it's telling you what it is. Again, following the exact structure that I laid out for you guys. You'll see everything. My exact product, the store template, every single ad I created. And then here's like a screenshot of more stuff. So this is what you're going to come across most of the time. But this is also what things can look like if it's not like an info product and if it's a software. So now we got to go and take a look at utilizing AI, artificial intelligence like ChatGPT, to do your dirty work. AI won't replace you, but a copywriter using AI definitely will. Okay, AI is not like something that's nice to have, something that you can use sometimes. Like, no, it is. It's necessary. Okay, it is necessary. U plus AI equals dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. I literally made it an equation, but don't worry. I'll show you exactly how. What can AI do for you? Well, first of all, it can do a lot of good avatar research. So for example, tell me what it feels like for a young man to go to the gym, but not be able to gain any muscle. Describe what goes through his head in great detail. That's a prompt that you might use. And the answer to that prompt will, like I said, be greatly detailed. And then you can ask more questions to it. So let's say we use it and it spits something out. We can say, okay, great. And we can use that as inspiration. We don't have to copy and paste. ChatGPT is not just like, hey, write me an email for this company. And then it writes you an email, you copy and paste it and send it to them. That ain't never, that doesn't happen. And also you don't want to depend on AI too much. AI is a tool for you to use. It is not just, you know, going to do all the work, do everything for you. It's going to do the dirty work for you. It's going to do the heavy lifting, lifting for you. The reason as to why this is so important is because you'll learn as on your path as an entrepreneur that your two most important commodities are your time and your energy. Money is created with your time and energy. So by using AI, you're able to save your time, save your energy so you can make more money. Come on, man. Stop playing with me. General improvements. Literally, you can copy your email, paste it into ChatGPT and say, make this email better, longer, wittier, more persuasive. You could say, make it more anything. Any adjective you could come up with, just say that and it will improve your copy. Before you ever send your email out anywhere, even for review in the Discord, you need to put it through ChatGPT and just say, make this better and see what it does. Because I do it all the time and it doesn't always, you know, create my email in a great way, but it always inspires me where it's like, maybe if it's just one line, one paragraph, one, whatever, if it makes my piece of copy 10% better, it'll probably make me 10% more money. Which at the end of the day, I'll take it for just doing a couple of copy paste 10% better, bro. I'll take it. And most people, bro, if your copy is, is like a four out of 10, like it's really not very good. There's even grammatical errors and spelling errors and there's just flow errors, bro. Put that in chat GBT, tell it to make it better and chef's kiss, chef's kiss, my boy. It'll literally bring it from a four to a seven out of 10, 90% of the time. It's, it's dope. All you got to do is get rid of the weird robotic stuff that it does. Add some humanizing to it. That's what I'm talking about. AI is like an M16 and an M16 without a trained Marine to pull the trigger is useless. Just like a trained Marine without an M16 is just as useless. You guys together, that's what I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Also, you can use it for things like justifications. So for example, tell me why mindset is the biggest factor to being a successful day trader. And then it will come up with some good reasons. And then you can use those good reasons in your email. So if you're ever stuck, man, just use AI. Just use AI. Examples. Tell me why working a nine to five job will always keep you miserable. Tell me how building a business isn't only preferred, but crucial to your happiness. Make it personal. Add justifications and analogies and make it clever. It says the mirage of nine to five and the oasis of entrepreneurship. So here it comes up with some dope reasons. So I'm going to read a little bit. Imagine you're on a train. This isn't just any train. It's the nine to five express. Every day you board the train at the same time, sit in the same seat and view the same scenery passing by. There's comfort in the routine. Yes, but there's also a growing feeling of being confined, of seeing your world through a narrow window limited by the tracks you travel on. That's the nine to five grind. Why the nine to five keeps you unfulfilled? One, restricted go growth. Two, lack of control. Three, emotionally draining. Four, financial limitations. I mean, this is very like, you know, corporate, not very personal. But if I was writing an ad or an email about, hey, bro, you need to quicker nine to five as soon as possible, I might use some of these reasons. I may be like, look, you got very restricted growth. You're going to eventually hit a ceiling in your income. For example, when I was a carpenter, but the most I was able to make without being a foreman 
right? And the foremans have to go to college, which I didn't do. The most I could ever make was like at the most, 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 most was $30 an hour, which bro, when I was 18, $30 an hour sounded rich. That sounded so rich. Once I was making $26 an hour, I was like, hold up. I can't pay my bills up in this joint. It was crazy. Lack of control. Exactly. You, you're out here living for the weekend. It's because many feel they only truly live for those two days of freedom out of seven. See, that is the type of stuff that people will read and they're like, dang, man, I really do only live for the weekend. Like they haven't even thought of it themselves. Again, if you can describe a person's pain or feelings better than they can, they will naturally look for you for the solution. And that is exactly what we were looking at. You're often trading in those five days of personal time for two days, beholden to a boss or system that dictates when you can take a break, go on vacation, or even be sick. Bro, I would always get flack from my boss if I'm literally sick. I'll be sick to where I can barely get out of bed and he's like, look bro, I'm always sick. We're all always sick. You still come to work anyway. That is literally what they told me, bro. But that's the thing is that I wouldn't even think of that, right? Or it would take me mental energy and brain power to come up with these stories and come up with things. It's like, no, 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 no. With this, boom, inspiration just hit me just like that. It's, it's literally a cheat code. It's a cheat code. What AI can't do for you, it's very important to understand what AI can't do for you. Create emails that you can copy, paste, and send. You, do, you never want to do that because your email, bro, I can literally point out a chat GBT email from a mile away. 90% of people can now because it, it just, it uses a lot of the same terms and language and stuff. But again, with, with, as you, if you're just using it for inspiration and things like that, then there's no, you won't be able to tell, right? You can't tell any of my emails to have anything to do with AI. And if they did, everybody would be able to tell easily. If I just copy and pasted it, everybody would be able to tell. Also, another thing to note is that a lot of my copy is, is amazing. It's dope. I'm not just tooting my own horn. Like I have a whole team that helps me. I have AI. Like It's not just me because I'm like an AI wizard or copywriting wizard. It's because I use all of the tools I have to my advantage and I use them well. So whatever I post copy or a post on my YouTube a community post, right? That's where you can find a lot of my copywriting or out to my email list. For example, I got a lot of compliments on it. People are like, yo, this is awesome. There is no prompt in the world that you can send where you can get emails or copywriting. That's going to be the same quality as the stuff that I put out or a lot of these really good copywriters put out, right? It just doesn't exist. That's why you need to, you need to combine it. Like I said, it's like an M16. M16, you can't just take an M16 and put it out into war. You know, you need a trained Marine behind it. And it can't add a human touch to your emails and copy. And it can't consistently come up with good humor. A lot of times, humor is corny. Some of the times, humor is actually funny. I'm not even going to lie. Some of the times, humor hit. A lot of the times, humor don't hit. It's, it can't tell what's funny. It's a robot. Next, guys, I'm going to give you access to the 4D AI prompt pack in the copy starter kit. That's going to be for free down in the description is literally an AI prompt pack. You can get a bunch of AI prompts that you can literally copy paste into ChatGPT to, that you can use to make way better copywriting. Again, you're welcome. You guys are getting all the free tools and resources. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's literally like I'm Oprah out here. You get, a, you get an AI prompt pack. You get an AI prompt pack. You get an AI prompt pack. I'm really looking out for the boys out here. I'm, I've always been team copywriter. Everybody can win. And for an actual step-by-step -step walkthrough where I literally take some copy, put it through ChatGPT and do all that, I have a whole 23-minute free AI copywriting course for beginners where I go through step-by-step -step on my channel that you can watch, of course, after this one all right next i want to go through some more ai prompt examples so before okay i want to do a before prompt and an after walkthrough with you guys so before what would it look like subject line this is this is something that i actually got from the discord group all right i got it from the discord copywriting copy submissions tab and it's not that great because the dude's just a beginner that's cool so listen up oftentimes when people want to increase their vertical jump they feel like they need to train their legs until they achieve giant legs like Ronnie Coleman. So lesson number one. First of all, this is just way, way, way too long. Remember when I said copywriting is how you can transfer ideas to people in the smallest amount of words possible? This is like the most amount of words possible. So that's the first thing. I might rewrite it to where a lot of the times when people want to increase their vertical jump, they think they have to build their legs like Ronnie Coleman. That's it. Not they feel like they need to train their legs until they achieve giant legs like Ronnie Coleman. Like that's, that's long winded. Next of all, he says legs here twice in the same sentence. 
that sounds redundant. When people are speaking, they don't say the same word twice in a sentence or three times in a sentence. It makes it sound weird, right? Even when I read that out loud, it sounded weird. And that's another thing that you guys need to do. When you're writing your copy, when you're reviewing your copy, you need to read it out loud, man, because all the flow mistakes, all that stuff will come out when you read it out loud. I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's a little bit long, but like even in the first couple lines, even in the first, first like the very first line, there's, there's things that could be proved. But in reality, this is the biggest thing holding them back because bodybuilding focuses on muscle growth, not the explosive power needed for higher jumps. It may limit the range of motion, making it less effective for jump training. OK, and then over here, it's honestly just sounds like an encyclopedia. Like if I wanted to know this information, I would just Google it. G. It's just too like corporate, too plain. Right. I would add a little bit something to it. So I went down to chat GBT and I just said, oh, where's the prompt? I just said, make this better. Yeah, right here. I just said, make this email better. And then after we say that, it looks like this. Unlock your vertical jump potential with plyometric training. Subject line is not good. So like I said, ChatGPT don't just have all the answers because this subject line is way too long. Usually you want to check it, keep it to under 40 characters. Okay, so hey name, are you ready to take your vertical jump to new heights? If so, you're in the right place. Yeah, I mean, it's all right, but it sounds, this sounds very ChatGPT. So you wouldn't want to copy and paste this. Many people think that building massive leg muscles like Ronnie Corman is the key to soaring through the air with each jump. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, focusing solely on bodybuilding can hinder your jump performance. So already, it's a little bit better. Here's the deal. Bodybuilding primarily targets muscle growth, which may limit your range of motion to fail to develop the explosive power required for high flying jumps. Okay, cool. So the only way that the only reason this is a little bit better is because it's a little bit more dynamic writing, right? It's not just saying, oh, so you can jump higher. It's talking about, you know, soar through the air and high flying jumps. These are the types of words that we want to use to make our copywriting more engaging. So that's how that's what it does better there. But it's not perfect yet. So I have another prompt. Make this email funnier and add some clever analogies. OK, bro, if you're writing a whole piece of copy and there's nothing clever, there's no cool analogies like, of course, at first, you need to make it clear, as clear as possible. And this guy is a beginner, so I'm not going to really go that hard on him. But here, let's just take a look. Subject line, vertical jump cheat code, right? Even that's a pretty good subject line. You don't really need to add the rest, but leaving gravity in the dust. A little bit more interesting. Hey there, high flyer. Ever notice how some folks think that to increase their vertical jump, they need legs so massive they could double as tree trunks? It's like thinking you need a 20 pound sledgehammer to crack open a peanut. Who let chat GPT cook, bro? Who let chat GPT cook? It's like thinking you need a 20 pound sledgehammer to crack open a peanut. Bro, sometimes chat GPT hits like that. And that's the type of thing, bro, you add that in your copy and all of a sudden it is literally way better. Now it's actually entertaining to read. Now I want to read this. I'm like, okay, you got me. I mean, let me read a little more. But hold on to your hat because I'm about to spill the beans on the gravity defying cheat code they're missing out on. Bro, this is what I'm talking about. This, this is way better. This just took his copywriting from, I'm not going to lie, like a 3 out of 10, I'm not going to lie, to like a 7, 8 out of 10, at least the first line that we just wrote or just, just read. Well, I'm telling you, everybody needs to go through and do, do just a couple prompts. Like, bro, it will literally revolutionize your copy. There is way less of a skill gap than most people realize. And now because you watch this video, because I'm telling you, a lot of copywriters, they don't know this stuff. But now that you watch this video and you're continuing to watch it, bro, you're going to unlock all the cheat codes because I ain't even done yet. I haven't even gotten started, let alone done. So now that we went through some AI stuff, I want to take a look at some of your new templates that you have access to and show you exactly how they work. So here, my friends, is the PAS template, Problem Agitate Solution. So what are the ingredients? So with templates, we basically have a little bit of ingredients, so some things to fill out. Then we have the template, okay? What order do you want to add the things to fill out and goes, and what are some of the filler words? That's what the template is for. And then I have the whole example, right? I have an example of the template filled out. And then I have another example of the same type of email. It's the same problem agitate solution, but it's not from the actual template that I gave you. So what is this going to do? This is perfect for anybody who hasn't mastered copy yet. Even if you haven't written your first piece of copy, this is, the, this is the by far best way to start by far, because now you know exactly what to fill out. You know exactly what the thought process is behind each piece of copy. You get to write a whole piece of copy. You're going to go through and use AI, just like I just showed you how to do. But then when I show you the example that's not from the template, now I'll get the gears going. Now you'll start thinking, OK, now I can write my, write my own piece of copy that I have, have the first template 
Then I have the second example, and now I can make something a little bit different, okay? It's literally perfect. So, ingredients. What's the relatable problem that most people in your target audience faces? Okay, so for me, right, this example right here, have you ever had those trading weeks where you just couldn't seem to get it right? That's what, so it's like day trading. So then relate to that problem. What's the conversation going on in their head? Right? And th these are easy things you can go to AI for as well. No matter how perfect your setup was, right? Your setup referring to, you know, your trading setup, you have all these lines. No, I'm not a day trader, but I mean, I see other people do it. I know a little bit about what it's about. You know, they have these things called setups as, well, as far as I'm concerned. Or how in the zone you felt you were still closing red day after red day. Again, red day just means that you were not profitable. So like you lost money that day. And then what's the strong justification as to why everyone faces this problem, even if they don't know it? So a lot of the times, or at least some of the times, your problem might be very relatable. But a lot of the people in that target audience might not even know they have a problem. So how do we prove that everybody in this niche has this problem? Even Michael Jordan had a string of games where he played like a cross-eyed cheerleader, but he still went on to become the best to ever play. That's because he knew the comeback principle that I'm about to tell you. So what did I just do there? Again, borrowed authority. I also told people, look, it's not your fault that you feel like this. Everybody gets these red days. So now, this is another reason why it's important, okay? When you're pointing out problems to people or things that they don't like, you don't wanna be very heavy handed with it. For example, if someone's overweight, the worst way you can start an email is, hey, you're fat, you're overweight, and you need to lose weight because you're chubby as hell. That's gonna make people close the email right away because people don't like their pain points to be hit that abruptly and that hard. So by saying, look, hey man, everybody could lose a few pounds. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that extra spare tire you've been carrying around or that you may have been carrying around. That's the way where you can be like, ah, well, he's true. You know, everybody could lose a few pounds. I probably could. So let me read, let's, let me read on. That's usually how you wanna come about it. So the principle is essentially the, it's not your fault principle. And that's what I do here. You know, even Michael Jordan play, had games where he literally played like a cross-eyed cheerleader. Like he just couldn't make it right. But he still went on to become the best because he knew the comeback principle that I'm about to tell you. Okay, so then again, I'm adding entry by saying this is something that even somebody that you trust used before. Okay, boring authority. Next, the long-term terrible effects of what will take place if this problem goes on forever. So remember, we talked about fear state, right? The fear state is what happens if this goes on for long enough. If you stay in this slump for too long of red days, not only can you end up blowing up your account, but you'll never be able to get a green streak again. People are going to be like, damn, my whole trading career gone just because I couldn't get out of one slump. So what's the uncommon solution? To this problem is go deep on some mindset work because usually it's not the trading strategy a lot of times it's the inner game it's actually sticking to the trading strategy what good is a trading strategy if you can't stick to it if you're just panic selling or, or whatever so next is the objection handle okay so what is the objection that people would usually give people are going to think mindset work bro please Save me the mindset work and the woo woo stuff, bro. All I need is my trading plan. And that this is the objection handle. So handling the people's objection usually consists of agreeing with them at first. So if someone's like, oh, you know, this is just airy fairy woo woo stuff. You'd be like, yeah, no, I could definitely see how you think that. You know, in fact, I used to think that too until I actually tried it. And now they're like, hmm, interesting. What you don't want to do is vehemently disagree with their objection. So if, you, if someone says, you know, it sounds like some airy fairy woo woo stuff, you wouldn't want to be like, no, man, it's really not right. You're wrong for thinking that, if anything, that just causes friction because now you guys are butting heads. You're saying, yes, yes, it is. And they're saying, no, it's not. So instead, when they say, no, it's not, you're right. You know, I can see exactly why you would think, no, it's not. All the signs lead to no, it's not. So it's like, you are right. And then they're like, OK, thank you. And then you're like, but here's the other thing that you didn't know. So you basically agree, but you deflect. So, for example. I don't mean like you need to meditate like a monk or pray to the gods or anything weird like that. So now they're like, oh, OK, so it's, it's not anything, you know, crazy weird. You just have to find a way to build your confidence back up, you know, and then they're like, oh, OK, I can I can mess with that. I can mess with that. So then a strong justification as to why your uncommon solution is actually the way. That's what the greats like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant go out of their get out of the slumps and how you can get out of yours. Try justification. And what's your solution and how does it help? The Ultimate Trader's Mindset Methods, a step-by-step -step manual to mastering the inner game of trading, right? Maybe that's an ebook or something, let's say, a $7 ebook, for example. Okay, so what's the actual template? This is what the template looks like. All right, I'm not going to actually read it out because it, it's kind of just the uh, ingredients, but they're in order, and they also have some filler words. 
So what does a template look like filled out? So how to get out of a trading slump. So, hey, first name, have you ever had those trading weeks where you just couldn't seem to get it right? No matter how perfect your setup was or how in the zone you felt, you were still closing red day after red day. Well, in this email, I'm going to show you how to get out of a trading slump before it does permanent damage to your trading account. Because realistically, this is a problem that affects everyone, not just day traders. Even Michael Jordan had a string of games where he played like a cross-eyed cheerleader, but he still went on to become the best to ever play. That's because he knew the comeback principle I'm about to tell you. Because if you stay in a slump for too long, not only can you end up blowing up your account, but you'll never be able to get a green streak again. I know it feels like the market just has it out for you. All right. And now we're getting to the what it really feels like. But realistically, the problem is just in your head. When you start racking up L's, you'll tend to make the most basic mistakes. Panic selling, revenge trading and over trading. All right. These are things that trading people talk about. I'm pretty sure that these are pretty relatable. But again, <laughs> I don't really know that well. I'm not a day trader myself, but essentially. I'm going back into the relatable mistakes. So how do you overcome the trading slump? You do what the greats did. Go deep on some mind, mindset work. And I know it may sound dumb. Okay, so this is the objection handle. But I don't mean you need to meditate like a monk or pray to the gods. You just had to find a way to build your confidence back up. I know it's easier said than done. So this is where I manufacture desire. You have to find a way to build your confidence back up. And I know it's easier said than done. So this is where I'm transitioning to, I had a solution. But that's why I created the Ultimate Trader's Mindset Methods, a step-by-step -step manual to mastering the inner game of trading. Click here to get instant access. Your wallet will thank you later. That's all for now, Trading Tyson. Boom. So check me out. That is exactly what the template might look like if you filled it out. And now you can do the same thing for literally any niche. If you have, even if it's like personal training, even if it's a personal finance or investing, or info product or anything, right? Anything you could imagine, you could use this template for. So here's another example of one that doesn't actually follow the template that I just laid out. It says, big hustle, little growth, try this. Okay, so this subject line is essentially being like, uh, you know, is this the problem you have? Try this. Have you been consuming a lot of business content, but your business is not growing that much? Happens all the time. Whether it's from your favorite YouTuber or buying programs to grow your business, there is no shortage of advice when it comes to growing your business. Now, personal take, you know, business twice in the same sentence so it sounds a little bit redundant and repetitive, but I digress. And again, this is from a major copywriter, like a major business who even sells $3,000 copywriting courses. His name is Dan Locke. And even his copy, like, it ain't that great. You or me could easily come into his business and make the copy even better, make more sales. That's what I'm saying is that a lot of these big dudes make a lot of money regardless if their marketing is dookie. But if their marketing ain't dookie, imagine how much more money they can make. And we're the ones who undookie their marketing. It's just nuts. You hear it all the time. Promote on TikTok, hire influencers, run discount promotions, go all in and out on ads, avoid ads. AI will leave us without a job. So what is he doing here? He's being relatable. I mean, you hear all this business nonsense and blah, 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 and on and on and on. So what does it mean, Tyson? Are they all wrong? Are they all scammers? Are they all parroting out whatever they hear online? Well, not necessarily. Chances are there is some good advice flowing around, but sometimes, sometimes for free. See, getting access to the information is not a problem anymore. You would think getting the right information is the key to growth. It's not. After working with thousands of business owners, do you know what the absolute number one difference is between successful ones and the ones who fail? Execution. No amount of business advice in the world can beat good execution. Even somewhat crappy advice can be turned around with fast, good execution. He ain't wrong. <laughs> can you actually block out a couple of days to define and implement what will move the growth needle in the next 12 months? What about your team? Can they execute? That's the key, if you ask me. Grow smart, Dan Locke. P.S. If you want a little extra execution, well and fast, we, we have our next smart challenge happening soon. If you need to grow, you are invited to implement with me and make a real difference in your business in the next 12 months. So this is the call to action. This is called a soft CTA, right? A soft call to action where he's not like, you know, shoving it down your throat or telling you, you need to come here. You need to do this, blah, 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 blah. He's just adding it in the end where it's like, by the way, if you want to achieve this result, Check out the free course, dog, right? So you can do it that way as well. That was the PAS, but what about HSO, the good old hook story offer? Well, don't worry, because we got a template for that. You know what I'm saying? Hook story offer template. Ingredients. 
So what's the most interesting part of the story? That's what you want to start with, at least in your, in your subject line, in this example. Now, it's really interesting. If you watch any horror movie or usually any TV show or any movie at all, when you start, it usually starts at the moment of highest tension. It starts with like the dude's like in a police chase and he, he just runs over some, something crazy and he's going off and doing jumps and he's flipping his core 10 times and he gets out and he runs and he's in a shootout with the police. It's like the craziest thing ever happens in the very beginning to really hook your attention. Okay. And that's usually what we want to use in the subject line. So for example, how losing my life savings in crypto made me a millionaire. That kind of makes people go, wait, what? Makes them go do a double take. Like, hey, wait, how did that happen? Usually it's like a result. And then next, you usually start a story with the setting, time, and place. Example, it was 2021 and everyone was talking about crypto. So ne this isn't necessarily a place, but it's like a time and a setting. That's usually how you want to set a story. And then next, you go into the what's in for me. Now, this is kind of hard for people to do in a story email, but it's pretty necessary, okay? And I'll tell you when it is and when it's not. It's necessary when people don't know you very well. So if I'm sending out an email to my whole entire list, there's going to be a portion of that list that doesn't know me very well. So I'm going to add a strong lesson for me. Why am I telling you this story? Why is this story important? So for example, the lesson I'm about to share with you is going to let you make as much money as you want. And now you're like, okay, now I'll read. If you just start telling a story and I don't know you very well, I ain't listening. Most people ain't listening. You would want to tell a story, even if it's to the people that you do know, then you can go ahead and you don't have to add a very strong lesson for me. So if you're sending only an email to people who have bought from you before, then you don't really need a super strong lesson for me. Next, you want to begin your story. How did things feel and what were you hoping for? So I was working overtime to put in extra money into crypto so I could get rich, like how it seemed all the other kids on the Internet were. Then something big happened. Crypto crashed. and I lost all my savings. How did it make you feel? Use analogies and metaphors and make it dramatic. I was devastated. It was like someone took my heart out and put it into a meat grinder. All those weekends I could have spent with my family or friends, but instead they were all wasted and I could never get them back. What was the learning lesson? Never let outside factors, never depend on outside factors, only yourself. How can this learning lesson directly affect the reader slash target audience? This is why copywriting is great. You only depend on yourself. Right? And this is also a true story for me. It's interesting. People ask me, well, Tyson, does the story have to be true or where should I get this story? So a great way is you can get the story from your client or who you're working for. OK, even if your client or whatever doesn't have a great story, you can always tell somebody else's story. You always say, I knew this guy. His name was Jim. And then just go into the story. Does the story need to be real? I mean, it'd probably be better if it was. because you could add a little bit of realism to it. Next, you want to manufacture desire. Now that you know that lesson. Right. So if you want to make money online, copywriting is the way. And then treat the desire with a CTA. Click here to learn more about copywriting. It's kind of how you'd want to do it. Here's a template, boom, 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 with the filler words and the order and stuff. And here's my example. How losing my life savings made me rich. Hey, first name. Back in 2021, I was convinced that crypto was my golden ticket. I really was. It was all anyone was talking about. People were literally talking about crypto who didn't even know how to pronounce Ethereum. People were calling it Ethereum. I was like, bro, you don't even know how to damn it. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. And in this email, I want to show you how losing my life savings in crypto actually made me rich. I know it sounds crazy, but understand this lesson. And I can guarantee you, you'll make as much money as you could possibly want. Because at the time, crypto had already 10 x Dogecoin was making people rich. And even stocks like Tesla were going crazy. I knew I just had to jump on the bandwagon. This was my chance to finally create the wealth I knew I was destined for. So I worked every second of overtime that I possibly could. 10 hour shifts every weekend was a small price to pay for the fortune I was about to make. But then this happened. Picture of Bitcoin going down literally 75% within a year. In the span of a year, my life savings had been destroyed, leaving me with only 15% left. Imagine putting 10 grand into the into the stock market and it turning into 1.5 grand. Ah, my heart. It was supposed to turn into 100 grand and it turned into 1.5 grand. Oh my God. I was devastated. I was devastated. The, old, the one thing that was supposed to grant my freedom ended up snatching what little of it I had left. But looking back on it, the lessons I learned are what led to my success. In fact, I think if crypto didn't destroy my life savings, I might still be a brokey. Because yes, even though I technically worked all those extra hours for nothing, I learned that I never wanted to depend on luck to create wealth ever again. Instead, I'd rather take matters into my own hands. 
Forget betting on stocks or crypto. Forget trying to find a winning drop product to drop ship. And forget anything else that wasn't 100% dependent on you and your work ethic. That's what initially drew me to copywriting in the first place. It's all up to me. No outside, no outside factors at play. Like a game of chess. There is no chance. No teammates to win you, weigh you down. And nothing that's outside of your control. It's just you versus you. Never bet on outside factors. Always bet on yourself. Wherever you're going, I'll always do my best to help you get there. Click here to follow the newsletter and then link. Boom. That might be a community post. That might be a, a little email or whatever. And the CTA is just to my Instagram, my Instagram or something. But the CTA could be like, well, if you want to learn more about copywriting, then click here to get my free course or maybe click here to get my pay course. Or it could be not even about copywriting at all. Maybe it's about a social media marketing agency. Maybe it's like, well, I want you to start your own agency. Click here to learn how. There's so many different types of CTAs that you can have to it. There's so many ways you can mix and match whatever you want. Right. Again, this template works for anything. So let's go for another example. This subject line is called the event that humbled me. It's an email that I got. Can't remember who it was right now, but we'll see at the end. Tyson, I thought I was killing it. At the time, I had three profitable businesses and 300 units of real estate. I thought I had it made. I was wrong. When the 2008 economic crisis happened, I got hammered. My business got slaughtered. My real estate plummeted in value. Even the bank started calling my loans. Not because I had ever missed a payment. It was because they were the ones in financial trouble. It was a hellish and stressful time, and it took months of hard knocks learning. But I came out of it smarter, richer, and better prepared to survive and thrive. Today, I have multiple highly profitable businesses. My real estate empire is over $4 billion in size. So what did I do differently? <laughs> a lot. For starters, I didn't shrink my goals. I didn't start playing defense. The other things I did were mostly strategic. I learned how to make my business unbreakable so they could survive any outside forces. And once I did, it no longer mattered what the economy, the competition, or even the environment did. My business continued to build, scale, and run like clockwork. Look, I've spent over 40 years developing the plans that have helped me create multiple highly successful businesses. I've refined and distilled what I've learned down into five actionable frameworks. I use these frameworks to build and scale every business I've created. They work for any type of business. Up until now, I've never shared them with anyone else publicly, but that's about to change. Starting tomorrow, I'll be sharing my proven frameworks for the first time ever. It happens during the Unbreakable Challenge. The online five-day live event is happening from January 24th to 28th, and I'd love for you to be there. Here's the link to register. Remember, it's 100% free to attend. Look, building my own business is hard, but you don't have to come up with a plan on your own. You can use my proven frameworks instead. I'm willing to share it with you for free during the Unbreakable Challenge. Make a commitment to your life right now. Make a real plan to learn proven frameworks so you can put them into, your act, into action into your own business. Grab the seat. 10x every day. Grant Cardone. That's who it was. Grant Cardone. Boom. You can see here he does a little double CTA action, right? This is a good example because he does things a little bit different, a little bit more outside the box. And this dude literally spams emails every day. Not spams, spams, but he sends out emails to his list every single day. He has all these books, all these audio books. So understand he doesn't have a half, have to have a huge what's in it for me in the beginning, right? He just kind of went into the story. He does exactly what we talked about. The event that humbled me. Okay, interesting. I want to hear more. I thought I was killing it. And then something bad happened. I got hammered. My business was slaughtered. My real estate plummeted. Even the bank was calling my loans, not because I ever missed a payment. It was because they were the ones in financial trouble. It was hellish and stressful time. Boom. So he goes into exactly what I talked about. Understand that these are not, this is not a cherry picked email. All story emails and story, even reels that you see, like those are all basically copywriting. That's how you get people's attention with a story. Tell a story that people, that holds people's attention and intrigues them and also deflects their attention into something else. So here he talks about making your business unbreakable. He's manufacturing desire. And then what does he do? He treats the desire by saying, come to my unbreakable challenge. Clockwork. It's all the same stuff. Boom. Exactly what I'm talking about. It's almost like Grand Cardone. Watch this program that I'm showing you guys right now. And before we dive into how to get clients and make money ASAP, okay, with the actual client getting strategies, because you guys know copywriting now, let's go a little bit of recap and action steps. So in this section, here's what you learned. You learned what copywriting is and why it's so valuable. You learned how to write your very first piece of copy. We talked about email copywriting structures. We understood 
psychology principles that sell. And we know how to utilize AI and do the heavy lifting for you. So now, of course, people are always going to be asking, yeah, but how? Yeah, but how? Yeah, but how? Well, understand this. The immediate action steps right after you watch this full course is to download the templates I provided for you, fill them out and start writing your first piece of copy, just like I showed you, and follow the checklist provided previously. Okay, again, you're going to want to come back to certain parts of this video. There's going to be chapters at the bottom of it so you can just easily navigate. Now we find out how to get some damn clients and make this money, my boy. So now, everybody, welcome to the paid in 30 days, how to get copywriting clients. And yes, you are seeing a brand new slideshow because the program wouldn't let me add on to the last slideshow I had because there was too much value for the one slideshow. So we out here with slideshow number two in this piece. OK, in this class, I'll be handing you the complete action plan to getting paid as a copywriter in 30 days or less. You'll get the exact screenshots and scripts that I used and my students have used to get their paying clients. You'll walk away from this section knowing the prospecting secrets. OK, learn the best places to find clients and the exact criteria to use to figure out exactly who you should be outreaching to. And a lot of copywriters don't spend enough time on this. They're just outreaching to any Joe Schmo they can find wasting their time, but I'm gonna show you how to not do that and how to do it correctly. Next, the ultimate outreach method menu. A range of effective outreach methods that consists of the core four best strategies that are going to guarantee you book sales calls. Getting sales calls will not be an issue. Getting replies will not be an issue. Next, authority optimizer Instagram. Understand the way to turn your simple Instagram account into a client closing machine with just a few minutes of work a day. I'm not talking about being an Instagram influencer. I'm talking about making some money with Instagram because people come to Instagram. They're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This dude is about it. Hold up. That's what we want to make them feel. Next. Sales call super strategies. Steal my exact sales call strategies and scripts so that you can close any client you get on a call with. Next, the paid in 30 days roadmap. This week by week game plan so that you can know exactly what to do every step of your journey with copywriting. If you're starting today from zero, man, can I get a hallelujah? Next up, the 90 days to 10K a month blueprint. A complete guide on what to focus on every single week until you inevitably crack. The 10K a month mark. Disclaimer, if you watch this course all the way to the end, you will have a good chance of making that six figures as a freelance copywriter. But you need to take in everything. I know it's a long program, but it, like you, are, you already know, man, it's condensed. <laughs> you already know it's condensed and also it's energetic. It's not just boring. I'm not just, just talking about nothing here, putting you to sleep. No, 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 no. We electric up in this piece. But do these methods actually work? I'm going I'm to let you come to that conclusion yourself, okay? Over here, we got my boy Kevin Wagner, who is literally working with Ty Lopez. If you don't know who Ty Lopez is, you have been living under a rock, my boy, because this is the biggest entrepreneur influencer of, of our time. He's a dude who was talking about here in my garage back in like, what, 2009 or something? He was like the first guy to ever do it. Here you can see he says, I've been Ty Lopez's direct response copywriters working with him and his sales marketing team for three weeks now. I've made 2.2K from him so far. We'll be at 3.2K a month going forward. This brings me to a total earning of 5K plus with copywriting so far. Crazy to think. Anyways, you can read the rest if you want. And over here we have my boy Denny who got 2K a month for 12 months, a 12 month contract for two grand a month. And they sent him, look at this, a Mac Pro and some other stuff. A Mac Pro? Man, stop playing with this dude. That's a dream client right there, bro. Imagine, imagine your client literally just sends you a MacBook Pro in the mail. Bro, I wish. <laughs> I wish, dog. Over here, we have my boy Ayan, 4.3K for the month. And of course, he's showing off his goodies down here, screenshots, and got himself a Mac Air. And this looks like the iPhone 14. I could be uh, wrong. He ain't done winning though. He has more down here. He made around 6.3K. And then over here, my boy Frozen flexing on us with the yawning emojis, man, with the 2,000 euros. My boy Elaine, with, he just hopped off a $3,750 call. Love my boy Elaine, man. I work with him personally. Over here, we have my boy Bamberg, 2K. Over here, Benjamin, 3K. Ryan, 2K. Are you starting to get the picture? Are you starting to get the picture? And guess what, bro? You guys are going to be learning the exact same outreach strategies that my homeboys here have been learning. But what even is outreach? 
what is outreach? How do we get clients? What are we talking about here? Outreach is the best way to get clients as a freelancer. Avoid things like job boards and freelance websites, okay? These ways of trying to make money as a freelancer are useless for the most part. People are going to be like, oh, well, I got a baby cousin who's making $24,000 a month. Oh, yeah, I'm not talking about that. Okay, I'm talking about you. Your success is my responsibility. I'm trying to make you win out here. And I know for a fact that the best way to make you win is not to post a job board and just wait around. It ain't that, okay? Instead, you should outreach to businesses to get clients. With outreach, we find clients online and decide if they're worth outreaching to or not. This is known as prospecting. Next, the goal of outreach is to get on a sales call. The sales call is where you get clear on your goals and intentions and ultimately sell your copywriting services to them. Okay, now look. Some people out there are thinking to themselves right now. Oof, talk about, talk about a sales call. Sales? You mean I got to get on camera and, and sell my services and get on meetings and stuff with business owners? Hey, bro. I remember when I was first starting, this was the scariest part to me that I did not want to do. I did not want to do. I would literally get out of ordering pizza any chance that I could. Like I try to order it online or I would like go to my homeboy or I'd call up my homeboy and be like, hey bro, can you order this pizza for me? Cause I hated speaking on the phone. I hated all that. Okay. I'm like the biggest introvert you could imagine, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, bro, trust me, man, literally the best parts of your life, your true success is literally just on the other side of discomfort. You got to get uncomfortable for just a little bit. And it's only uncomfortable the first time. And then you become like a fish in water, man. Like like out here, trust me when I tell you I'm an introvert. I didn't want to get on camera. I didn't want to do any videos. I didn't want to get on any sales calls. Look at us now, bro. Look at us now, okay? And if I can do it, if all my students can do it, you can do it too, my man. But what does outreach really look like? What is a visual representation? Okay, well, let's ask, ask my boy Hormozy. So this is you, and this is basically the outreach strategies that I'm going to show you. Here's how many people will probably not even reply. Here's how many people will reply. Here's how many people will reply and like talk to you and say are they're interested. And here's the one to two percent that will buy. But here's the crazy part: you only need three to four clients ever to make money, to make like 10k a month. So don't think that you got to do this process forever. I literally only did this process for like nine months, and I never had to do it again. That's what most of these copywriters that you see winning up here, they don't really do outreach. They just do. They work for a couple clients, they get their clients, and then they just get clients from clients. Or they have clients that outreach to them because their Instagram is so so popping. I'll show you how to do that later, later too. But who are we going to outreach to? Mm, another question. Not nearly enough copywriters actually spend time prospecting properly and end up wasting time outreaching to the wrong people, like I've said before. Here's how you can avoid that. First of all, approved niches, okay? The approved niches that I'm about to give to you. You don't want to do no weird niches that just don't have any opportunity in it, okay? Because yes, every business needs copywriters, but the thing is that we are freelance copywriters, okay? So there are only certain niches that are really tend to work with a lot of freelancers. Next of all, the ones who have a product, okay? We want to go for the ones who have a product. Well, Tyson, don't all businesses have a product? Well, weirdly enough, no. Some people make a lot of money from just affiliates. So they don't have a product, but they're just like, oh, go over here, buy some Tiege Handley, and they'll get a little bit of kickback, and that's how they make a lot of money. Next of all, we want the ones who are desired size. So if you're trying to outreach to like McDonald's, a little bit too big, my boy. <laughs> okay, but if you're trying to outreach to like, I don't know, some random who has like 200 followers on Instagram, he probably ain't popping like that. He ain't got no money for you. Okay, so there's a happy medium that we're going to talk about as we go on. Some beginner outreach mistakes that you must avoid. Prospect size. Like I said, you want them to be the right size. Next, prospect product. And of course, prospect niche. Much like the things that we just spoke about. But you only want... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I kind of already explained this. Okay, The ones who have their own product and not the affiliates. And you want the ones from the approved niches. So this is the opposite of what you want to do. Now, again, guys, I'm not a hater. I like Andrew Tate. But the type of outreach that he teaches in his course is absolute booty cheeks. My boy over here did a video called I Tried Andrew Tate's Copywriting Course for 30 Days. And this is what he made. So I'm going to actually enlarge it right here so that everybody can see. So here's his outreach strategy. Here's the outreach that they teach you in uh, Hustlers University or the real world Andrew Tate's course. And here's why it's so terrible. Subject line, let's boost your sales with TikToks. Already, my boy, your email deleted. Your email going right into my trash can, my boy. And I'll tell you exactly why. I already know you're trying to sell me something. Subject line. So you might as well just put the subject line, hey, I want your money. What you want to do is come up with something sales neutral. Look like it's a friend to a friend. Because then the people will actually open it. I digress. Let's go through it. Hey, business name. I was recently browsing through business name and I was genuinely impressed by what you offered. Terrible compliment. You were impressed? What was impressive about it? 
Bro, it's cl- here's the other thing, right? Is that you want to make these business owners feel special, feel like you're just outreaching to them. This is a clear and easy template. What do you mean impressed by what I offer? You didn't even say what I offer. Why are you impressed by it? But we'll talk about that more later. It got me thinking about how TikTok with a massive user base could significantly amplify your reach. I specialize, okay, you're already talking about yourself. The second line and you're already talking about yourself. We talked about what's in it for me. You're in the, you're in the email talking about anyways, more about me. If I wanted to know about you, dog, I'd ask, okay? And it's not being rude. I know it sounds kind of like, you know, rude. But the thing is that people, everybody is self-interested, especially business owners. If you go up to a business owner trying to tell them about yourself, bro, they don't care. I specialize in running, managing TikTok ads, helping businesses like yours reach a broader audience, in turn, increasing sales. With the right strategy, I believe we could unveil a new layer of potential, a new layer of potential for business name. To make things straightforward, I'll manage and run your TikTok ads. Initially, my fee is $500 a month. Consider it a trial phase. Eh, wrong. Very, very wrong for obvious reasons. You don't tell them the price in the first email. You don't tell them the price at all. Because, bro, you're literally in the first email basically just saying, hey, give me 500 bucks. Give me 500 bucks. Give me 500 bucks. You're spamming out emails to, for people to give you 500 bucks. I guarantee you, you will literally be an 80-year-old man before you get a client with, with this. I promise you that. Once you start seeing the desired results, which I'm confident you will, whatever, my fee would be $1,000 a month, ensuring to get the most out of your investments. I understand that introducing a new marketing strategy can be interesting, so I'd love to chat more about how you can specifically benefit business name. Maybe a quick call next week. Thank you for your time. Also, pitching in the call in the first email, terrible, 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 terrible. Literally a negative five out of 10. If I were to make an email perfectly displaying everything of what not to do, this would be it. I'm not trying to put bro on blast, but like, I'm just being honest to you guys. I don't want you guys sending this, man. That's, that's, I don't want to waste your guys' time. So here's some outreach mistakes to never commit, okay? First of all, calling yourself a copywriter in the first message. Saying, hey, I'm a copywriter, you're literally just giving them objections. The reason why you're giving them objections is because they're going to be like, oh, I don't need a copywriter. So you, want, you don't want to call yourself a copywriter in the first message. Next of all, you don't ever want to reveal, reveal the price over text because again, you're giving them objections. They're like, oh, I don't want to spend 500 bucks though. And price should be open to interpretation. If they ever ask about, about price, you just say something like, uh, highly varies. We should get on a call so we could talk about some of the packages or what you would need. And then, and then it gives you an actual reason to get on a call rather than just saying, I would love to get on a call. First of all, asking for the call on the first message. No, no, heck no. Man, forget the time, okay? I already told you, you don't, you don't say the price. Literally, time is way more important than money when it comes to these business owners. So you're gonna ask them for their money and their time. You're gonna ask for money and time in the same email, in the first email before they even said hi to you? Hell no, hell no. Next, being overly critical and insulting in, to their marketing. So you know, if you ever come at them with like, hey, I thought of some things we can do better, you don't ever wanna come at it like, hey, I know why you're not getting any sales. Hey, your marketing sucks. Hey, your, your, your sales page is garbage. Let me fix it. Like that's overly critical and that's going to cause resistance. Next, being long-winded and being around, beating around the bush. Man, all this long-winded stuff about like, hey, I was looking through your thing and I got me thinking, hey, TikTok, blah, 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 blah bro. But don't nobody care. Next, saying I'd love to. I'd love to hop on a call with you. Yeah, duh. I know you'd want, I know you'd love to hop on a I ain't here for what you would love, my boy. Why would I love it? Don't ever say I'd love to hop on a call, blah, 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 blah. I don't care what you'd love. Again, business owners, self-interested. Tell me why I would want to. This is way too much about you, not enough about who you're reaching out to. Terrible in, in so many ways. So many ways. I'd love to. I know you'd love to hop on a sales call and try to sell me. I know you would love that. <laughs> Man, I'm going a little bit too hard. <laughs> How much outreach should we do a day? Another common question. Well, it has an uncommon answer, and I'll tell you why. There are many variables at play, okay, such as your outreach method that you're using, the time you have in a day, and your proficiency at that outreach. So how much outreach, some people are like, oh, we'll do 40 outreaches a day. Stupid. There's so many, out, there's so many variables, it doesn't really make any sense. So the answer mostly depends on how much time you have because most people have a maximum output of three to four hours of deep work a day. It's best to use a majority of that deep work for outreach. If you don't know what deep work is, you need to read the book Deep Work by Cal Newport or just understand the book. You can watch a quick 10 minute video about it on YouTube. But essentially, deep work is your ability to do really deep, focused work, no distractions. You ever notice how if you're ever cramming for a test or you've been working already for like 10 hours that your output actually 
like very quickly declines. So for example, if you're doing outreach for your first three hours of the day, you're nice and fresh, you might be able to do 20 outreaches for an hour. But as time goes on, you get more tired. Now you're only doing 10 outreaches for an hour, five outreaches for an hour, because you're getting all, you're getting distracted. Your mind is just getting foggy. You just can't do it at the same output you used to anymore. That's when you should stop doing your deep work and start doing some shallow work. What's shallow work? Well, shallow work is like, I don't know, replying to emails and doing some other stuff that you need to do, but it's you don't need to dedicate your deep work to it. I just gave you a million dollar lesson right there. <laughs> Prospecting methods. How do we actually find the clients? I'm going to show you the best way to find the best copywriting clients possible. First of all, Instagram ads. Scroll through Instagram. Take note of the prospects that you come across. These people are trying to grow their business and they have a marketing budget. Extreme important next instagram followers business owners usually follow other business owners mm, we got some 4d thinking up in here now if you find someone with around 100 followers a lot of those people are going to be related business people next up is youtube search most businesses have somewhat of a youtube presence because youtube has a such a strong seo search engine optimization youtube is the second largest search engine on the planet right behind google but they're kind of the same because youtube and google are linked google owns youtube it is easy to find good prospects and you can find their email right on the channel page <laughs> So what does Instagram ads look like? I was scrolling through Instagram. I found this ad for my boy, Joel Kaplan. He's a social media marketing agency guru. Next up, I just click on his profile. Easy. Next up, I just outreach to him with one of the messages or with one of the methods that we learned. This is not the method here, but again, very, very, very easy way to do it. Next up, Instagram followers. You turn one prospect into hundreds. So as you can see right there, he's only following like 600 people. And he's an agency owner, so presumably he follows other agency owners. Okay, okay, other juice is starting to flow. The gears are starting to turn. Okay, let's see. I click on the first profile there, and boom, agency guy, 20,000 followers. Perfect prospect to outreach to. I'm giving y'all gold right here. This is some liquid gold right now, my boys. Next, YouTube search. So search for something related in your niche. So right here, I'm going to zoom in. How to lower body fat. Okay, and I found this guy, and I was like, okay, cool. And next, you check to see if he has a product. And oh, look at that. Sculpt by science. That's a product. That's a product. We, we're heating up. Next, you go to their about page to get their email. All you need to do is go to the about section. And then right here, it says details for business inquiries. And then you can view their email address. And then you can email outreach to them if you want. Or again, he obviously has his Instagram also linked to his account. So you can Instagram outreach to him as well. Sorry, this stuff just excites me. So I apologize. <laughs> but now we need to understand niches. Niches, 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 niches. List of approved niches. First of all, fitness and health. This is overall one of the most lucrative niches online in general. With the most diverse sub-niches. So fitness is health and health is like a gigantic, enormous industry. Next up. High ticket mentorship and info products. Okay. These products have huge margins and business businesses in this niche are abundant and they make good profit. And they're also pretty likely to work with freelancers. The thing with businesses like this is that they're usually run by entrepreneurs, just a one business entrepreneur or business influencer type of guy. These dudes are really good. They're, they're really good for hiring freelancers. When you have a super corporate type of businesses, they don't like to hire freelancers. They like to hire people and they work in-house. Basically means they work on like a salary. It's you know, basically like a nine to five job. They only like to hire people for a nine to five type of position. Okay. But we don't do that. We do freelance work. So, you know, this is great. Next is real estate. Most, if not everybody, who deals in real estate has substantial income and cash on hand. Translation, they got that moolah, baby, and all we need is a piece of it. Next up, the six fundamental principles of outreach that you cannot forget. Man, first and foremost, do not ever be needy, okay? Acting desperate or needy is going to make you come off as low value and not worth the client's time. All right, I don't think I need to elaborate on that because what's understood don't got to be explained. Next of all, you want to justify any claims, just like with your copywriting, how you adding all these cool justifications, you using social proof, you borrowing authority. You want to do the same thing in your outreach when you're talking to clients. Nobody wants to trust your word, especially because they don't know you. Justify all of your claims with proof. Next of all, you want to be personal. Don't try to act super corporate. You'll sound like a bot or just a weirdo. Okay, next of all, do not waste their time. Okay, like I said, do not waste their time. Business owners value time more than money. Keep it snappy, simple, and clear. If they want details, 
they'll ask for them. Next is to give value. Give them a value. Don't try to take a value from them. Come to them with some sort of value to prove that, they, that you aren't just a value vampire. This is the best way to make a good impression. Next of all, do not be pushy. Being pushy will always cause resistance and make the other person think that you are desperate. So I want to talk about some ways that you can actually give value. Okay, because I didn't really speak about that too, too much. So you can give them some samples of your work. You can make them, you can make them emails and be like, hey, here are some emails. Feel free to send those out to your list, for example. Next, you can send them a quick video. We'll, we'll go through like Loom videos and video intro DMs as we go down. But there's so many different types of value that you can give them. Next up, you can give them like sort of like ideas. So like, hey, I went through and did like an audit of your sales page or audit of your emails or your funnel. And I came up with some ideas. Can I tell you about them? That is a much better call to action than Hey, let's hop on a call so you can talk about hiring me for 500 bucks and then after that, hire me for 1000 bucks. The core four outreach methods is what we're going to be talking about next. First of all, cold outreach. Boom. Oh, yeah, I guess you should read these. <laughs> so first of all, bait and riz. Next of all, cold email. Next of all, video intro DM. Next of all, loom video. Guys, for, for God's sakes, please. Look, I love you guys. Can you understand that? I know you guys are beginners, but please don't ask me which one is best. I'm giving you four of them so that you can try all four and pick which one is best for you. They all work very, very well. Keep that in mind. The cold email outreach. First of all, attain the prospect's email, just like I showed you, pretty, pretty easy. Okay. And if you don't know how to do, if you're, if you're looking for the email and they don't have a YouTube, you can also use things like Apollo.io, where all you need to do is find their LinkedIn and you can get their email from that. Next of all, you send them a cold email using the fundamental building blocks of an effective email script, which of course I'll go through with you guys and also have some really good email scripts in the Ultimate Outreach Playbook, which is inside of the Copy Starter Kit, which is inside of the description, which is free, okay? <laughs> follow up from different angles with a value. You know, after you outreach, you wanna do follow up, the money is on the follow up. Email outreach, what does it look like? Email opener, okay? So your opener should be something very, very easy. So something like, Hey, just, just reply back with the word sure and I'll send over a quick video or I'll send over my, my value. And you offer and give them value. That's what this represents. I know this is a beautiful picture. And then you pitch them the call. Once they're like, you know what? That value was pretty dope. And you're like, okay, cool. Let's hop on a call. They schedule a call. Now, if you're doing a call, you can either schedule it with Calendly, right? What Calendly is, is basically a call scheduler, right? So it shows you what hours you're available, what hours you're not available, and it lets people book calls. I highly recommend Calendly. It is also free. Calendly is what it's, is what it's called. So building your cold email. Let's talk about it. We want to have a personalized subject line that sounds like it's from a friend. So for example, quick question, first name. Quick question, first name. Very, very, very easy. It's not going to be like, hey, copywriting for first name. It wouldn't be anything like that. That's stupid. Because we don't want to talk about, we're not trying to sound salesy, okay? The subject line is not trying to sound like we're about to sell them something. Next, highly personalized first line. So what, if you're going to send a compliment, do, send a compliment right. Don't say, hey, I really liked your offer. Dog water. Your video from going to 30% to 5% body fat is literally blowing up and taking over the YouTube search engine. I figure that you must be getting loads of leads for Shred Zone or whatever the product was. See how personalized that is? And how, and I'm actually like speaking like I'm an actual marketer. Like I know what I'm talking about and not just some dude saying, Hey bro, I like your offer. Dookie balls. Give a personalized reason as to how you can add value. For example, since you're gathering tons of emails from your application funnel, I was curious as to how your email marketing is going. And next you want to give a low commitment CTA. I'm only asking this because I came up with some ways you could tweak your funnel and make some improvements. Would you be opening to open to hearing them? Now, all they need to do is say, sure. They don't need to have schedule some call with you that they don't even know, like, boom, okay? And now you're offering them value. It's amazing. It's so much better than the cold email we just listened to. So some value, again, some value you can offer in your cold email. Ideas and audits, personalized email copy, like a sample, and a Loom video. But next, we need to talk about bait and riz, okay? This is through Instagram DM. So first of all, we want to give them an opener that will make them bound to respond. This is important because on Instagram, as soon as you message somebody, you go into the requests tab, okay? It's very important that you go from the requests tab to their primary tab because then when you message them on Instagram, they get notified and it's very, very important. You don't want to be sending them email or outreaches and it just goes into the request tab and they don't know what it is. So what, and once you have, once you're in a conversation with them, it's much, much better. A lot of people think an outreach is like you send them an outreach 
And then they book a call and then whatever, you hop in a sales call. It pretty much never works like that. It's usually a lot more conversational. Okay, you ask them questions, they answer and ask you questions, you answer, ask them questions. And then once you're having an actual conversation, now it's much harder for them to ghost you. Next up, you want to offer them value. Of course. And then after you offer them that, offer them value, you get on the call. DM openers that you can steal to get from the request tab over into the primary tab. God damn, this is gold. Lord, the, the value is just, oh my goodness. So personalized compliment. Hey, first name. Just wanted to show my appreciation for the recent live you did, like live on Instagram. Yeah, the things about wholesaling were so valuable. And then a pro tip, let these marinate. So let's say I give somebody an awesome compliment on Instagram and they're like, hey, thanks, bro. And then I'm like, by the way, <clears throat> I am a copywriter and I came up with some ways we could increase your business and blah, 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 blah. They're going to be like, ew, because he just sent me a compliment just to flatter me, just so that he could pitch to me. And objectively, it is pretty disgusting. It's literally like somebody walking up to you on the street being like, bro, them Jordans are are nuts. Those are clean, my boy. And then you're like, oh, thanks, man. You know, I actually got them over at Foot Locker and blah, blah, blah. Actually, wait, 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 wait. By the way, would you like to buy one of my cell phone plans? Now you're like, oh, man, this dude done had me all like excited. I was ready to show him my J's and stuff. And uh, you look, you, you feel like an idiot and you're, you're kind of mad because you're like, you know what? This dude just came up to compliment me just so he could sell me something. It ain't a cool feeling. So we don't want to do that. We want to let, let them marinate. What that means is compliment them. They say thanks or, or something. You leave it alone for two or three days. You leave it alone. Trust me, guys. I've, I've, I've done this. I've done this. All my people have done this for a long time. This works. And then you want to ask a question about their product. Okay, that's a different one that you can use. The reason why is because who usually asks you questions about your product? People who are looking to buy, but not always. So they'll mistakenly consider you as somebody who's ready to buy. So of course they're going to answer you. They think you're about to you're about to be asking about their product. So hey, first name, I saw that you have a mentorship program, and I was curious if your courses were included in it as well. So then they can answer. You guys can have a conversation. Once they're in the conversation, you know now they're looking at your stories and then you're not going to go ignored. And next thing you can do is just casually reply to their story. Damn, that high rise you have makes me want to move to Chicago so bad. Boom. Bit like that. Examples? I got them. And guys, here are some actual examples of me closing clients with the very methods that I'm teaching you and showing you. So I just said, hey, first name, I just wanted to reach out to show my appreciation for the content. A lot of real estate and wealth gems. Keep up the good work. All I said. And then what did he say next? Thanks, man. How much do you charge to make some email copy sequences? Now, this, I'm not going to lie, this is unusual. This doesn't happen most of the time, but it does happen sometimes, especially when you have your Instagram account set up, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. How to set up your Instagram account so that businesses actually come to you. But that's not what we're talking about right now, okay? So here's the thing, right? He asked how much you charge. Like I said, you never reveal how much you charge through text, right? It gives them a perfect objection to just not want to talk to you anymore. So here's, here's how you handle that, obviously. Highly dependent on the project, really. Is email marketing something you're looking to outsource right now? Question mark. He says, yeah, I have a couple events coming and a course I'm going to put together. A couple other things I need it for also. I said, okay, if you're open to it, let's schedule a quick chat and we can go over some things. And then I sent him my Calendly link, right? I sent him my schedule. He booked a call. We got on the call. I sold him some emails. Easiest client I might have ever got. I literally just sent him a compliment and he did the rest of the work. I mean, I'm not trying to blow smoke up anybody's arse here and just tell them, oh, it's super duper easy. You know, this will happen every time. No, this doesn't happen every single time. But guys, like it doesn't have to be rocket science out here to actually get clients. It really doesn't. And then I replied to somebody's story where I said, damn, bro, look at you go. I'm dropping value bombs, too. You're the goat. He said, thanks, my man. Much appreciated. And I left it for like eight days. Right. And then I sent him a video intro DM. So as you can see, I kind of use a little bit of bait and switch and a little bit of the video intro DM method. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. The video intro DM and what the exact script was. But essentially, it's just a video of me and I'm saying, hey, what's up? That's it. Just a video where I'm saying, hey, what's up? Uh, essentially, it's not that's not the actual script. Right. But um, just a video of me quick, 30 to 60 seconds telling him who I am, what I do, introducing myself. He says, what's up, brother? I appreciate you reaching out. Yes, the video definitely stands out. I have someone on my team here at HQ that takes care of that for me. But if that were to ever change, I will post the opportunity on my story. So while this was not a complete, you know, yes, right now, the thing is, if I keep following up with this guy, I keep wearing him down. Eventually, he's going to have me working on there. He says he already has somebody on his team working, working for that. Boom. That's already a close client right there because that person on his team will not be there forever. OK, and he won't even have to post the opportunity on a story. You want to know why? Because I'm always be there following up with him every week or two for the end of time. 
So who is he going to want to work with? A random person that came and replied to his story when he said he was looking for people or the dude who's been hitting him up nonstop in his DMs with value, sending him videos, sending him work, sending him case studies, sending him everything, right? Following up with him with the exact follow-up scripts that, of course, I'm going to share with you in this video. It's just too much value. It's just too much value. It should be illegal. Bait and riz. That's exactly what it looks like. You ask them a question, give them a compliment, something, do a little opener. You riz them up. Essentially, you just speak to them. You speak to them. You have a little conversation. Are you doing any email marketing right now? Are you looking to email, outsource that email marketing? Or, or maybe you ask them a question and then you say something like, hey, I signed up to your email list, but I didn't get any emails. Or yeah, I got, I got your free thing or I gave you my email, but I didn't get any emails or I only got like three emails. Are you, have, are you doing anything with email marketing right now? Is email sequences something you're looking to implement into your business to get some passive income? Then they're going to be like, well, maybe, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to do this whole email marketing thing, but I'm not really sure how. Then you'd be like, oh, well, perfect. You know, I'm an email marketing expert. I've worked with such and such. I've made him this much money. Why don't we hop on a call sometime and figure out if it would be right for you? <laughs> Boom. Call, money, done. You're paid. You're officially a freelance copywriter. It's, it's really, it really do be like that sometimes. Video intro DM. What does it look like? Get them to reply with an opener, of course. Next, send them a short personalized video introducing yourself and telling them a little bit more about what you do. And then you close the call, right? Ask them if you want to hop on a call. And the scripts and, and examples are available in the link in the description, okay? So in the copy starter kit, I actually show you these videos right here because, you know, I want to go fast, 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 and hard. I'm not going to put the video up on the screen right now. So if you want to watch this exact video that got me clients, that keeps getting me clients, and got me clients over and over and over and over and over again and gets my students a whole bunch of clients a whole whack of clients then you can go down in the description and download it and see for yourself but stuff works i just showed you how it works the video intro what does it look like you compliment them you wait you let it marinate just like i told you guys then you send them a video intro that's you inside the video you say hey and then you give them the script and you tell them and then you eventually just ask them hey maybe you'd want to hop on a call sometime to see if this would be right for you bam you get on a call boom but how do you actually close people on a call don't worry we're going to be talking about that too Next, I need to tell you about tell you guys about the Loom video outreach. Okay, so step number one, opener. We all know how to do that, right? Opener, get them to reply. Boom, 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 done. Next, you want to tell them that you came up with a couple ways that you can improve their funnel and make them more money. So you basically offer them the Loom video. Hey, I recorded a quick video about how I could make you more money with such and such, but with your funnel, with your emails, with your this, that, or the other thing, with your webinar, or whatever. Can I send it over to you? Create them a short, personalized. Loom video on how you could provide them with more value. So you could be like, okay, so look, I'm looking at your funnel right here and you're missing out on this, this, and this. And if you know you were to implement these, I've seen it in other times make people a lot of money. Like use the justifications, of course, that I kind of showed you guys in the copywriting section, okay? Because when you become a great copywriter, you'll also become great at outreach. So for example, if someone's a fitness person, you could be like, hey man, I wanted to talk to you about what you could do to improve your funnel here. Now, if you look at over this guy, like Brandon Carter, you see he, he's making millions and millions of dollars with his funnel and he does this. So if you were to plug that into your business, there's a high chance that it could definitely make you a lot more money. This actually isn't that difficult, but you know, if you don't have the time for it, or you don't want to mess around with all the technical stuff, no worries. I could actually implement this into your business if you'd like. I've done it before a couple of times. It would help, me, help people make this, this much money. If that's something you wanted to look into, let's talk about it more in the DMs. All right, bye. Boom. Very quick, very simple, very easy. Shouldn't be any longer than like five minutes max. Five minutes is even pretty long, right? You want it to be like two, three minutes, boom, done. You also want to make sure in your outreach that you tell them, hey, I want to send you a quick three minute, four minute video. Why? Because they obviously are not, are not trying to sit there and watch your goddamn 30 minute YouTube video or whatever about your audit on their channel. They're not, they're not interested in that. They just want a quick whatever. They click, they click on it, they look, they watch, they see. That's it. Boom. Again, examples in the description, literal examples. I'm not going to play them here because that would not make any sense. Okay. So the actual examples that you can go see, the ones that I've closed clients with is in the copy starter kit. Again, free in the uh, description. The loom outreach looks like this opener. Boom. You offer them a loom. Hey, bro, you want this loom? And then in the loom, you say, let's chat about it more in the DMs. They say, oh yeah, I never thought about that. Or I've been thinking about that, but I never got around to implementing it. Would you be able to implement this in my business? And then you could say, sure, let's hop on a call real quick so that we can talk about it. Boom, 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 boom,
you are, you're good, you're, you're, you're dandy. Now we need to talk about the great multipliers, building leverage. What is leverage, okay? Well, Alex Ramosi has a great demonstration here. The difference between what you put in and what you get out. So let's say you're working eight hours a day and you get 10 calls, just examples. Eight hours a day and 10 calls. Well, when you build leverage, now you have 4x leverage. So you do the same eight hours, but instead of 10 calls, you get 40 calls. That's, that's what leverage is, essentially. And here's how we build it. This, my top student, Zenos, this was all the way back in when? January 5th of 2023, literally nine months ago. He said, he, he DM'd me, right? This is from Discord. He said, dude, this is strange. I'm getting actual clients reaching out to me when it's usually the other way around. I've gotten like six inquiries to yesterday and today. Why? Because he's built his, he built his Instagram like I'm about to show you right here in this very video. And again, if you guys wanted to go look at what some Instagram content looks like or how I structured my Instagram a little bit, you can go follow my Instagram at Tyson.Scales on Instagram. Link in the description, of course. So here are some multiplied leverage Instagram tricks, tips, hacks. Greatly increase your chances at landing clients just by investing less than 20 minutes a day into your Instagram, okay? You do not have to come, become some sort of influencer, but doing the whole Instagram thing and having a personalized brand and profile is going to go a long, 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 long way into getting people to trust you, okay? Because if you're just a blank account or you're just an email address, people don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. And I also don't want to go to your website. Why don't I want to go to your website? You think I'm clicking random links out here? No, I click, I click a random link. All of a sudden, somebody literally has my identity, okay? I don't know how, how this works, but I'm not taking the chance. And neither will your clients, okay? These are high value people out here. They might check out your Instagram because it's on Instagram. It's easy to go to. If you outreach to them on Instagram, you don't even have to ask them to check out your channel. Naturally, they will check out your Instagram profile already. <sighs> Brain hack, okay? This is literally 4,000 IQ over here. Post you doing high value activities, number one. So look, we live in a, in a world in a society where people judge books by its covers. People say you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. There's a reason why people say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover because people already do that. And if we lived in a per perfect world, maybe people wouldn't do that, but people don't do that, okay? So as soon as people go to your profile, the first things that they're gonna see, they're gonna make judgments on you, okay? So what do they not wanna see? They don't wanna see you picture in your basement that the lighting is dark, right? You have Cheeto, Cheeto crumbs all over your beard or all over your chin, and you literally just look like a, da a goddamn mess, okay? Nobody wants to do business with that dude let's be honest okay and it doesn't even matter how old are you how old you are if you dress to impress even if, if you're if you're for example sitting in a penthouse it doesn't have to be your penthouse you don't have to flex like it is your penthouse in the caption you can even say this ain't my penthouse it doesn't matter if it's yours it's like they see it and it's like okay this dude's out here doing high value activities he doesn't look like he's super desperate it's nice it's cool it's dope maybe so so look maybe you're at the beach maybe you're traveling maybe you're with other high value people naturally raises your social proof and credibility, right? And I get it. I ain't out here being a model, either traveling the world, going to Dubai, having pictures right next to the Burj Khalifa, okay? That ain't me either. But you probably already have a, a picture or two. And hey, maybe you decide to go to the beach one day. Maybe you just even decide to drive your car one day and you have a picture of you in your car. You, it doesn't have to be a Mercedes Benz, okay? Literally just some just regular pictures of you. The reason as to why you want regular pictures sprinkled throughout it's because you don't want them to all be promotion pictures or promotion videos or whatever because then it just that starts to look like you're desperate or you're just trying to get clients or whatever it should look like your personal slash business account okay this is how you get the highest results next you want carousel copywriting slash business posts okay these are basically those pictures where you swipe and you see the next picture and then you swipe and you see the next picture show what you know improve your marketing knowledge okay so for example you can say Here's how, like I keep using a Brandon Carter example, that's because it's so easy and to, to understand, right? Here's how Brandon Carter made a million dollars with his funnel. First of all, he added a lot of value and he did this, that, or the other thing, right? Now people are like, okay, well, he's talking about businesses, he's talking about marketing, he's talking about funnels, maybe he knows a thing or two. When you at least just have a little bit of that on your profile, people know that, you know, you're not just whatever, you're not just Joe Schmo. Next, you want to have some quick reels of you showing your face be an actual person, okay? Show up speaking on camera to exponentially build trust with your potential prospects, okay? If I see your face, I see you're out here talking, and I see that you're not also a weird mumbling dude who's like, hey guys, so um, blah, 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 blah. And I went on this email the other day and I was making it and I was making this email 
And then I was like, you know what? I actually want to make a cheese sandwich. It's like, bro, you got to come out here with a little bit of charisma, okay? Come out here with a little bit of charisma, right? And I'm not talking about you need to make all these reels, two, three reels. That might be all you need. All you really need, nine to 12 posts, plenty. A hundred followers, plenty. You don't have to go over, above, and beyond, but trust me when I tell you, it does this. You see this picture? It does this. Next, you want to do testimonials and results, okay? You can add these to your stories or your highlights, and you can also make them into reels. Testimonials from clients, results you've gotten in the past, and even posts and reels of how you got the result, results. So for example, how I added an extra $5,600 a month in revenue to someone's email list passively. You could say, okay, this is the exact email sequence I made. Here's me being inside of the email service provider showing you exactly the emails that I made, blah, 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 just like that. You don't have to have a call to action like, hey, if you want this in your business, you don't have to do that. But if people see that you have, okay, go to somebody's profile. They have nine posts. What are you going to check first? Okay, well, probably you're going to check their story. Check their story. What does it say? It's a reel about how you added an extra $7,000 to somebody's monthly revenue with the emails. Like, oh, okay, interesting. This dude's really out here. This dude's really doing it. He's legit. Essentially, all you're trying to do is prove that you're not just a bot and add a little bit of social proof. That's it. That's all you really need. Very, very quick. Very, very easy. It's really not difficult. So boom, you are going to get calls. It's not a question of if, it's not a question of whatever. It's just a question of when. You are going to book calls. If you get really good at this, you can book multiple calls a day. It's happened. I've done it. it happens. Boom. Also, if you want more examples of like bait and riz and this, this sort of thing, again, copy starter kit. It's all within the copy starter kit. More examples just like this, more bait and riz if you want to, you know, really hone in your skills. And you will close sales calls. It's not, it's not even a question. You will. But here are the main principles. Once you've gotten on this sales call, you are literally in the touchdown zone. You are the only person who can mess this up. People get on a sales call so that you can sell them because they want to be sold. They don't get on a sales call when they don't want to be sold by you. If for whatever reason goes wrong, it's all you, bro. But what I'm about to show you here, if you if you do everything that I'm about to say, okay, and I get it, what I'm about to say might be harder, easier said than done, but if you actually do it, if you actually implement it, you won't miss out on any sales calls. Like all of them will be closed. You'll be collecting money right after the sales call every time. Here's how. Number one, please don't rely on a sales script. Any business person worth their salt will smell it a mile away and be turned right off. So look, any business owner knows that if you're hopping on a sales call, you're going to go deep into their pain points, deep into their dream state. You're going to paint them a picture about what it would look like and do all this other stuff. It's really cringe to them. They're like, oh my God, this is really annoying, blah, 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 blah. You don't want to go into it with a really hard sales script because a lot of the times as well as with the sales script is they won't say what you want them to say. You're going to be sitting there all nervous looking at this sales script and trying to memorize it and it just adds way too much stress. There's zero reason as to why you'd want to have or incorporate a sales script. What you want to incorporate is a sales, is sales principles. Okay, sales principles. Again, approach everything from the standpoint of curiosity, okay? When people say something, right, they say, oh, well, I've tried these dudes before with email marketing and they didn't work out. You're like, huh, so why didn't it work out? Like, what were you hoping to get out of that, right? You're, you're genuinely curious. And they're like, oh, well, I was hoping to get out of this and out of this. And you'd be like, huh, okay, interesting. And what would you say they failed on? Like, were they just lazy or did they just not know what they were doing, right? You, you just keep prying, keep asking, and keep getting curious. Next of all, guys, shut up. Shut up. Ugh, this is not supposed to be a presentation for crying out loud. It is not supposed to be a presentation. The reason I'm saying it like this is because I'm literally talking to my former self. Because my first sales call was a, not joking, PowerPoint presentation. And it was terrible. It was really terrible. Uh, picture it like this. The reason why you don't want to don't do a presentation is because there's no back and forth. So imagine you go into a mechanic. All you need is a tire change. But you go in and they're like, hey, how you, how you doing? And you're like, hey, um, I was looking to get something for my car right quick. And they're like, okay, I got you. Sit down right there. I'm going to give you my 30 minute presentation. And you're like, oh, but I just want, hey, but, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up. 30 minute presentation. And you're like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'll humor you. You get on the presentation and he's telling you all this stuff about oil changes. He's like, oh, here's the difference between synthetic oil. And then over here you have what is it, organic oil or whatever. You have these different types of oils, and you're like, look, bro, I just wanted to get my tires changed. And you're like, oh, but, 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 wait, 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 hold on. Relax, relax, relax. I j I'm just getting started. Now I need to talk to you about oil filters. He's talking to you about oil filters, and you're like, you know what? Forget this, bro. I'm gonna just take my business somewhere else. Because you're not listening to me. You're not listening to what I need. You're not listening to what I actually want, or what I came on this call for. So you need to shut up, 
ask questions, okay? Here's what it really looks like. You, you show up, you ask questions, you get a very, very deep understanding, and your only goal on the call is to help them figure out if your services are what they need. Genuinely, that's it. That is your goal. Your goal is not to sell them. And when you make these small shifts as well, all the nerves and all the being nervous and all that stuff goes away, okay? Because when you get on a sales call, you're gonna be mad nervous. The reason why you're so nervous and why you suck on sales calls is so you, because you're so focused on yourself rather than the other person. You're focused on, oh, I need this money. I need to close the sales call. I wanna get a client already. All terrible, terrible, terrible things to think about. I promise you, if a client gets on literally with their wallet in hand and like ready to pay you and you start coming with that type of energy, they'll be gone. They will be gone. You'll lose every single one. I've had weeks where I've gotten on three sales calls in a week and not close any of them because I came at it at like this. Next, you want to save up the price until the end. You can always deflect price by saying like, okay, well, how much would this cost me? You'd be like, well, there are a few packages and a few different things that I can do. But first I wanted to talk about, you know, what exactly you might need. And they'll be like, okay, well, that makes sense. But the thing is, if they get around on the call and they're like, okay, so how much? And you're like, well, like three, three grand, then they're going to be like, well, you know, what do I get for that three grand? And then you're going to be talking about it. You don't want to reveal the price first because it's just going to bring up objections. When you reveal the price first, you're coming to people with what they're going to lose first instead of giving them what they're going to get first and then them committing to being like, okay, I want to do this. You know, no matter what the price, I want to do this. So people aren't going to go into it with an open mind if you tell them the price first. They're just not. Next, you want to offer them what they need instead of what you're good at. Okay, so you might be really good at these emails and blah, 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 blah. But if that's genuinely not what they need, don't offer them that. If they need somebody to create the content for them or write some YouTube videos or write some reels or do something like that, then if you don't have any clients right now, your, your first priority should be getting a client and doing work for somebody. So because that will, again, build your leverage. So fine, yeah, sure, I'll write some reels for you. I'll write some emails for you. I'll write some YouTube videos for you. I'll write a sales page for you. Even if that's not what I came on this call wanting to do, hey bro, work is work. That's what you need to do. When you just first start out, you aren't necessarily a copywriter, you're a problem solver, okay? So you just get in there, solve some problems, and then now you have actual copywriter clout. You got on there, you're like, hey, I've worked with these people before, I've had actual clients before. Because nobody wants to get on there and have them be your first client. That doesn't feel good to them. That's just like, imagine going to the doctor and having heart surgery and your, your surgeon is like, hey man, this is my first time, so we're gonna see what it's like. You're gonna be like, hell nah. Even if he was like, yeah, so you know, I've done some heart surgeries, I've looked over a bunch of heart surgeries before, I've shadowed a bunch of people, I've done this, that, and the other thing, I have a bunch of experience on this. That puts you far more at ease. Even if they haven't been doing it for 20 years and they're not one of the best doctors in the world, hearing that they have some sort of experience is so much better than hearing they have no experience. And this is the effect that we wanna have with you. The goal of the call is not to sell them, but understand their situation in order to see if your service will be right for them, that's it. Sometimes my service ain't right for them. So there's been times where I'm like, all right, well, it doesn't really look like you need a copywriter right now. So cut ties and go on. This is what it is. And this is part of the mindset that you have to come in here with. You have to come into client getting with an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset. You don't need to be like, oh, well, I need to close this client. If I don't close this client, I might never get one or whatever. Man, there are dozens of clients out there ready to pay you, ready to pay you right now, today. You just have to find them abundance mindset. If one of them doesn't work out, do not dwell on it. For God's sake, don't dwell on it. You're literally that dude who gets his heart broken by all the first time. And then it's the end of the world for him. And you're depressed for six months. And it's like, you know, had a bunch of girlfriends or you're, you're a little bit more seasoned, right? You're not like a teenager anymore. You're like, you, you really do know there are plenty of fish in the sea. Like, yeah, it'll probably suck for a little bit, but bro, just get over it. There, there's somebody else out there waiting for you. There's somebody better out there waiting for you. So if you've gone through a breakup recently or you're looking for a client, that's the advice that will help you, my man. <laughs> Either way, objection handling 101, agree and diffuse. So a lot of times when people try to handle objections, remember objections, reasons or excuses as to why people don't want to get don't want to buy right now or don't want to get into it people oftentimes they just add friction they add tension right if someone's like oh well i don't know if i want to buy right now maybe i should think about it and you say no you shouldn't think about it you should buy right now all of a sudden alarm bells are going to be going off in their head and they're going to be like this person is crazy they're trying to push their course on me they're trying to push their program on me they're trying to push their copywriting services on me like that's not what people want okay so what you want to do instead is be like, okay, look, you say you want to think about it. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, you don't really want to just go ahead and buy a whole bunch of stuff because you've probably made wrong hires before in the past and regretted it. Am I right? You can be like, yeah, you're right about that. Like, okay, no problem. That makes a lot of sense. But before I let you go, I just wanted to dig a little deeper as to why you didn't want to get started today, if that's cool with you. And they say, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Genius level sales tactics right there. And I'll tell you why. Because now 
If you do this, you're still, you're not ending the conversation just yet, all right? You're agreeing with them. So you're not adding any tension, okay? You're agreeing with them. You're saying exactly, you know how they feel. So you're, you're understanding them. And then when you say, I'd just like to notice a little bit, ask a little bit more about why, maybe then you get to what their real objection is. Be like, okay, well, is it a question of, you know, you think it's too costly for you? Or is it that you don't have the funds set aside? Or just that you do have the funds set aside, but you don't really feel as though this is optimal at this point? Or is it because you feel like maybe a different time to get started would be better? Or maybe you don't trust me? Hey, man, if you don't trust me, that's definitely cool. You've only known me for the last 30 minutes. I wouldn't trust me either. So I'm just trying to figure out what exactly it is. And now, once they say, oh, well, yeah, man, I'm not going to lie. Like, like, you know, I, I have tr trouble trusting people because things that have happened before. You'd be like, oh, well, no worries, man. Um, that makes perfect sense. If you want, maybe I can send you a couple case studies. You can watch the case studies, look over them, and then get back to me later. Now you've diffused the situation. They're much more at ease. You guys have chuckled about it. It's cool. They've let their sales guard down. They're going to check out a couple of your case studies and see if what you have would really be right for them. Boom. Okay. This is how you handle objections. Next, we want to talk about setting better expectations. Under-promising and over-delivering is better than over-promising and under-delivering. You have some people out here like Grand Cardone who are like, oh, well, you should over-promise and over-deliver. You know, I mean, that's not always possible in some circumstances. There are actual limiting factors to what people can do sometimes. But understand that under-promising and over-delivering is always better than over-promising and under-delivering. Here's where it comes to copywriting. A lot of the times people promise, oh yeah, I can add you an extra 10K a month to your email list, easy. Not how you wanna go about it, because now you are literally giving them objections. You're like, okay, well, have you done this before? No. How do you know that you can do this? Oh, well, I don't really, it's just a guess. You wanna go into it like this. Okay, well, I wanna see if I can add some more revenue to your bottom line. I've done it before, other people have done it too. So I wanna implement this, see if it adds you more revenue. If it does, we can work together. If it doesn't, we don't have to. Fair enough. I mean, that's, that's way more fair. There's no objections to that. He's like, okay, well, he's gonna come in and see what he can do. If he can do something great, if he can't, fine. That's, that's literally all you need to change your life. That's the only offer that you need to change your life. Follow-up lessons. Guys, the money is in the follow-up. Rarely, rarely, rarely are you gonna just message a business owner and first contact, you're gonna close them. It's gonna be like a good deal. The money is in the follow-up. 90% of the time to close dream clients, like the ones that we spoke about earlier, it will take consistent follow-up in business. Following up is crucial to getting clients, right? In any realm of business, not just with freelancing, not just with copywriting. Follow-up is crucial. So how do you wanna follow up? We wanna space our follow-ups out. Don't follow up with them every day day or every hour that's annoying. Don't be annoying and spam follow-ups every day. Space your follow-ups up at least a few days apart, okay? You wanna give people room, space to breathe. You don't wanna be like that crazy girlfriend who's literally like messaging them every five minutes, that's strange. Next, you wanna come from a different angle with every single time with your follow-up. Saying something like, hey, did you see my last message? It's highly annoying. Or just repeating your message over and over and over again or sending them a question mark is just like, ugh, that's just so annoying. If you tried one of the outreach methods, mentioned previously, you could just follow up with another one next time. Again, I have videos on this and there's lots of content on this in the free copy starter kit. This is what outreach will look like, okay? What do I do once I've reached out to everyone? You start back at the top. People ask me this all the time. Tyson, I've ran out of prospects. I've ran out of whatever. Well, then you just go back to the top. So, and then you also go at it from the omni-channel approach. What this means is if you've already sent them an email, you can go ahead and send them a direct message on Instagram or, or maybe even Facebook or maybe even LinkedIn or whatever, right? Well, however you can get a hold of them, you do that by any means necessary. You start back at the top. You message them again. You start back at the top, message them again. That's what follow-up should look like. Again, follow-up scripts inside of the copy starter kit. Okay, I've gone deep, deep, deep onto this. Um, so I don't want to belabor the point, but this is crucial, right? And I have the actual follow-up scripts that are in there. and Some more screenshots of how they've worked for me in the past. Okay, so you've secured the call. Secured the call. The call is good. Now what? Right? You've secured the call. You got the client. Boom. First of all, you want to manage expectations. Set expectations while keeping in mind your goal to over-deliver on quality and or quality. So, okay, you say, I'm going to give you 10 emails by Friday. So instead, you give them 12 emails by Thursday. Boom, you've over-delivered on quality and quantity and deadline. <laughs> so also, you want to set deadlines. Okay, this ensures that your clients knows when the work is done and also gives you another variable to over-deliver on. Boom. Next, you want to accept First half of the payment. In order to mitigate risk from all parties involved, the first half of the payment should be done prior to the project and the second half upon its completion. Long story short, $2,000 deal, $1,000 upfront, you finish the product, then they give you $1,000. Then you don't risk anything, 
and they don't risk anything. Boom, boom, done. So that's exactly what you want to do, okay? And adding on to this, you also want to keep them in the loop at all times, okay? So every day or every second day, you always want to let them know that what, what you've done, okay? You don't always want to be the one who's there having to message you to figure out what you've done. A lot of the times, you want to message them to figure out so that they know what you're doing, okay? And you can keep them in the loop. So you can say, hey, I've just finished three emails so far. Here are them to check them out so you can see if I'm going in the right direction. Now you are a dream contractor. You're a dream copywriter for these businesses because you're like, yeah, he keeps me in the loop. He always checks in with me. He always lets me see the emails as soon as they're done. Like this dude's awesome. Like that is how you get awesome testimonials, awesome results. And that's how you build a great relationship with your clients, okay? And that's what's the most important. If you want to scale and do well in this business, the most important things you have to do is you have to be good at getting clients, you have to be good at delivering for clients. Essentially, that's it. You have to have good client acquisition and good skills. That, that's, that's really it. If you do those, if you're able to get people results, you're going to be able to get more clients. So then the first skill is not really going to even matter as much. Now, it's like the better you are as a copywriter, the better you are at delivering your services and getting people results. Hey, you're going to just make more money and more money and more money and more money. That's how people make almost $20,000 a month with copywriting. It's because they're able to charge even more, charge even more, charge even more, and accept higher paying deals and more deals because of how great their copywriting is. Because they're able to leverage things like AI like I've already showed you how to do. How do we accept the money? Cha-ching. Stripe, PayPal, or Wise. These are great services and softwares to use to accept money send invoices, this sort of thing. Guys, don't come to me asking, yo, I live in Sri Lanka, how do I accept payment? I don't know, I don't live in Sri Lanka, whatever that country is. I don't even know if that's a real country that came out of my mouth right now. But use these ones if you can, if you can't, there's always a workaround, okay? I don't care if it has to be messenger pigeon, just accept the money. <laughs> So now we need to hop in the fast lane. How do we make faster wins? How do we do this quickly? How do we make the progress that would usually happen from day one to day 100 happen from day one to day seven? That's what I'm gonna show you in this video. The paid in 30 days roadmap. What does it look like overall? Week number one, what you wanna do? If you're starting from zero, if this is your first time hearing about copywriting, here is exactly what you need to do. Week number one, understand copywriting. Consume, practice, improve. Put together a portfolio of your best practice, okay? People think a portfolio consists of your past work for clients. A portfolio can just be your practice emails, a collection of your best work that you've created. You might not have even sold those emails before or had clients yet, but you can still create a portfolio. Again, full video on that on my channel. Any question you could possibly have, there's a whole video about it on the Tyson 40 YouTube channel. Start outreach and improve your copywriting is next. With one week of experience under your belt, you'll be plenty skilled enough to get your first client. Okay, I'm not saying you're going to be out here like a goddamn copywriting god, but you're, you're good enough to start accepting clients and selling your copy to people. Because remember, copywriting isn't always about just being the best copywriter and making it rain every single time. A lot of the times it's just about saving your clients time. So if you're able to save them time by writing some copy, even if it's basic copy with some AI added, that's still more than enough to make them a lot of money. Week three, you want to stumble through your outreaches, okay? You're not going to be that good at outreach when you first start, and you're not going to be that efficient. At first, your outreach will be slow and confusing. But during this week, you should work on just getting your reps in anyways, okay? You need to turn outreach into a habit. That's your number one goal here is to turn outreach into a habit. And honestly, you might even get your first client in week three. You might even get your first client in week three, and they might even be a good client that's paying you a couple grand. It's happened before. A lot of the times, some people get lucky. At this stage, you shouldn't be that focused on it, but it might happen. Okay, you're outreaching, so it just might happen. People have gotten their first client day number two, so <laughs> it, it might happen. Next up is to focus on making your outreach efficient. Okay, you should track how much outreach you're doing a day. Let's say you do two hours of outreach a day, and you're able to do ten outreaches. Well, you should focus on getting that, getting those numbers up. Well, now I can do fifteen outreaches, or now I can do twenty outreaches a day in that same amount of time. That's what you want to focus on, making your outreach more efficient. Now that you have a baseline for what your outreach efficiency is, you should work at getting efficient and improving your quality. Next up, the fifth week, okay? If you're 30 days in, close clients using a low risk offer. Using one of the low risk offers below in order to get copywriting clients. What is a low risk offer? Well, we're about to talk about it. Creating your LRO, low risk offer. So you want to get your first email or your first client with a low risk offer because just like the name suggests, it is a low risk. It is a way that they can start working with you and it's just very, very easy for them, right? They don't have to take a big chance on you. So something like a commission-based deal where you only get paid if they get paid. 
People ask me all the time, well, Tyson, how do I set up a commission-based deal? I'm about to tell you. Here's how you set up a commission-based deal, okay? It's really, really simple. Your clients or whatever will have their checkout page essentially hosted on a website. It might be Kajabi, it might be Active Campaign, it might be whatever, whatever the software is. You just have to go in that software, right? You or somebody else on their team, go in, duplicate the sales page and duplicate the checkout. Now you can track who those people are from because you can get a special link. It might be www.tech4d.com slash email slash product. Now you know everybody who buys through that link with the email and the URL, that's you, that's all you. So you use that link, you get them sales, and now they know exactly where those sales came from and you can get your commission. Average commission is like usually industry standards like five to 10%. Sometimes you can uh, negotiate a little bit more. Next of all, you can do a discovery project. A small one-time project, like eight emails for 300 bucks. Boom, eight emails for 300 bucks. Like 300 bucks is such a small amount for most business owners, they're gonna be like, whatever. Then if those emails actually just make bank, then they're gonna be like, yo, homie, give me some more of them emails. <laughs> and next you can do like a free trial. Work two weeks for free and then get compensated in a relationship if the relationship is profitable. Relationship ain't profitable, then hey, you know, don't worry about it. This is what you wanna start with, okay? This is not what all of your copywriting deals will look like. I've had copywriting clients where I start with them at 2K, I start with them at 3K, but a lot of the times it should be like this, okay? You don't want to let money get in the way of opportunity. I've had work with huge clients before where if I was trying to pitch them on two, two grand, three grand right off the bat, they wouldn't have went for the deal. So by using this, I was able to start working for them. They're like, okay, this dude is what is who he says he is. He is able to actually get us through his result. And then I start making two to three K a month with them. And they're a great client who has other clients for me so I can get referrals from them and so on and so forth. So don't let money get in the way of the opportunity, especially when you're just reach, uh, just starting out. Next, we need to talk about scaling your income. Okay, you got your first client, you know, you got the low risk offer, you're doing your little thang -lang. you're officially a professional copywriter. How do we make more money and get you to that? $100,000 a year mark slash 10K a month. Number one, we need to sell better customers. As we can see here, our Hormozy diagram. Brokies are not as good as rich dudes who are out here running very, very profitable businesses. So here's the 10K a month in 90 days blueprint. Here are the exact steps that you want to follow. Week number six, keep outreaching and add your testimonials to your Instagram, okay? This is where you want to create leverage. Now you have your first client paying you a little bit. You want to get them results and show off your results on your Instagram. Now people know that you're a proven copywriter and now you can start saying, yo, two grand upfront, give me three grand upfront, give me, this is what I need to start. Create a positive first impression by delivering exceptional work and excellent customer service right from the start. Next of all, week seven, get your next two to four K a month copywriting client with your leveraged Instagram. Week number eight, scale your first client to two to four K a month. Okay, so here's the thing, right? You get your first client with your leveraged Instagram for two to four K a month. Now the first client you started working with that you did the whole $300 deal with or the whole commission-based deal or whatever, you scale them to two to four K a month. How you do that? You just go to them and say, hey, have you liked the work that I've been doing? Has it been getting, been getting you results? They obviously say yes, because you have the 4D copywriting strategy that I've laid out for you in this program. They say, yeah, I did. It was dope. You can say, okay, awesome. Well, would you like me to become a full-time member of your team and we can work on making you money ongoingly? They say, yeah, okay, sure, let's do it. What's your price? You say, well, I usually start at around three to 4K a month, but since we're only just beginning, it's fine if we start with 2K a month. That's called price anchoring. They're like, okay, sounds cool. Boom, now you making 2K a month from the first client. Your other client that you just got is you're getting two to 4K a month from them. So that's like five Gs a month already. And then your next week, you wanna get your last two to 4K a month copywriting client with referrals, either referrals from your clients that you've already been working for or outreach. So these business owners, man, they're not just going to, you know, they don't just live in a vacuum. These business owners are gonna to talk to other business owners. And if you're a business owner and you can put your homeboy on to some other dude who's made you an extra 30, 50, 80 grand a month, you're like, hey bro, this dude makes me a lot of money, go talk to him. Now you look like an even more dope person because you are sharing the wealth. You're like, hey man, this guy made me an extra 80,000 a month. He goes in and makes you an extra 80,000 a month. Now you and me are extra cool boys because I just made you a bunch of money because I gave you a copywriter. Boom, that's how this works. That's how the referral system works. It's in their own best interest to actually refer you to their business bunnies when you make them a lot of money. Or you can just do a little bit more outreach and get your next client, boom. And then let's say your first client, you took them from 
you know, $300 to 2K a month to 3K a month. Your second client, you know, they're at 3K a month and then get another client at 4K a month. Boom, that is 10K a month right there. Or maybe you even get a fourth client. Hey, bro, I ain't tripping. Fourth and fifth clients work too, actually. And then you could probably scale your business over 10K, be closing 10, 12K, 15K, even $18,000 at some points. It's happened before, it can happen with you. So you have made it to the absolute end. Congratulations. But this isn't it. This isn't over. And before I reveal the very, very last part, I need to tell you exactly what you do next, right? Before I reveal the last part, and of course, give you access to the surprise that you have earned by making it to the end. So, made it to the end, but this isn't it. First of all, you wanna start your first piece of copy using the templates provided, okay? You probably wanna go back and scroll back to the beginning of this video. Write your first piece of copy, follow along with what I was doing, and refine it like we spoke about. Feel free to go back and watch that part of the video again. Next of all, of course, you're gonna wanna get the 4D copy starter kit. I know you're probably salivating to get it like right now, or maybe you've already got it, but email templates, outreach examples, copy breakdowns, and literally anything else you could need to start your copywriting journey and start making a lot of money is right there for you. Next, you're going to want to join the free copywriting discord network with other copywriters, over 20,000 of them in there now, over 20,000 copywriters. Can you believe that? And like-minded individuals on how to succeed and get access to the best copywriting review channel on the internet. Look, it's hard to get your copy reviewed by other copywriters out here. There are like certain reddits and stuff, but they're not as high quality and you're not going to get as many reviews. In the 4D copywriting discord server, there's tons, over 20,000 copywriters in there who are submitting and reviewing other people's copy every single day. So you can go in there and also review other people's copy as well so that you can get better and everybody wins. Next of all, ask any questions you have below. I just unloaded a ton of information on you. If you don't have any questions, that's a little bit weird. You should probably have questions. So go down and ask them in the comments or just say your piece or whatever. Just go down and comment below this video. Um, there are no stupid questions. The comment section below this video will not only be answered by me, but also the other seasoned copywriters. Okay. So the comment section underneath this video is about to be active right now. Next, we want to keep up to date with new content. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any free copywriting courses and follow Instagram below for exclusive content. Okay. So, you know, learning copywriting is always an ongoing process. Now that you've committed to copywriting by making it to the end of the video, and I know since you made it to the end of the video that you have committed to copywriting, you're going to want to subscribe to the YouTube channel because this is where you can find the best copywriting content. And also there's a whole different type of content on the Instagram, a bunch of short form content, which is also awesome. You're going to see it all the time and it's going to be great. You can also watch some of the videos that will have on screen in a moment. Okay. There's a playlist of other free copywriting co content that I've released on YouTube that you should consume daily while you get better and progress. And as for the surprise, my people, since you have made it to the end and only for you guys, Follow me on Instagram, Tyson.Scales, and DM me the code words, best free course ever, and let's have a chat. Look, it is mathematically impossible for me to answer every single one of my DMs. It just can't happen. It doesn't happen. I will only answer people who give the code word. If you give the code word, let's chat. If you don't got the code word, sorry, bro, but I statistically just cannot. <laughs> I can't be a million in a million places at once, right? It don't, don't work like that. I got baddies in the DMs. I got homeboys in the DMs. I got copywriters in the DMs, right? They flood it. They flood it. So I can only answer the people who say this. And... Since you've made it to the top and say made it to the end, I just want to say uh, congratulations on taking this journey with me. And I'm glad to actually take this journey with you. I can't wait to actually see you win and see you post your wins and see you post that you've started making money with copywriting. And I want to leave you with one last thing. You see, a lot of the times there are these one small moments in our lives that completely change the course of our lives forever. And a lot of the times when we're in those moments, we don't actually realize that we're in them until we look back years later and we're like, you know what, man, that one thing that I did, that one thing that I learned, that one thing I heard, that one video I watched changed everything for me. And if I didn't watch that video, my future would be massively different. This is one of those moments, even if it might not feel like it right now. Anyways, everybody, like I said, I can't wait to take this journey with you. And that's it for everything today. And of course, I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you watch one of the courses on screen now. Peace.